Namaskar and a very pleasant morning to all of you and welcome to the second day of the 25th National Convention on Knowledge Library and Information Networking, NACLIN 2022, being organized by Telnet. We extend a very hearty welcome to each one of you for being there with us this morning and to commence the second day of the three days conference. We indeed remain much grateful uh, to the enormous support and the interest that all of you have shown in the NACLINs over the years. We are starting off the day. We have a very distinguished speaker with us this morning, Dr. G. Janardhan Shi, the Professor of Civil and Environmental Engineering and Head in Charge, Department of Curriculum Development, Planning and Coordination from NITRTR Chennai. It's a profound privilege for us to welcome you, Dr. Janardhan Shi, and we extend on behalf of DELNET and also on uh, behalf of entire fraternity of library and information science professionals, academicians, educationalists, researchers, scholars who are there on this platform, we welcome you. Vanikam, thank you so much for being there and indeed a great honor and pleasure for us to have you with us. Uh, we, uh, we have a session on technical session one of the conference, which is on new education policy, NEP 2020. And our distinguished speaker is going to speak on NEP 2020 implementation strategies and preparedness of academic institutions. It's of great relevance that, you know, how the, the, acad the academic community and uh, the administrators and also the greater responsibility of the library and information science professionals to strategize, you know, themselves to see to it that they are able to gear up you know their own systems whether we talk about as in institutions or we talk about also the libraries how they can really can embrace this change and can be uh, future ready you know for adopting and adapting well NEP 2020. I have profound privilege in introducing you all to Dr. G. Janathan Ji, who is a professor uh, of civil and environmental engineering. And as, as I said earlier, he's also heading Department of Curriculum Development, Planning and Coordination and I, at NIT Triple TR. Uh, he has been, uh, you know, since 2019 being there as a professor and has been an associate professor uh, at NIT Triple TR from 2012 onwards has also been you know energetic faculty and uh, i'm also very much pleased to inform you that dr janathan jay has also been the research fellow at civil and materials engineering at university of illinois at chicago and he has been uh, at college of engineering at, in anna university uh, i'm also very much honored to inform you all that uh, dr janathan has also been bestowed with a number of recognitions and awards recognizing his efforts and uh, in 2022 this year, he has got a special award of UNESCO, uh, IIOE, and we heartily congratulate you uh, for this accomplishment, and that's to recognize his profound contributions you know, in the field of education. He has also been, uh, has received enormous other fellowships, including the UNESCO Fellowship, Young Engineers Award, and Geotechnical Young Engineer Award. But yes, definitely, he's the one, you know, who is uh, looking after, you know, uh, having this entire curriculum development and uh, planning and coordination, which uh, is really very really a crucial uh, job. And also at the same time, you know, he is the one who is really heading that and, uh, uh, you know, uh, evolving the new policies, uh, devising the new policies. So we have a very distinguished and experienced speaker, you know, who is going to really make us all ready for uh, gearing up, you know, and uh, adopting and making ourselves ready enough for uh, seeing to it that we are able to implement, you know, NEP 2020 in a very meaningful and constructive manner. I don't want to stand uh, between you uh, and uh, our uh, distinguished speaker, who may like to now conduct the session. Profound privilege once again in welcoming you, Dr. Janardhan Ji, and once again, thank you so very much for acceding to our request, spending time for us, and we really look forward now to your deliberations. Requesting you to start the session, please. It's over to you. Thank you, madam. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be a part with Delnet. And uh, I need to thank our director, Ushana Tyson, madam, for introducing and uh, connecting with uh, Delnet officials for this uh, uh, lecture on NEP. Because uh, after the pandemic, during the pandemic, we started giving a sensitization workshops on NEP 2020. We were delivering lectures connecting NEP with Tirukural, and uh, because the first uh, quote itself, numerics and the numbers, letters and the numbers plays an important role for any learning. 
So the same thing has been stated in Thirukkural also. Ennanpa, ena eluthenpa, ivirandum kannanpa. So for that purpose, oh, we thought, why why can't we make a sensitization workshops related to NEP? So we were doing from 2020, and it's as a part, and it's my pleasure how we can, uh, how the librarians, academicians need to start with NEP 2020, and how they have to <coughs> transform the learning resource center into the as a learning hub or learning space. So the question is, is it doing things better or doing better things? And as usual, I will start with the disclaimer. In this lecture, the content expressed are purely my technical perspective. It does not represent the organization to which with which I am affiliated. Because as you all are aware, in the education arena, we are all moving towards outcome-based education. The outcomes need to be achieved by the learners. That is the main mandate. But if you see the fundamental definition of outcome-based education as defined by Professor Spaddy, the learning is fixed, the learning time varies. Once again, I'm telling the learning is fixed, the learning time varies. So the individual difference need to get acknowledged. The individual difference need to get accommodated in the learning process. But where I need to have a phase where I can learn, relearn, and learn and once again i can learn it but based on the individual learner perspective the learning need to be redefined so one of the repository for knowledge it was basically a library where we used to get all the information but now the information is available everywhere and anywhere but we need to be aware of the the truthness or veracity of the information how far it is correct so the individual difference, there always exists an individual difference, but we need to bring them to the basic minimum level, fixed level. So previously, this is uh, one way or other way, if you see the outcome-based education is nothing but our own old Gurukula system has been re in a different format, where the complete holistic development is there because the one of the crux of NEP 2020 it is a multidisciplinary and holistic education. So how the multidisciplinary and holistic education need to be there with equity and inclusion. It is the main criteria which we are going to discuss. So before starting the uh, this thing, I just wish to have some poll with the participants because I just request the participants around more than uh, 528 participants are there. Happy 530, including us. So I request the participants to kindly go to menti.com, menti.com and use the code, uh, this code. I can just present the poll. I can just present the poll. I can copy the link. I can put it in the chat box. Maybe I can put it in the chat box. I am placing it the code in the chat box. The interested participants, just for, just to, as a warm up, uh, I can present it to all the, uh, maybe, all the panelists only it is going maybe i can put it to uh, everyone on the system maybe i can share it okay dr janathan should i'll just write it you know to all the participants i'll just oh. mention it uh yeah uh, so i just menti.com -E oh, right. -E yes, menti with the code five, nine. five nine one seven Three five two four. That's so done. Five now. Yes, that's it. Maybe just we'll see how, how many of them are really. Uh, maybe they are all active, but still, I just want to have the poll and to just check uh, how the partners. What will who will be the driving the biggest change in the library transformation? The users or library professionals or the government? By default, the answer will be skewed to the library professionals because. If uh, generally that is a trend, no? if every all the students perform very well, generally we'll tell them teachers has taught them perfectly. If the students are not performing very well, what we'll tell the students are worst batch, they are from the COVID batch, they didn't have the fundamentals properly. That is the definition which we'll give. So <clears throat> we'll give, okay, uses. Because sometimes uses dictates, because library is a thing which is really, really close to my heart because uh, when I went to University of Illinois for my PhD, there is a, a state library will be there where we can get a passes for the all the <coughs> entertainment government places for example uh, uh, i am in chennai all vandalur zoo 
or snake park, children's park, archaeological. You can collect the pass. The pass will be free. You can have no need to pay entry ticket. You can just because it promotes the people to come to library to use the service. So library were not only the repository for the books. They are also provided for learning spaces where the students can come and sit and learn, <clears throat> where they can use their Wi-Fi. Free hotspots will be given. Wi-Fi is will be given, and video tapes will be there. Because when I came back to India, I brought a lot of cassettes because through videos, the people can learn a lot. That was also the, the, the complete the concept of library itself. It is rather than the place where we can fetch the book, it is a place where we can get a authentic information. That was the purpose of the library. So around 52 people have told, around 600 people are there. I know that uh, some of them might have not <coughs> got the message. Just I request them to go to menti.com. Only three questions I have made it. I have not made more than three questions. Just as a warm up for the session, I was just trying to frame some questions. Uh, who is going to who is a, who are going to be the biggest? Who will be the driving the biggest change in the library transformation? Of course, library professionals. Are you are you part of a library transformation? That is also a question because uh, I was discussing with one of my, our colleagues. Because library education has a different format. Uh, previously, they had a different set of content and curriculum. Now, the librarians are maybe forced with how the digital repository uh, lo uh, cataloging, how we have to do it. Because they know how to do the cataloging of the books, how the digital uh, resources have to be cataloged, and how it needs to be shared. Because pandemic, we had a problem. We cannot, we are not in the position to come to our library. But we were asking a remote access of all of our journals and everything. Our libraries, they gave the uh, options. So how to go about it? So who will be the, obviously the library professionals. Yes, sometimes the top-down approach plays important role. The government feels this has to get transformed. Some officials, they tell, users dictate because you can see some of the libraries, there is no uses because when we were a kid, my mother uh, inculcated habit of reading a books. That was a good habit which I had. Uh, Devanaya Pavanar Library in Tamil Nadu in Chennai, we have that library where she was a member and she used to collect books and she was a voracious reader to be frank she was uh, well was in four different languages also hindi sanskrit tamil and english so so that time we had a habit of uh, reading but now i have recently after uh, 10 years i have just recently gone to one of the devanair power library where my mother was a member because when we were just checking her records the card was there i just i want to give a return but libraries now has changed into a different format maybe it's only a newspaper reading up but nowadays the newspaper also the people are getting it from uh, video how the library need to be transformed it is user who dictates the library transformation or library professionals they themselves custom orchestrate according to the needs of the society or it is the government which is predominant uh, polling from the polling we got the answer it is the library professionals fantastic sir. let me shoot out the next question quickly the transformation and investment in the library needs to focus on a learning space or a digital repository or access from anywhere. Because as a library, I just want to make uh, uh, this thing. Okay, access from anywhere. Okay, fantastic, access from anywhere. Access from anywhere, okay. You have to now differentiate between the academic institutions and the normal public library. So learning spaces, yes, yeah, of course. Okay, access from everywhere. So the learning professionals are going to the access from it. But the digital repository need to be strengthened uh, in terms of videos, in terms of uh, material, because our director, madam, has started an initiative free uh, OER, uh, where teaching repository in engineering education, uh, her brain uh, child scheme, which she uh, launched as soon as she took over the position as a director. It is all the OER material, OER repository related to the pedagogical or the teaching skills, uh, uh, all the things will be given access to all the institutions. Because the only thing we need to have a log of the things to substantiate whether our resources are optimally used or appropriately used or whether it make it's making a transformation in the ecosystem. That is the need of the ever. Because the global outreach is also needed. Because outreach of higher education in the global perspective. Nowadays, we are talking in terms of a global. It is not a local or global. It is global, G-L-O-C-A-L we call, because the global facilities need to be available to the local people and the local uh, 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 public need to be exposed to the global uh, situation. So that is the way, because if you see, uh, recently 2019, I've been to 
University of Cincinnati for a program. So when we went for where we have seen the library when, when 2008 when I visited it was a different genre. In 2019 completely it was a different uh, perspective. I was wondering because more on creativity and innovation because in the current NEP 2020 talks about inculcate experiential learning inculcate creativity inculcate because i have seen and there was a place where a lot of uh, uh, games were there games in the sense uh, models were there which the people need to work on the models to work out a solution like a box which you have to move which you have to make the circle to move inside i was wondering but the place where it also gives as a stress person library it is not only the place for enhancing the knowledge and also it provides a place for a conducive environment. So our NEP 2020 talks in terms of experiential learning, creativity and innovation has to be more. If the creativity innovation need to be more, out of a box thinking need to be there or sometime inside the box thinking need to be there. Where library space plays an important role, where the great minds can think, like where you can uh, cultivate all the people of the uh, same like, mindset can come and do it because everything is possible in online but sometimes it's also we need to have a place where we can sit and rest. so the first question approximately 96 people have answered and the second question only 90 people have answered okay if the number is increasing really we'll be happy because the reason is six not six was there around 6 30 96 people are there but now 724 uh, members are there only uh, 93 are there maybe once it comes 96 maybe i can uh, move to the next slide because okay access from everywhere predominantly the transformation and investment and library need to focus on the access from everywhere but when the access from everywhere is there but how we have to ensure whether number of centers uh, uh, need to be there or library need to be minimized or it need to be one library need to be strengthened as a hub rest of the things will act as a spoke where they can get access to information everything it is possible so what way urban spoke model where we have to have a predominant a library where which will be a major source of all information and all correct sir, but others will be like a spokes to have a specific concepts because when recent visit in 2019 to china gj i have seen certain districts have been allocated for this purpose certain districts have been allocated for this purpose so the accordingly the information related to those things could be obtained from certain places that was also a learning up of all a literature architecture could be related to it by bengal side and it could be more on culture like okay amazing 100 people have the last question is an open-ended question we have not made you to have a close thinking i am just giving option the transformation and investment might be other than the learning space other than a digital repository or access from everywhere i have given only three options it could be other uh, uh, apart from these three options there could be some other option also but since we have restricted now, I want to stretch your wings like a butterfly. So I want what one word to describe uh, to library in the future. If you want to describe the library in the future, how it will be, with what facilities. You can just, uh, which is open-ended. <clears throat> if the maximum people are going for a same option or same word, that word will manifest into a bigger, when other words will be a smaller. We will just want to make a word cloud. So information science, because it's information. It's going to be a knowledge center. It's going to be a virtual, uh, okay, researcher. Okay, oh, I made it into a form of a flow. That is the reason. Sorry, I didn't put in the word cloud option. I put it in the uh, sequence. Okay, information dissemination centers. Information dissemination centers, and then librarian roles are because librarians is no more. Uh, 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 um, no voice. They are going to be a tech savvy. They have to know how to operate the. Uh, digital fundamental uses of the library and other resources optimally it, it library it is full of digital era is yes, okay digital era it is globally you can correct virtually also you can go and study the library of the, the other library you can have a visit to the other library we can plug it and you can ask that book from the you can no, no need to visit the library in delhi i can sit in chennai i can visit the library in delhi i can virtually uh, fetch some book and i can also read that could also be the facility which will be available in the future. So it's all going to be networking and connecting. Cloud library, amazing. Yes, of, of course, everything is going to be in cloud. But cloud library, we also need to take place of a resilient cities. Whenever any disaster comes, how far the city is going to come back. Whenever any 
disaster strikes, how the city is going to come back. This also needs to be taken. How the learning hub or learning resources need to come back from the disaster. Resilience of the system because you are now in a transformation of a system to the new arena. But how far the resilience of the system need to be there? Because when we went to the University of Cincinnati once again, I'm quoting, where we had a chance to visit the AR VR facility, which was there available in the library. Because there was a, 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 a hall which was like a connectivity to a virtual reality uh, uh, this thing, where the uh, people, inter a team of 10 members who have wished to book for a virtual tour to the wastewater treatment plant. And completely they have given a, a VR glass and we were trying to travel into a completely different world. And this was part of the resource center library. So it was part of the library only they were having the uh, VR lab. So the library is a, going to be a hub of creativity innovation. Library is going to be an hub of experiential learning. Library is going to hub of uh, uh, encashing the technology to the maximum extent in terms of infusing VR, in terms of AR. Library also is going to provide a complete hub or a breeding ground for enhancing the multidisciplinary and holistic education. Holistic education doesn't come only from the content alone. It also comes from the complete 360 degree where the students will be exposed with the different thought process, not only the culture, emotional, social aspects and technical aspects and how he has to be there from the complete 360 degree. So 65 members have answered library without walls. Perfectly Sarah said a library without walls. Now the technology facilitated without boundaries, we can learn and enhance. You can just observe. Without traveling to Delhi, it was very fantastic from my office in Chennai. I was delivering the lecture. So now it become and moreover as, as someone has a consortium networking because more on networking, our sense is going to get unified with the case of the current option technology because the chapter 23 talks about the technological use and integration in the library sites. And it is not only that, it also focuses on, our NDP 2020 focus on promotion of Indian knowledges, knowledge system, language, cultures and value. And when it library it comes, it should be a repository where the authentic information has been preserved and saved. Because when the technology is increasing, the problem of getting information becomes easier, but getting a right information becomes a tough job. So library is not only going to be a, a hub for learning, also it's going to be authentic center to certify the information is correct. Now NABL is there for laboratory, NAC is there, NBA is there. And one of the condition in the NEP 2020 is National Accreditation Council. National Accreditation Council should also focus not only the accreditation of the program, accreditation of the institution, accreditation of the library facilities, because we have seen library facility is there. These many books are available. That's it. That, other than that, whether the usage of library is there in what aspects? The, 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 the institutions are also purchasing uh, journals, but whether it has been used or not, because inculcating, because the previous director, Professor Panda from IIT Karapur, when he came, he introduced in our training program, he introduced a session completely a reflection, a reflective learning session where the participants in our training program will be provided with some journal article or some article which they have to fetch it from library and they have to read in the library. It is not from the center. They have to go to the library. So the library usage has been inculcated to the participants. And there were a complaints were also that, sir, if you put a library hours in the last of the hour, the participants are not going to the library. They're just going outside. So in between the day, the library hours have been planned accordingly. And it maybe we are trying to inculcate because all in some of they have to listen to the tech talks because library it's not only the lay because where not of because to be frank he purchased several uh, headphones and everything all the systems where the people can go and learn and come and they can listen and the information like uh, i have seen in one of the gym it has been made where where the tvs of different will be there which will be all muted in your phone, they will be fine-tuning to that uh, frequency so that they only will be listening to that frequency. So various ways which the library could be uh, promoted with, to act as a, but only 73 nine people have been answered. I don't know what is the issue. Maybe DigiCloud, fantastic learning and creativity sensor, welcoming common space, encouraging exploration, creation and collaboration. Yes, because it is not isolated. Um, 
it is a hub where other department and facilities are going to sit together and going to effective and pinpoint information yes correct as sir told omnipresent library is going to be omnipresent but the information need to be authentic so it's going to be a sort of place sort of learning scholarly and recreational fantastic because i have i have seen some places where the library the bean bags have been kept in the library so i was wondering because the people have been made comfortable to sit in the bean bag and read it so they have to get the information because it is going to be not repository alone it is going to be a learning space so that is the way the second question was asked whether it has to be transformed in the case of a learning space or it go to digital repository because library is no need to be monotonous same the catalog based methods a reading table where the books of reading ups could be there with the steps to uh, uh, wooden steps they were kept it where the students will sit casually and they will be working on it where uh, they, they will be working on the creativity and innovation okay 85 members have answered maybe since it's the typing option the people are finding it uh, maybe not difficult because some people might have access only through mobile so they might find it difficult i really appreciate and thank the people who have actively participated in the poll just it's like a warm up because i have submitted up so biggest challenge in the library transformation is going to be brought only by the library professionals as stated by you guys and access from everywhere was going to be the predominant criteria which we wish to have in the library and and finally the knowledge of it's going to be the cloud or it's going to be a research of where it has going to be digitally connected hybrid library consortium way where we can optimize the purpose and minimize the expenses and where it is going to be learning without beyond boundaries and learning with beyond walls and where it's also going to be the knowledge management center virtual library digital era and digital eco country and reading for everywhere because the reading cultures need to be there for everywhere. Uh, thank you just once again i'm going back to my presentation and uh, this is the main uh, purpose which this i want to connect where we are reading but now we have to understand some naked truth now educational institutions does not mean students will learn previously we presumed educational institutions if the students enroll they will be learning in turn the learning will provide them a good knowledge knowledge will provide them a job all those it's like a vicious circle we were having a concepts all or assumptions now educational institutions just mean the students will learn even the educational institution also don't need to have a library it cannot be a standalone library previously near to our houses we used to have a private libraries where they will be providing a uh, ishwar lending library where the where the books will be there so because some english novels and certain novels may not be there in our government library which was there in the private libraries or which we are also lending but now they become a mobile library now the people are uh, in, a, in a digital era even the subscription of online libraries where you don't need to have a book where we can just discuss and deliberate it uh, learning does not mean the students will have a skill for the labor market that is also important because it doesn't mean the students will have a skill for the labor market which you have to remember because even if they learn the skills are highly volatile and dynamic the people who learned the uh, tourism and uh, uh, hospitality they may not have a proper uh, job during the pandemic they might have because it was different because it is not the learning does not mean the students will have a skill for the labor market which there is but even if they have a skill for the labor market if they may not have a job the skill does not mean will have a job so it is more a complex one so the things are changing like anything but this need to be incorporated when we are going for a integrated higher education system or integrated multidisciplinary education which provides holistic concepts to the students so this is a most important time to be in education because the ndp 2020 comes after several years 32 years and it provided a good up and it is a most important time to take care about education the transition from the digital natives and digital immigrants because i was really excited when i have seen the laptop i was excited when i have seen the mobile phone whereas my kid never gets excited for the laptop or mobile phone because they are the native of the technology we were immigrant of the technology we had a culture of going to the library and reading but the current generation kids they don't have the culture of going to the library 
going and reading. Even if they ask them to do literature review, they do only do Google survey, Google search, and Google search for past five, five, ten papers they put it. But they don't know how to do the proper searching is also. So that is also library awareness it become itself become because Google doesn't give everything correct. One of my colleagues who wants to join with me in Coil Party, he just searched the train timing in the Google and he had a ticket, but he didn't look into the because he had a SMS, only the PNR and seat number which has been booked by the so he boarded into the train. But what happened? He boarded into the train, he went to the railway station, he checked the number message, a Google search. Google search told the train is at 9:30. But due to the some changes, the train has already left at 8.30 because the message, the Google has not updated. He wasted his time and he lost the travel journey on that day. So it is information is alone. Google has provided the information. That too, it was the first search. First search, the first the thing in the big size it came. So the information. So you have to take care about the education. It's the most important time to create impact in education. So where we are lucky, we are in some generation where we have to care, take care. And also where we have to create impact. Because as I told you earlier, so the educational institutions basically trying to provide the knowledge. We presume knowledge will provide them a good life status. Livelihood will be improved. When the livelihood be improved, the societal transformation will take place. That is the perspective which we are going to the college school. Otherwise, if the school is not going to provide the knowledge, but what it is it? But now the country is focusing on occasional education. How far the occasional education library is there? How far the polytechnic system library is there? When I visited occasional education IT recently to Singapore, where we went to Nyangyan Polytechnic and different institutions as a part of leadership program, where I have seen that completely libraries have been transformed in a different form, not only for the knowledge alone, networking with the job, prospective employers, a job and the skill set, and part skill set, they have a different wing. For this company, if you want to have some skill set, there are separate wing has been sponsored by the uh, team in terms of e-content video. Let them learn it because all the systems and everything sponsored by one of the very famous shipbuilding company where they have to get the knowledge from that place. So that was the so it is uh, knowledge uh, where the case studies is not in terms of book, the video authentic materials in terms of their practical problems, what they encounter in the field and how they sorted all those problems have been provided in terms of case studies. So the students are learning that uh, watching the video and because it is not available everywhere because they have restricted it is not available in YouTube everything but they have provided access only through their uh, institute library the IT library it was there where they have access because suppose ship building concepts the case studies of breaking everything of the very big ship what they break in terms of videos everything they have told what technique they have told and the students can watch it and it will be enhancing if they want to get into internship also. So it is not the library, it has been provided by the users alone, where industry plays an important role in augmenting its resources with its various case studies, everything, because that only will lead to multidisciplinary holistic education. This knowledge and job, but knowledge is there, but knowledge previously we were believing only from a physical space, from classrooms and normal uh, libraries and normal laboratories uh, from field visit. But now it is no more physical space, it is a size, it is digital learning space. So library becomes a repository for digital learning spaces. So what are the challenges and solution challenges? We are trying to have the same old concept, but NEP 2020 provide the scope for us to expand our thought process and to view in a broader perspective in terms of multidisciplinary holistic education. Okay. And in terms of equity and inclusion in higher education, motivating energies and capable faculty, technology use and interaction, global outreach of higher education, promotions of Indian knowledge systems, language, culture and values, and rich innovation and rankings and integrated higher education system. So predominant focus was only towards content, but NEP 2020 paves the way, move away from content and focus on context. Move away from content and focus on context. That will fetch us a better results and better perspective. So do move away from the content and go to the context-based education. That is the main crux which we are focusing because that is the important. Because as you all have heard, the 1948s and 2000, when I've just looked into some literatures where the Kothari Commission, how in terms of library grant they have been provided, how the status of library have been improved, even in the National Knowledge Commission, right, uh, 2007. So where it libraries are recognized as social function in making knowledge publicly available to everyone. 
and they are all local centers of information and learning and are local gateways for uh, a national and global knowledge so let together explore NEP 2020 and uh, in the present day scenario we are completely blindfolded in studies and because uh, we have to explore what way because the students are completely blindfolded they are coming to library only to fetch books because the books contain some questions that questions will come in their examination because the learning depends upon the assessment pattern if the assessment is not defined properly the learning is not going to take place so they are completely blindfolded in studies so if you want to promote this thing we have to look from a different perspective so where is the key key is our this thing it is impossible to redesign our requirements or need to fit into a system but we can redesign a system for our requirement so NEP 2020 as you all have the Qatari commission in their redefined radical restructuring and equalizing educational opportunities in turn focused on special emphasis on the removal of disparities and equalize education because previously we had a three tenets access equity and quality but NEP 2020 provided a five tenets because previously we were focusing on everyone need to have access equity need to be there quality has to be maintained so 1986 special emphasis on removal of disparities to equalize of this thing and 1986 we also focused 1992 the modified version common minimum program in 2020-20 the NEP 2020 focus on the curriculum content to essential learning especially enhance the learning experiential learning critical thinking more holistic experiential discussion based analysis based learning where by debate and deliberation to find what is right rather than who, who is right here the library also need to be a place where the debate and deliberation has to be provided where they need to get authentic information to have a discussion based and analysis based learning so national education policy 2020 if you observe has been made into four parts and the core part is school education and the higher education and also technology based education how we have to make it happen so that was the focus because each chapters have been uh, crafted in a manner which provide the scopes or built for the uh, digital India or a, a new India, which was the major focus. Because we believe education is a greater level and is the best tool for achieving economy and social mobility, inclusiveness and quality. So if you want to achieve economy and social mobility, inclusion and equality, education is going to be the time to have education properly on that day. So our academic role is going to be a bigger. So in chapter 23 talks in terms of detailed use of digital use and integration. Technology use, as you all have a digital library is the Diksha is available. So how we have to make it centric? That is a major crux which was focusing on our uh, so NEP 2020, if you see, in terms of higher education, since we are focusing, we cluster into institutional restructuring and consolidation. Institutional restructuring and consolidation, where we focus on how the restructuring part has to be there, how the consolidation of institutional restructuring, in terms of quality enhancement, in terms of accreditation, more towards holistic education, more towards holistic education and optimal learning and enrollment and support for students. It is not the question of providing the education only, it is a question of providing the optimal rule where you have a chance to, or the people to have the, the proper uh, optimal learning environment. Because if the learning environment is not appropriate, then how it could be uh, there. So it has to be the proper learning environment is going to be the uh, second criteria. So what are the ways which then comes if a learning environment is there, you are providing a holistic education, but if the faculty members are uh, not motivated, not energized, not capable, then the system will not have a proper uh, driver or drivers for enhancing or taking the system forward. But in recently when we made a survey, academic loafing has become predominant in Indian education system. The faculty members are more isolated packet in focusing on their own professional growth there than the institutional knowledge or the institutional development because the main problem when we identified a survey when we conducted regarding academic loafing predominant faculty members they have told us they have been assessed only by the projects and other activities rather than whether teaching in such situation how it is very difficult for them to focus on the teaching alone 
So we have to focus then on motivating, energized, and capable faculty members. So if you want to have a motivated, energized, and capable faculty, there need to be a focus on teacher education. The teacher education in the government of India has brought out a wonderful scheme in terms of a professional teachers, a scheme known as a NITT, National Initiative for Technical Teachers Training. It was previously in Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya National Mission on Teachers and Teaching, where we focused on enhancing the teacher education. Now, NITT, National Initiative for Technical Teachers Training. There, the faculty members, young faculty members who are joining in the profession, they have to undergo certain modules, which gives a complete development in the modules which focus on not only on one aspect, five major clusters on foundation of teaching learning, technology enabled learning. Third one is media and information literacy. You remember, it is not only using of technology, it is a media and information literacy is also very, very important. Mill, the concept of UNESCO. So which is also the third domain. And fourth is a professional development practice. And fifth one is the institutional development practice because they need to work for the profession or also for the holistic. Complete social outreach has to be there. That was which has been integrated, imbibed into the teacher education concepts, the National Initiative for Technical Teachers Training and the Training, where the focus is not only providing the knowledge, but also they have to work with a mentor and they also have to go for an industry. So when a teacher education is there, predominantly the recently, if you see two, uh, two, three days before finance, our secretary of Ministry of Skill has written an article in Financial Express where the concept of vocational education, why it has not taken a friend, uh, seat in, in country like India. Because if you see in UK, uh, Germany, <coughs> which is a good role model for apprentice-based education, more than 10% is there. UK, it is there. But in Indian condition, we have vocational education of apprentices only for 0.1%. Because we are connecting or tagging the education also to the, the social status. Because if we have, kids are doing an apprentice, everything. Mm -hmm. So this NDP, and we, to be fair, hypothetically, I have also seen that library conditions are also different. You remember? So uh, we had a chance to visit the library of uh, ITAs and polytechnics in the country, where we have seen it is not at par or not, it is not providing the things which is needed for the system. So it is re-imagining to vocational education in chapter 16 and professional education because the, it is uh, now national credit framework has been launched where the focus is how all your learning, it is either from formal education or non-formal education or experiential learning, how everything needs to be credited and how everything needs to be accommodated. Promoting high quality research, effective governance and leadership because it is not only a question of teaching alone, or teacher development, it is a question of promoting high quality research because next 10 years, how the transformation needs to be there, that has to be visualized now because we cannot work because it is uh, imagine because it's of course the future, predicting the future is difficult, but we have to anticipate and prepare for us so that the resilience becomes easier. So effective governance and leadership and transforming the regulatory system. Regulated system. So there are different regulators are there. Sometimes you wonder whether AACT has regulated the uh, technical education or the pathetic situation of technical education is because of the regulators. We don't know because they, we have seen midfield data. When we went to the, the uh, 2019, when I had a workshop where we worked on a midfield data where the colleges have been allocated based on the demand. Because, for example, in a city like I was wondering. A city like Coimbatore, a lot of engineering colleges has been sanctioned, whereas Tirchi is less. But the students who are going to come are going to come only from that locality. What is the strength of your higher secondary education? This higher secondary education, what is the strength of the people who are eligible for technical education? Then the output could be maintained there because the people predominantly want to come to the city rather than the rural segment. So this data analytic and approval has been taken into consideration in the midfield data. Because universities are available, Springfield it is different, Chicago, Urbana Champion, different campus, Chicago campus. So the different campuses, how the seat allocation and the thing, it has separate scientific innovation has been done because simply it is not the, uh, people are interested to apply for engineering college, the approval has not been given. So what is the rational behind the regulatory approval? That is a still question mark because whereas the midfield data in US, they have a very robust system where they focused on where the hub has to be there, why the professional hub has to be there, how the social, because the 10 years are down the line, how the social transformation of Afro-Americans in one location, how it has been transformed. 
because of the education or Latino, how the transformation have gone. So this studies whether the regulatory system that has to be focused in the that has been given emphasis transforming the regulatory system because there will need a transformation. And of course, promotion of Indian languages, arts and culture, because the current generation kids, they are not focusing on the arts and culture. We are trying to uh, mimic or look into the concept of Western culture. So we have to focus on art and culture, technology use and integration. And these are the main aspects which is NEP 2020 focus in terms of higher education, higher education they focus. So the national admission policy focus on Indian centered education system because we are basically focusing on now we are working on decolonization of a curriculum. We never had a compartmentalized education because the, we, we always believe compartmentalized education will never provide because the laboratory education I've seen the students will know how to do the perform a laboratory one, laboratory two, and laboratory three, experiment one, experiment two, experiment three. But when you want to see the connectivity between the three experiments, he doesn't know how to do it. The reason is we followed a certain education system which was a compartmentalized education system. But our education system was holistic. When you go to Gurukula system, where you have not only provided with the skill, also the skill associated knowledge with the skill, it is not the knowledge and the skill alone it has been provided, attitude also been provided, value education has been provided, where the system has been transformed in a different manner. That what we now we are focusing on a decolonization of a curriculum where, where our mindset have been made into a compartmentalized system. So how it has to be take, taken and nurtured. But regulators have been provided like a comp still compartment, engineering basic science this much. Engineering says this much. Employability skills. Employability skills, I cannot have a separate subject. My subjects need to make me to employable. That is, a, how can you provide employability subjects when this content is not going to provide employability? Then I can read employability. So there, the education policy NDP 2020 focus on Indian-centered education system where transforming nations sustainably, not only sustainably, into equitable and vibrant knowledge. So equitable word, equitable and give emphasis where thereby providing high quality education to all, to all. It is the quality, access and equity, which was the basic tenets which are focusing. Now we have included accountability and affordability. Accountability and affordability. It is not only the question of accessibility. I need to, accountability need to be there. If something, if the system is not going to provide the properly to buy, then the people who are provided need to be accountable for the things what it is there. And it does also need to be affordable because the elite education certain things could not be elite education system because when we see look into the polytechnic and ITA, it becomes a poor man's education, but they are the people who supplement to the big man, big major industry need. IR 4.4 when we want to industry 4.0 when we want to make a revolution. These are the segment which is going to focus on those things. But are these segments have been uh, fully utilized, the potential is fully utilized, or it has been taken into account. So NDP 2020 very nicely crafted in terms of Indian centered knowledge, where, where there is a need for decolonization of a curriculum, rather than looking from a compartmentalized perspective, look it from a holistic perspective with a five pillars concept where everyone needs to have access. It is not only the question of accessibility, accountability is to be there. It's a, Whoever, whatever the content, accountability need to be there, quality, equity, and affordability need to be the major things. So these are the items which I have told. And in terms of library, if you see the library uh, science people, as I told you, because uh, I was thinking whether the lecture has to be focused towards uh, NEP 2020 or how the librarians need to be for, uh, helping the NEP 2020. Because when you see the library resource center, as a resource center, when we uh, uh, act, so they serve the humanity. Everyone knows and use technology uh, intelligently to enhance the service and protect free access of knowledge because it has to provide a free access of knowledge and it also to protect the free access to knowledge and honor the past and create the future. Because when you want to create the future, I need to know by roots. If my roots have been known properly, I will have a proper value system made to be there. Because uh, in terms of roots, uh, uh, because you need to be trying to be a rational. You need to, you can question everything. But I need to know certain things which are believable because uh, uh, I always believe whatever you are seeing is not true, doesn't mean to be true. But whatever you're not seeing is not false. That also you have to accept. Because now the mindset is whatever we are seeing, only it is true, but others are false. No, there might be a things which you know, we are not seeing might be also be true, but which we have to comprehend it. 
So library need to serve humanity, and this is the way the which the structure how NEP twenty twenty focus also will correct respect all forms by which knowledge is communicated. Respect all forms which the knowledge is communicated because now as someone have told in the uh, polling, we have to be a cloud based librarian, consortium of a resource material, urban spokes model. These are the way which the transformation need to be incorporated where. It is not the repository of the books alone. It is a repository of digital repository where we are going to provide in terms of audio books, in terms of video lessons, in terms of visualization, visualization in terms of what I call as ARVR, ARVR, because sometimes field visit when I want to, I can take the students, I can book it, I can make the students to go for ARVR base, but where it has also be paid and use model. Well, in terms of enforcing all the library to have the same concepts, the major hub will have such concepts where others will come and make a consortium membership where they will be using it to visualize certain concepts. Because I really want to, because when you want to make a such facilities of VR and AR, all library cannot invest and return on investment is need to be questionable. But I can maintain a major hub where it will be like a hub where others can come and have access at a minimum subscription amount and so that the maintenance and improvement can also be made. So the, where the knowledge from all aspects is communicated. So in the higher education, the current focus is three different agents. One is on world-class research and high-quality education, where the library could be of a greater status, whereas the remaining quality teaching focus on undergraduate education the resources and repository need to be structured accordingly. But when it comes to NBA and regulatory authority or accreditation authority, we use uniform standard of the library should be of same to everyone. But why it has to be there? So it has to be a segmented, stepped approach for a different level of different places. For a world-class institutions, a library of a different category A and for high quality teaching undergraduate education where more on case studies, more on practical aspect, more on industry because we have developed to be flat attitude more than 300 videos we have developed on the process of different civil engineering when the pile foundation is made we have made a complete pile foundation how the elevators have been constructed how the pile load testing has been constructed how the, uh, 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 the tunnel technique or construction form so we have made small small videos the reason is which need to be a repository because previously we are getting from all the information but this has to be streamlined and it has to be uh, 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 assured for the quality. Okay, so IEC is focusing on four major pillars. One is on higher education grant council for funding, national accreditation council for accreditation, general education for standard setting, and in the national higher education regulatory council for regulation. These four pillars need to define and roll because even when we come for accreditation or regulatory, we see only library, library with this many books, that's it. But whether the books access and other things have been not, that has to be taken into the uh, uh, settings. So the technological revolution, learning, digital learning resources need to be the very terms of storybooks, libraries, language learning, gamified digital literacy, the data science, boot camps, other computational good, play school delivery platforms where we have to facilitate remote learning as you all selected, remote learning access from everywhere, interactive classrooms where the students need to get visually transformed and vocational library, vocational training, this was the major focus of the resource centers of the current generation. So according to this five major cluster of NDP technological intervention of chapter 23, as it stated, so the, uh, the resource centers or the library need to get structured according to the needs and the purpose, because it serves the better, because it's going to be not only the books in a PDF version, the books also in the reading version, how it could be there and how it could be visualized in a different perspective. So that is going to be the major uh, focus. So digital library, as all of our Diksha was then, uh, where the digital repository, which was a, a bigger uh, access, digital library deal was there, where, where digital infrastructure for knowledge sharing, digital infrastructure for knowledge sharing need to encompass all these uh, aspects. So the language barrier, which exists between the teacher and the students will be, because this was the, in 2019, when we went for a uh, center, so where when we question during the uh, training program, if I question in English, the automatically it gets translated into Chinese language, the tech two technology. There the Chinese language was get translated to English automatically, automatically, it is nowhere human intervention. So that is it. So the situation, major seven focus, which problem in higher education is road learning, 
evaluation system, respect to e equal respect to all subjects, better training of educators, introduction of technology, personalized education, teach them the purpose of education. All the seven aspects need to be integrated into the uh, our need when we are making a, a, a intro digital infrastructure for knowledge sharing. So when we make a diksha, these seven things because it was a predominantly it is the the purpose is because now the isolated packets of information are even we ourselves don't smart on uh, uh, <coughs> on different learning materials because which need to be taken into account accordingly and need to be proven evaluation system because evaluation system where improvement is there so uh, what sort of evaluation system because now question papers and models and assessment patterns are not available in resource centers how it could be incorporated appropriately and equal respect to all subjects where arts and science and commerce wherever you take it engineering or doctors everything need to be given equal heritage training to the educators not only the educate also to the library educators where thinking into the future instead of paper and pen how it has to be transformed interaction of technology personalized education and uh, how the resources need to be because if i am a, if i am taking a books of uh, learning and how this might be my interest so these are the interests which you can take it and you can uh, provide according that that is also need to be incorporated to teach them the purpose of education so holistic in, in learning where it integrated engaging and immersive need to be the scientific temper and evidence-based thinking and aesthetic and arts need to be provided so the current focus of enrollment need to be 50% by 2035. Even some states which have already reached the gross enrollment ratio, 50% like states like Tamil Nadu, where the gross enrollment ratio is at present is only 26.3, which we have to work, where three year and four year multiple exit options when it is available, how appropriate certification and self-study mode is going to improve. That is going to be the focus. And MPhil as you all aware, it has been discontinued. An academic bank of credits which facilitates the transfer of credits when we are investing because recently national credit framework now when we recent meeting they told it is not the classroom contact hours matters the learning hours also matter the learning hours in terms of individual learning or in the learning space like library learning hours how it has to be incorporated we have to take into account where the learning of credits where automation need to be made and multidisciplinary education research universities <coughs> Meru need to be established at par with IIT, similar to IIT and IA, similar to National Science Foundation USA and APEX body for funding, National Research Foundation, which is APEX body for fostering right culture, and Higher Education Commission of India. Because now, when the digital repositories have increased, the teachers, when they're writing and preparing a material, they're also not aware of the copyright and other plagiarism aspect, which the resource centers or libraries need to be focused on those aspects which uh, which need to take into consideration so as i told you the four independent vertical which i have already mentioned national higher education regulatory council general education council higher education grant council and national accreditation council which is believed affiliated colleges are phased out in 15 uh, uh, years and which will be taken into account and accordingly uh, the things will be uh, taken into consideration because when it comes to digital library how the li library professionals need to work on it because uh, uh, where national repository for high quality resources, Diksha, holistic development of learning, digital literacy, knowledge of India, and where the National Educational Technological Forum with section 23.3 and 23.6 focus and online education where 24 per chapter focus, it has need to be there. So in higher education system, the transformation as per NDP 2020 it is going towards multidisciplinary holistic education inclusive education in terms of knowledge of india where it has been focused on complete uh, uh, this thing the best thing is where the books the library's role is not to purchase books and uh, include as per the curriculum it is beyond curriculum how creativity and innovation need to be there how they need to lead and support the social events how the learning difficulties need to be for uh, attend how the community service need to be focused how the sustainable development goal number four the quality education how it has to be focused how the resilience factors need to be taken into so include social media to share or extended uh, other activities of uh, knowledge uh, 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 completely in terms of uh, uh, networking of social media to share the 
technologies, it's also the need of the hour, sir. So already the government of initiatives are available in different sectors, the NME ACT, National Mission on Education through Information Communication Technology, where we have a digital library, a NDL we have, and other aspects, we have e-resources management, we have Adiksha, we have, we have OER of this thing, and all those aspects need to be taken into consideration to provide this thing, to make it simple, the teach national education policy focus on support teacher preparation development, improve teaching, education, learning, and evaluation, enhance educational access, streamline educational planning, administration, and management. So PARAC is going to be there where they have been provided a repository for performance assessment, review, and analysis of knowledge for holistic development. So similar to special education zone and general inclusion fund, so similar library of should be of an urban spoke one. So where it spends only 4.6%, whereas we have need more than 7%. So the future ahead, it is impossible to predict the future with great accuracy because the libraries, we never thought libraries will change because it was a, we still remember the people used to take the book and hide the book for the next semester during the summer time on all those things. But now the books becomes a, a, a obsolete rather than it becomes a different learning material. So it is impossible to predict the future with great accuracy, but the trans timelines for library up to 2020, 20, 40, the NEP education is focused. So we have to focus how this NEP 2020 will increase our efficiency, enrichment and enlightenment so that outcome is achieved. And let us decode the policy in a detailed manner in appropriate authentic sources rather than from information from others because otherwise state and central need to get collaborated together for the successful implementation of NEP 2020 and so that the students will grow organically. So if the learning need to be organic, it is a role of academicians and librarians plays an important role in changing the educational ecosystem where the growth need to be maintained appropriately. So getting information from the internet is like taking a water from the fire hydrant. So uh, internet is not the repository, but authentic repositories are the one. Learning resources are from the library resources. So whether it's right or wrong, it's always a question, but we have to remember it is our future. The future, if it is want to be a proper, the digital resources are plenty. The learning need to be lifelong learning. If the lifelong learning need to be uh, heard, so that repository or resource centers or library, the role is always uh, evergreen. But making or adapting for the disruptive technology, because in terms of the disruptive technology, the field of education, as Clayton Christensen has told in his book, Innovative University, the uh, disruptive technology in the field of education is MOOC, Massive Open Online Courses. So this is the way the future is going to be defined. But I don't know whether I provided you the direction because when I talked about NEP 2020, I can talk about the seven to 12 major clusters of uh, higher education, which really focus on providing a complete holistic pictures because that was a major crux which I always focus on each crux, how it has to be taken into consideration in terms of institutional restructuring, in terms of holistic education, in terms of learning enrollment, in terms of energized faculty and teacher education, vocational education, or in terms of professional education, high quality learning, effective governance, regulatory system, Indian language, arts and culture, technology use and inter interaction, and all those aspects. But I don't know whether I covered in the right perspective, but in this lecture, some spark you might have got it uh, to take it further and how to integrate. Because as per the government notification, each institution should have taken an institutional action plan. Rolling framework has to be done for NDP 2020. But when we looked into some of the institutional learning plan, they have focused only the activities which they are taking. In. But the activity which the resource centers or knowledge repositories or library, it has not been incorporated major, major several higher education institutions reports when we looked into it. But this lecture would have provided a spark where it would redefine or kindle the thought of a library science people where the role is multifolded in terms not only from the book perspective, in terms of the digital repository perspective, in terms of social media active perspective, in terms of handling the digital repository, and also disseminating the digital uh, information at right time. So in terms of authentic skills, in terms of urban spoke model, I might have provided some uh, spark. 
and I'm pretty sure my question to the decision maker whether we can win the race because I know we are slow but we are steady because still our system we have to take everyone together because we have told access equity and quality but now access affordability and accountability also have taken into consideration so when accountability and affordability is there my question to decision maker whether we can win the race but we are slow but we are steady so if you have any questions any doubt further answer because it's already 11 5 because they told it by 10 45 i have to wind up the lectures and i have to have for a discussion but uh, sorry for the overshooting because thank you very much for your patient listening if you have any questions or anything you can always uh, contact me through email or a web uh, uh, any whatsapp but uh, if you have any questions now you can uh, uh, the floor is open to audience for discussion whatever the best uh, information which i have i will be happy to share it and uh, uh, so that we can uh, enhance our learning together thank you very much thank you so very much dr janardhan ji for de de delivering you know an um, absolutely an uh, extraordinary uh, highly energizing uh, enriching enlightened talk you know that you have really conducted uh, it was Truly, truly a great experience, you know, listening to you, which was coming out of your enormous experience that you hold. And it was truly a visionary talk, a very transformative talk, and which you had conducted it you know, in such a highly interesting and an engaging manner. It deserves, you know, a great accolades, you know, from all of us, you know. And the it was being conducted in such a in a very easy to understand because uh, as we could also can gather there have been large number of you know confusions and queries at everyone but you have really presented in in such an extraordinary manner that everything is so clear now that what is this NEP and how what institutions are uh, going to do and what are they going to ultimately achieve you know out of it and what are the especially the the most engaging uh, you know thing that you have done you know conducting these surveys wherein our library and information science professionals also know where do we stand and what we all you know have to head towards and implementing it as you have rightly said that you know it's not just simply conducting the activities uh, in the institutions more so we have to really take a very holistic approach and seeing to it that we become a part of you know bringing in that entire uh, transformation uh, in our education system in the respective institutions wherever we, we are thank you so very much it was truly truly a great experience listening to you and uh, with your permission we may like to you know um, transcribe this entire presentation and make it you know more uh, you know to reach out to the various institutions and sending it across and also we may like to uh, ensure that we are able to make this available you know through uh, the various online platforms including the uh, you know the delnet's own uh, youtube channel so we may like to seek your permission in doing that because it was one of the most finest you know and could not have asked for anything more than this and if someone listens to this one hour presentation which was a great uh, you know uh, not only an impressive i would say that you have been able to do it in a truly in an enlightened manner it's like spreading that light you know everyone has been in a great amount of you know uh, ignorance about it but you have really been able to do it in such an extraordinary manner and you really uh, deserves you know our great admiration for such an uh, uh, you know uh, your enormous work you know what you have been speaking about we could see that you have been the one so passionate about you know bringing in you know this kind of a change through nep and this was quite visible you know from your uh, one of the most extraordinary presentations i must say at the occasion of the 25th national convention on knowledge library and information networking if we really try to see uh, one of the most impressive talks you know this indeed has been a truly an extraordinary one thank you very much dr janardhan ji indeed uh, much grateful and uh, we really would also like to thank Dr. Usha Nartesan ji, you know, the director of NIT Triple T, and a former advisor AICT, and also a distinguished governing board member of Delnet, for introducing us to you, you know, because it would not have been possible otherwise for us. So I'm going to convey my very, very special thanks to Madam for this. And we have been able to really get to know about you and the enormous work, and also your, you, you know, it, it's like, it's like an uh, a you know someone you know who is a strong believer in, in that and has been doing it and that was very very much visible it was not the words that you have spoken it was just coming out of your experience it was coming about uh, out of your philosophy you know of believing in you know to bring in that change you know in the education sector thank you so very much and in, in 
this would be, I think, you know, uh, for NEP 2020, if anyone wants to know what they need to do and what is this, you know, that they're, you're ultimately going to do, this would be the top ranked, you know, presentation that anyone, once they listen to it for one hour, they are just clear for life altogether, you know. So thank you very much indeed uh, for making it possible for us to have you and for really sharing your val valuable insights, you know, something to treasure forever. Thank you very much indeed. And I could see that our professional colleagues who are there today, we have 1,000 professionals who are there right now online and on this platform. And we can notice that this has created a lot much of interest. It was quite visible from the presentation itself. And uh, uh, we would just like to request in order to see that we are able to uh, you know, uh, utilize the best of the time and offer distinguished speaker. We request you please uh, to all our attendees, post your message in the chat box so that we can take up more and more questions. One of the questions uh, that I would like to take, you know, we are just uh, going through it. Uh, one question, this is from Mr. Rajesh Kumar Pandey, and he's wanting to know from you, uh, Dr. Janardaji, and this is how the best of NEP could be implemented when the higher education institutions are not getting enough financial assistance, as most of the state universities do not have very good infrastructure, including of the libraries. And he himself being a librarian, uh, you know, is really wanting keen enough to do that, how we can really can bring in uh, this uh, NEP implementation in those particular institutions. So, as I told you in the in the lecture, NEP 2020 folks are more on holistic education, sir, and inclusive. It is no more the concept of state and central. Even though we have a bifurcation of state and central perspective, the, in each state there are well-established central libraries are available. They are going to act as an hub for the state, and subsequently the state library can strengthen. As I told you. It is not. Uh, it is going to be a cloud-based library, and where the access could be from the central funding, and it subsequently the information and knowledge could be disseminated to other libraries in terms of interlibrary uh, concepts uh, already, which was very prominent because interlibrary loan was very famous. When I need any research paper or books, the librarians were really helping me to get the books and papers from other libraries. I still remember during my MTech period and and uh, during my research period. But now, the concepts of the cloud has changed into a different perspective. So where the publishers also need to play an important role away from the uh, charging from a perpetual user, they have to make some concept of social inclusion with a different package, which we have to evolve where the hub and spoke model, the state libraries need to get strengthened through the central libraries, which are going to pay, play a vital role from the central system. Central, because the funding for them, it's going to be there. And to be frank, as I told you, when we went to IIT Singapore, their industries are supplementing with all their case studies in terms of video case studies, where the students are getting enhanced to the latest techniques, where the more academic social, like corporate social responsibility, we have to bring some academic social responsibility where the people need to plug in and come and provide the resources, whether it could be shared among the next generation. So this has to be some model which you have to evolve and the model need to be up, up, up appropriately credited. Otherwise, as I told you, academic loafing concept, this also will create a problem. So uh, so everyone need to go equally. The state library also need to flourish and central library also need to flourish. But state library, one library has to be up for certain states and other libraries where the equal sharing of resources of networking could be made. Some concepts we have to evolve. Thank you very much, Dr. Janardhanji. I would just like to take this opportunity to inform you that Delnet has very recently launched, Madam is aware about it, a vision portal, a video sites online, wherein we are wanting to bring in the video lectures of our faculty members of our institutions, and we are receiving a very good response from our institutions, wherein the video recordings of the lectures of our faculty members are, they, they record it, they send it to us, and we have made a very state-of-the-art portal. And uh, so uh, we, this is also our you know, contribution in some ways towards NEP to see to it that we are able to create you know, a kind of a knowledge sharing platform of the subject matter experts belonging to the various domains of knowledge. So we are on to it. There is one question which is coming from Dr. Tejas Shah and uh, he's a librarian uh, at VVP Engineering College, Rajkot. And uh, it seems that he is, uh, he uh, has referred to saying that dear sir, in NEP 2020, para 24.4F, Content creation, digital repository, and dissemination is required. 
is it possible yes. to produce in better way with the librarian? Is there any requirement of librarians in NEP 2020? I think he's wanting to highlight that there may be a missing link of the librarians in NEP 2020. Uh, though we have been talking about content creation, digital repositories and all, but uh, perhaps the role of the librarians in that is being uh, not included and being a librarian, he's concerned to know about it. Yes, as you all aware, the content creation, the library roles uh, uh, not that much emphasized uh, in NEP 2020. Maybe it is not, maybe they, uh, they, you are a silent uh, speaker because you are contributing in a, a different manner. But all the content which as Madam told uh, Delnet uh, with the digital repository, where NEP 2020 talks in terms of a language, all multiple languages has to be there. So when the resources say you are the right person to identify what all the content available and how this content could be easily accessible and also in a different language like OTT platform. I, I have seen the Delnet platform should be like OTT platform. A video need to be available. The same serial I need to see in Hindi or Malayalam or Tamil or English. So anything it should be there. So such flexibility, these content part need to be taken care of by the libraries because they are the vital role because as academicians i may not i will be only promoting in the content but there are some clusters of uh, uh, libraries who have to take a lead role in converting this content from one language into other uh, languages which their role is predominant when compared to the access of the academicians who create the role because you are going to be the pivotal or game changer in terms of transforming the available content into all the regional languages, which is the main crux of the NEP 2020, where the Indian languages, art and culture need to be. So where you can contribute a lot in terms of a content manager. Sir. Great, thank you so much. This is a question coming from Mr. Siva Panda, and they are all library-centric questions, and you would appreciate that since it's a library conference. We have our library information science professionals, so concerns really remains, you know, those which they they find it, you know. And this is from Mr. Siva Panda, who says, "Sir, I think NEP 2020 will bring an education reform in India, but if a national recognized body will give the proper guidelines for the libraries, it will be helpful to the library professionals." Because the role of libraries and how they can become a game changer, as you said, you know, so someone to really uh, help them out in letting them know what are they supposed to do. Maybe Delnet should take a lead in making exactly. a national yes. document. Yes, yes. Uh, Indeed, you know, we are working on that and uh, I would also like to, through this platform, would like to mention that we are constituting a small committee, you know, for this particular one and we would be seeking, you know, the advice from NIEEE TR Chennai and also a couple of other stakeholders to see to it and as being said by Mr. Siva Panta and many of our professional colleagues, you know, definitely uh, this is a matter of concern that how these libraries, because, you know, there are a kind of uh, expectations are there from libraries, from library and information science professionals by the institutional administrators so we have to see that how we can become a partner in you know in um, undertaking that kind of a change as being pointed out by our distinguished speaker the major focus remains you know making uh, the content available in the indian languages you know and the technologies has are there but we have to really see that how we can really can achieve that so we'll be very happy to have a, a kind of a, some uh, brainstorming sessions on this especially focus on the role of libraries and how this libraries can become the enhancers you know for uh, nep 2020 implementation in their respective institutions one quick question to you uh, which is again coming and we could see that couple of questions you know which are getting flooded on the chat box and one is uh, please elaborate sir that how the multidisciplinary research approach will be met in the universities and language institutions wherein NEP 2020 does have a focus on this that you know you have a multidisciplinary research but they are also more concerned and this concern is being there you know uh, in the institutions you know when they say that they don't have that kind of a, a availability of a content in the various uh, in the various domains so how this can be met in the universities and uh, specific institutions? That's uh, one of the you know attendees wanting to know about it. Uh, uh, correct. Maybe uh, when it talks about multidisciplinary, where uh, the various people need to sit together and come up, but maybe the resources may not be at one institute. But we can have it, uh, resources from other institutes where we can work on it. Because, for example, Central Institute of Classical Tamil, we did one work. So basically, I'm a civil engineer. I want to know about how the water and uh, maintenance. But I want to know how the ancient Pandey Tamil 
near vala melanmai that was the work which we worked on it so how the ancient people were working on the water management aspect so where we worked with the history people where we worked with the language people and where we worked with the engineers so it is um, so this is what we did and we brought out a document where we all the three different disciplines we took the help of a, a central uh, uh, tamil university at tanjavur they helped us a lot and central institute of classical tamil which is mhrd institute they helped us and uh, some history professors where they have taken from their perspective because it, it is individual interest from uh, where we try to network because we are not all the not at the same institute we were at the different institute but we were working on a uh, issues on uh, the common issue one, one of my colleagues also gone uh, how the, uh, the empowered uh, women were there in the ancient tamil uh, because because these are the aspect tamil no need to focus only from a tamil perspective we thought why the tamil could also be focused from a different perspective in terms of management perspective in terms of uh, all of my in terms of uh, uh, bravery in terms of management of resources so we tried uh, how the because it also helped us to see how one culture and one civilization plays an important role how a triple effect has been created in a certain states why in higher education the southern states need to have a more than gross enrollment ratio of 50% when the national average is 50% only by 2035 well average is 26 but southern states are most of the states are more than 50% what is the reason being it what sort of ecosystem lies it because one of the millennium development goal number 8 or sustainable goal number 17 if you take it learn the best practice from others and adopt it that is the one thing because i may not have all the best practice but i can adopt from the others so that is a way uh, which the multidisciplinary need to work professor maybe that is my answer maybe uh, uh dr chanathan ji what we could uh, notice is you know this is a recommendation a strong recommendation which is coming out of your such a you know scintillating talk that you had delivered and that is you know as we could notice that there is a need for creating you know connections and collaborations and which organization like yes yeah an organization like delnet which has now under its umbrella 7800 institutions we can definitely can think about you know as we are you know speaking about this nep 2020 and how these institutions and the role which can be played a crucial role which can be played because we already have got the platform we already have the institutions with us and it's like connecting one to other and through this creating a you know a kind of a platform wherein whether we talk about the best practices we talk about you know who else is working in a particular area getting them connected with someone else and you know inspiring and promoting you know inter and interdisciplinary research also across the across it's like in a borderless manner uh, we would be able to do it so building those connections and inspiring collaborations in out of it i think that would be a, one of the thing that we certainly would like to and we are would like to come back you know to you to seek your huge uh, experience and expertise on this subject and uh, but this is indeed a, one of the major recommendation one can think about you know working and to see to it that how we can make our own libraries you know capable and professionals capable of bringing in some change you know in tune with the requirements of ndp 2020 and uh, become an active part you know in this uh, entire uh, uh, in, entire execution of the work so th that i could see that there are a number of other questions which are coming in and uh, i perhaps uh, uh, we would just like to i, I you know it I, it seems to us that it may be difficult because it's uh, too many questions which are being there uh, uh, and uh, it, i'm just trying to see because there are questions and questions which are being there and uh, but everyone is in great appreciation and admiration uh, for your such a wonderful talk means and this the interest which has been able to we are able to see through the questions which are coming in but uh, everyone is also wanting to see to it that they can be in a you know a position to further inform their own respective institutions about your talk so with your permission we are going to make this available immediately on 16th tomorrow the conference will get over so within one or two days time this entire recording of the session with your permission dr janardan ji we were going to you know make it available on the youtube channel because that concern is also there that we want our institutions to also know about uh, and you know to listen to this presentation again but i think you know we won't like to take much of, uh, of your time we have already already have taken uh, you know you know and you have been so kind and generous 
And we really can't thank you enough for such an extraordinary enlightened talk in you know, NEP 2020. All of us, if you conduct yet another search, you know, uh, survey on, um, uh, you would be able to see, you will be able to get that. We, be, we, we were at 10 o'clock an hour ago, one and a half hour ago, and where all these attendees, you know, 1,000 attendees that we have, precisely 1,000 attendees right now listening to you. And, you know, what a great experience, you know, of being there, you know, and uh, to have so immensely got benefited, you know, with your one of the most sparkling uh, you have. It has been truly uh, a great experience listening to you. And we would really uh, like to ensure that we are going to uh, have you when uh, we are uh, soon. We are going to have that uh, brainstorming session and we would be requesting you once again, you know, to be there with us and it would be really a pleasure you know we'll make a very special request to you and also i'll make a request to madam you know also to join us and it would be a great honor on behalf of delnet and on behalf of each one of us 1000 attendees who are being there with us on this platform we would like to present a small moment to you this is for you dr janardan ji with great amount of gratitude with a, a, you know it, it has been truly a great uh, blessing you know to have listened to you this morning and you have truly enlightened it wasn't most illuminating talk the most illuminating talk and we remain ever grateful to you we are going to send it across to you and we really wish for a time where we can invite you in person uh, and uh, to have an ex you know once again a pleasure you know of having an interaction with you we we are extremely extremely grateful to you for sharing your huge vast expertise that you hold on the subject and it has been a great blessing you know listening to you thank you very much for enlightening our paths in such a meaningful manner and uh, and we are indeed indeed you know much humbled you know and feeling you know grateful to you for being there with us and our very special thanks also to madam dr usha nartisanji for introducing us, you know, this entire fraternity of NACLIN 2022 uh, to you, such a distinguished speaker, having a, such a huge vast, you know, you're such a seasoned professional who knows like NEP, what is NEP 2020, you know, anyone and everyone would just say, please approach Dr. Jija Narzanji and he will be able to, you know, make it just clear in, in just one hour time, you need not to really look around much. You could not have really wished and desired for anything more than this. And it has truly been an extraordinary experience in listening to you and getting so much immensely benefited with your vast expertise on this subject. And the manner that you conducted, truly engaging, truly exciting, truly energizing, and beyond any expression. Thank you so very much, much grateful. Much grateful from all of us, you know, uh, who are a part of our deliberations today. We remain much grateful to you. And we really look forward to having yet another opportunity to having you again with us. Thank you so Thank much you. indeed. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you very much. Thanks. It has been a great pleasure in having our distinguished speaker, Dr. G. Janardhanji, who has been able to really conduct the session in such an uh, uh, enlightened manner and we truly are feeling so very grateful thank you very much thank you indeed so uh, we would like to request our attendees that we are shortly going to start off our uh, next the technical session too which is on reading habits growing concerns and uh, we are going to have a keynote presentation on reading habits in digital era growing challenges and concerns for libraries and this has been a great concern for each and every uh, library and information science professional we are shortly going to be, you know, joined by Dr. Geeta Malhotra ji. Madam is already there with us, the country director, Reed India Gurkha. Uh, I'm requesting uh, uh, Madam, uh, Dr. Geeta Malhotra ji, ma'am, could you please kindly switch on your webcam? Requesting. Uh, good morning. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a great honor and pleasure to have you with us. Thank you so very much indeed, ma'am. Requesting you to just kindly unmute yourself. Yes, I have done that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you Thanks, so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's, it's a pleasure, ma'am. It's such a great pleasure and honor to have you with us today. And uh, we would like to, uh, shall we give you, ma'am, and uh, control? Uh, the, shall we yes. give you control from here? Yeah, surely, ma'am. It's just doing. Thank you, ma'am. If you can just can accept it. Yes. My screen yes. is visible. 
Yeah, yeah, that's there, ma'am. If you can just can put it in the slide uh, mode so uh, that all our attendees can view it. It's in the slide mode only. Uh, no, ma'am. It is. Uh, yeah. The uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. It is perfect. It is very perfect, ma'am. Yeah. So uh, yeah. it's it's a great honor and pleasure for us to welcome now. Uh, our most distinguished speaker of technical session two on reading habits, growing concerns, uh, Madam uh, Dr. Geeta Malhotraji, the country director, Read India, and a great well wisher of Delnet, you know, for the years all together. And it is always such a great pleasure and honor to get connected, whether in an online or in person, to always interact with you, ma'am. We are much grateful to you always for being so supportive of us and always to shower, you know, your cooperation, your helping hand to us. We remain ever grateful to you. We, we welcome you, ma'am. Thank, you. The Thank you so National much. Convention. It's, it's a great honor, ma'am. It's a great honor. I have immense pleasure in uh, welcoming and introducing uh, uh, our distinguished speaker of technical session two, Dr. Geeta Malhotraji, who is the country director for Reedida, uh, that is Rural Education and Development. Uh, Dr. Malhotra has been now uh, with Read India for past nearly more than 15 years now and has helped bring 42 REED centers across the country in, in nearly 12 states. Uh, Dr. Malhotra constantly performs networking for partnerships and fundraising apart from outreach activities to bring the best training and capacity building programs to read community library and resource centers while overseeing all operations in India. Dr. Malhotra uses her strong experience, professional and academic connections to create new opportunities for Read India. She started her career with Population Foundation of India in 1981 and has been actively working in the development sector to implement a variety of programs in rural Asia, especially on women empowerment and livelihood, health, youth development, farming, sustainable enterprises, and ICTs. Madam has participated in the Astro Social Impact Leadership Program supported by USAID and Howard Pub Business Publishing and has also participated in the CSS CSC Leaders Program organized by Common Purpose and HRH, the Duke of Edinburgh Commonwealth Study Conference and attended the Leadership Program in 2018 as their alumni. She possesses a Master's in Population Sciences, Sociology and PhD in role of elected women in reproductive and health programs in India. In the recent years, Dr. Malhotra has been focusing on also making women as entrepreneurs by training them on a variety of aspects to sustain the social enterprises with special focus on enhancing their existing skills. These programs are being run in seven states with 5,000 women who are working on various products and learning the skills on quality control, product design, marketing, online selling, logistics, and networking. It's a great honor and pleasure, ma'am, to welcome you once again to NACLIN 2022. It's a profound privilege you know, for us to have you with us you know, on the session, which is on a topic of great relevance and importance for we, the library and information science professionals, and uh, 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 we request you now to kindly conduct the presentation on reading habits in digital era, growing challenges and concerns for libraries. Madam holds a great expertise being the country director for Read India and has closely been, you know, working and enhancing and inculcating and helping out, you know, the communities at large uh, and also uh, inspiring, you know, many of the youngsters, you know, to get, uh, you know, to the to the current times, the requirements of the times, and uh, and we are much grateful to you, ma'am, for your consistent support, a splendid support that you always, always have been extending to us. We take this opportunity to thank you, ma'am, for your, you know, relentless support always to us, and we would like to now request you to kindly start the deliberations. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you so much, Sangeeta ji, for such a wonderful introduction. But the audience may be surprised that I'm working on women empowerment and how I'm going to talk about the libraries. Uh, I just want to add here that Read India is an organization who establishes community library and resource centers in rural parts of India. The model is that we go to the community because my experience, I'm going to combine my academic knowledge with my experience, my sharing about the work we are doing and how the reading is very, very important in our country. So while traveling to the rural areas, visiting to the rural schools and then establishing community library and resource centers, the purpose was that 
the women should realize the importance of education. That's how the Women Entrepreneurship Program was laid down just with this motive that if we are empowering a woman, a woman has to commit with ourselves that they have to educate, they have to create opportunities for higher education of their children, especially the girl children. So we contributed by educating women themselves, their daughters, through community library and resource centers we have been establishing, but without money, without the economic status in their hands, they were helpless to continue the higher education of their children because we were creating libraries and we are continuing to create libraries in rural parts of India, but the education component had to be inculcated into their minds and how it is important for the future of their children. That's how we uh, integrated um, education with livelihood and the concept we have been promoting was library to livelihood. So the required knowledge, now I listened to the, my, the previous honorable speaker, he was also mentioning about the holistic development. So, the purpose was how the libraries, the web of libraries could be created for holistic development of the communities at the rural platform where the next billion population is residing. We have to keep in our mind when we are talking about the holistic development, they should not be left behind. So my whole experience of uh, more than 30 years traveling to rural areas and what I'm going to share is based on my own experience. Uh, can can my presentation be shown, please? It is, it is ma'am. You can just can, ma'am, go to the next slide. Uh, actually, it is not coming. It is just my, it, my screen have, is coming. Uh, it is, ma'am. If you can just can click to the next slide, ma'am, it will be with the arrow key otherwise. Uh, because this is, yes, ma'am, it is fine. It's a very no, my, my my video is coming. My my picture is coming, not the slides. Slide ma'am, we are able to see it from here. We are um, able to see the slide, ma'am. But um, I am not, I am not able not, to see. Achha, okay, slides. you're not, ma'am. Just just mm -hmm. give, give a minute, ma'am. Let me take the control back and we will again give you the control. Just for a moment. Yeah. Just just for a moment. We'll give you a control back, ma'am. Yeah. Yes. Just accept it, ma'am, once again. Yeah. Are you able to now? Uh, because, ma'am, the screen is visible here, ma'am. The PPT file is visible here. I sent it to you. I'm not able to see my. Actually, the, yeah, it's okay. It's okay now. It's okay now? Yeah, Please, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So we are going to talk about, uh, you know, reading habits, growing challenges and concerns for libraries. It's very interesting topic and it's very close to my heart because whenever I go to the libraries, see children reading there, it really gives me the happiness. Now uh, we would like to share that knowledge and wisdom have always been the driving force in our society. We all accept that. Reading is one of the most powerful tools to broaden the horizons of our thinking and enhance our knowledge and awareness. It also helps in enhancing our expression, nurturing our imagination and creativity. That's how we are now saying about holistic development. Information networking, if we ponder on without connecting with internet connectivity, it was the people's network in earlier times. I would like to again focus on, we are focusing on internet connectivity, but people's network is very, 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 very important. And in earlier times, people sitting together at public places, sharing information were known as information hubs. Because when I go to the rural villages, I see the elders sitting in Chopal and talking about, and we are not giving them the space to share their knowledge. And we are, uh, you know, we are losing somewhere um, the knowledge which lies with us traditionally. The place for sharing experiences, past learning, best practices, lessons of life from Upanishads, etc. You know, we used to listen from our grandparents, from our 
uh, you know, the, there were many, many public speakers and somehow we are losing those speakers now in the present time because the children are just focused on having mobile in their hands or the laptops in their hands. They don't get time or they don't give time to the elders present in the family for the knowledge which we can get from them. These practices helped in respecting humanity, elders, teachers as gurus, helped in creating people's bonding, relationship building. Elders in the families knew whose child is preparing for what examination, from where he is getting the books, parents connecting with teachers, giving time to their children, and helping them prepare for their growth in tough circumstances. There were stalwarts in our society, there still exist, Human connectivity was the essence of life and somewhere we are losing it now. Libraries were visited by all, even if they were at a distance. Information and knowledge repository was available. These are my personal thoughts, which I'm sharing here. And I do strongly believe in this because somewhere the people's touch is going away from us, we are confined to our cocoons, whether we are in a professional life or at home, wherever it is, the people's connectivity is missing and we must think of reviving it back along with the internet connectivity. Knowledge library and information networking. Let us talk about the integral relationship between knowledge and library and knowledge and information networking. When we network with people and start building connections, these connections also connect us with their connections resulting in personal growth. People's networking not only helps in professional life, but also in personal life as well. The information and knowledge shared by people at all walks of life, home, society, schools, universities, offices, and at public spaces has immense value because this knowledge is shared discussed, analyzed, and documented. Libraries are the hubs of information and knowledge, but human intervention is valued along with automation. I would like to remind here when the COVID came, we are working with the rural areas and we are connected with almost five lakh people in India. When the COVID came, we were really helpless how to connect them because we were not able to travel in the rural parts of India and all our libraries, were just shutting out. So what we said that, okay, we have to create the network where we can connect with them. We train them how to use, use Zoom. We had free access to internet in our libraries. People used to walk within the villages to come there and we help them connected with the doctor so that they don't run to the districts and the states for medication and treatment. We provided them the consultancy through network, through uh, Zoom uh, calls we were arranging for them at their doorsteps. So we have to understand how the people connection with the information, with the network connection is very, very important when we have to serve the community, those who are deprived of all these opportunities. Exploring, engaging, and expanding our next-gen library users. This is the topic which I have been given. We are conscious of exploring, engaging, and expanding the libraries and the library users. While talking about next-generation library users, let us focus on demographic transition, which is the major um, point everyone has to understand. This knowledge has to be percolated through libraries to all human beings because this is very, very crucial when we talk about uh, education, education policy, giving education platforms to the children in the rural areas, which means the young population in simple words. What is required is building human capital, especially primary education to higher education and vocational training, innovation, research and development, increase the skill set of growing working age population well-functioning institutions, respect for the rule of law, respect to rights and equal opportunities. According to me, if we just take cognizance of all these points, we can definitely focus on holistic development, holistic education of the people 
whom we really want to target during this demographic transition period. Children in rural area, when we talk about the emotional, social, and physical development of children has a direct impact on the overall development of the country. Understanding the status of children is thus of immense importance. In the Indian context, this assumes special significance as children zero to 14 years comprise around one third of the total population of the country. 48% of the child population in the age group zero to 14 years is female. 74% of the children zero to six years live in rural areas, whereas the rural population constitutes 69% of the total population in India. And we all very well know, I don't want to talk on this platform, the kind of resources, affordability, and accountability of the stakeholders we can have. Because these are the schools in the rural areas, the picture I'm showing to you, they don't get otherwise the platform. The three to six years age group, when we are talking about, they'll be, for the next 10 years, they'll be uh, in the age group 14, uh, zero to 14 years. Are we taking care, uh, care of them by providing them all the amenities, all the uh, facilities for a quality education to them? This is the need of the R. Youth development programs, improvement in confidence level in youth, determined through the defined parameters measure about their self-esteem, self-confidence, and leadership skills. Increased awareness about various career opportunities available and improved understanding on how to pursue their respective fields. When I travel to the rural areas, I, I, I'm just sharing my experience. The youth doesn't have any direction. They don't know what they have to do. The families are so concerned, they don't want them to migrate to the urban areas. They know they will be lost. Because of the COVID, the security is so important to them, they don't want to let their children leave the villages and try for, for their own growth and development. Every week I take leadership sessions with the, uh, with the youth in the, uh, through Zoom and 100 to 200 youth join the program. And we definitely motivate them. We provide the opportunities. We encourage them, go to the rural libraries and uh, you know enhance your skills. But there is a need for constant and consistent engagement with them. And that could only happen through libraries. We have huge libraries, but this is the committed role of the librarian and other stakeholders available in the uh, that geographies. We have to create that network. The web of human network can really help us resolve this issue. Accessibility to books with mentors to make youth powerful with positive energies is to be built. This is what the foundation courses in school education can help. General reading along with life skills interventions is very, very important. When we talk about holistic development, we have to take cognizance of all these things. And again, I am saying, uh, based on our success as an organization, connecting youth and children in the villages, providing them access uh, to books, free access to internet, and whatever knowledge resources we have, we provide them and we connect with them using technology. Technology is just a tool. We have to have human interventions when we really empower uh, the communities, the youth we are working with. But reading habits. While we focus on inculcating the habit of reading and writing, we should focus on the three aspects. Accessibility to relevant books, affordability, accountability. My uh, the earlier uh, presenter also focused on accountability, and this is the need of today's programs and the interventions. Accountability towards encouraging reading habits. Access to books has a great link with the economic status. While in urban areas, children have books for reading, but maximum diversions create a barrier. In rural areas, the priority of buying a book for the child is almost the last priority. 
see with this we are creating a big divide which we are not realizing at this time while in urban areas children parents play a vital role in inculcating these habits in urban areas many parents do not have time they can afford gadgets to give in the hands of children in rural areas due to low literacy rate even mothers cannot play the role of encouraging children to read and again focusing on the next billion population which is uh, staying in the rural areas pure learning in urban areas is reducing to great extent while in rural areas accountability towards reading is almost negligible the above are the points which we know but still we as community do not take steps towards improving these habits every village one library parents teachers volunteers youth under the umbrella of libraries with the guidance of librarians join hands to make children read and write this is the role of the librarians and the stakeholders in the rural areas to join hands and inculcate the habits otherwise it will not be practically done instead of increasing the resources or creating demand the full utilization of the existing resources is also to be realized i see the in the public libraries there are thousands and thousands of books but how many are being read that is a question mark we have to create those opportunities through human interventions if we really want that reading habits to be improved improving reading and writing habits interest in reading books and improved writing skills among children and youth is the need i witness when i go to the rural areas i visit to the government schools a, a boy or a girl of 14 years cannot read three words simple words they cannot read improved communication in simple words should be the daily exercise with them because they don't even talk they don't know how to express themselves so these are the big gaps which have which need practical intervention improvement in pronunciation dictation fluency in speaking any language is very very important we don't want that we should teach them english i went to baran the aspirational district and met the district collector there this the, he very openly told me ma'am if you have a curriculum in their own language in their own dialect please come and design the programs for them we really want to teach them in their own dialect they can learn the foreign language later but actually for for making them uh interested and know the importance of education first we have to train them we have to make them read we have to encourage them in their own dialect improvement improvement in knowledge about technology and better computer skills is the future requirement now i should i am just linking with the statement i made he said that we can we can create an opportunity we also provide them access to computers and digital programs and we teach them very high end uh, um, computer programs also through uh, adobe or whatever the programs we uh, provide them for employability we are also doing that but reading should not be ignored while adapting technology that has to be an integral part of the technology the best students could be made by reading champions for making the other students learn so all these could be possible only through human intervention libraries and library users in the new era era dr s r ranganathan yes we have five laws and i tell you in each of our community library five laws are pasted there the children are encouraged to remember them and they only make the charts and put in the libraries these five laws so that they understand the importance of book in their life and every time when they visit the library the librarian encourages them to read these five laws and now we have also started pasting the new five laws given by government as libraries serve humanity 
respect all forms by which knowledge is communicated, use technology intelligently to enhance service, protect free access to knowledge, honor the past and create the future. So these are very, very relevant points to what I am sharing with all of you because we have to understand the gaps and try to fill these gaps. Collective efforts in painting time. Government, non-government organizations are doing very good work in promoting reading and writing. Pandemic has impacted on reading habits because of two years of gap in attending the schools. Mindsets have changed, priorities have changed due to fear, emotional setback, and loss of family members. New statistics will tell us how many children have lost their parents' consequences of single parenting, myths, stigma, and many other social barriers. Every human being has to come forward with united hands, with collective efforts to address this alarming situation and pledge for the service and making India a well-read nation. Small efforts will definitely bring change. Youth and librarians. Library science is important for managing libraries in schools. It is very difficult to have librarian in each school. One librarian with one school may not be able to manage such an important aspect of not only managing books, but encouraging the children on effective use of books and organizing various programs on daily basis on the culmination of reading habits. Youth could be trained with these special skills. Training programs should be organized from the class eight, not only on library management, but making reading clubs in the schools and encouraging children to manage these under mentorship program from their senior class students. These students should be encouraged to have community libraries and can also make community mentorship program by forming community groups for reading and other related programs. And tell you, we are doing this. We are doing in the areas where we have set up community libraries. We are, we don't have any, any uh, so-called, uh, you know, in rural areas, it's very difficult to find um, the library, uh, uh, the librarian with the librarian degree because it's not possible. But we train them on accession, cataloging, maintaining the records and everything by inviting professional librarians to the rural areas and telling them to uh, learn. So this is very important because if we, if the universities or any institutions can uh, design a program of a short-term librarian course, which would help the rural youth to take on and then create their own libraries, because now we are talking at the national and international level, community first, peoples first. So we have to create opportunities to uh, you know, tell them to come in front and promote the reading habits. Uh, as physical exercise is important for the body, reading is equally important for mind and the brain. Every playground for exercise should have a small library. After playing, children should spend time for reading too. Reading is the core. Books are or online is the choice of the individual. Government laws have been framed from the viewpoint of function of librarian engaged in a technology, technological society, which needs to be considered at this stage for further progress in existing setup. Hence, the role of library and librarian has changed basically in the techno-driven world. The advancement in context of sharing resources should be used for the benefit of students and teaching faculty in the best possible manner. The adequate infrastructure is one of the major barriers in India because universities provide connectivity, but how and to what extent it is used is more important. I visited Ashoka University, Rishihud University, Kriya University, and wherever I go in rural areas, first I visit the university's libraries. Five, huge infrastructure is available, but for whom? Those who are paying. 
but those who are who cannot afford are they eligible to get all these resources at their doorsteps is a major question in front of us though the access of required information and reading material is possible through internet technology books are part and parcel of getting relevant knowledge and retaining it for lifelong but how many children have access to books you know every day we receive now the demand of the books has changed from the past 15 years i'm witnessing in this organization earlier we were giving the books ju just for general reading and the curriculum books now students say because the reading habit has been culminated in that they say we need competitive examination books we need books for medical preparation we need books for neat um, clearance examinations and all and through our libraries in pune we have a library in kadilwadi village and that village is known for um, the scholars uh, the school uh, even our uh, uh, the late uh, president of India also visited the school and awarded the children. The library is open from morning 6 o'clock till 12 night because children need safe space, electricity, and the access to books for reading and preparing for their higher education. Read India initiatives on promotion of reading and writing. Read India has 54 community library and resource centers. Read Tim visits the government schools and conducts sessions on reading. Age appropriate reading and writing programs are organized. Special trainers are in the libraries who are trained from time to time to conduct reading and writing sessions. Read India has designed the monitoring process and impact of our interventions basically focused on reading and writing because we monitor each child how he or she is progressing in reading and writing the major findings were that the children starting in the primary schools are not able to read even three alphabet words so how we plan our interventions based on our baseline service we do with the government schools and the communities where we established libraries and how we are improving the reading and writing habits of the children special uh, serious efforts are being done for improving the reading habits of the children commitment from the like-minded organizations all over india I uh, I was part, Read India was part of the uh, reading, national reading mission of PN Panikar Foundation from Kerala. The whole program, the mission was blessed by the Honorable Prime Minister of India and Niti Aayog. And how we took this mission into the interior parts of the rural areas through Read India, where, uh, where the children even can't even imagine of library. Room to Read is doing excellent work in enhancing reading uh, habits of the children. Pratham is also doing excellent work. Likewise, there are many individuals who have taken the challenges for improving reading habits across rural India. The outcome of all the efforts is to improvise the reading habits of children below 15 years to get the dividend of demographic transition. These children should enter into the formal working scenario to contribute to the GDP of the country. And B, the gem of the youth population with positive spirits and focus on their self-growth and development. This is the need of the art. IPLM recommendations also I would like to hear because we keep on organizing the conferences and seminars and very strong rec recommendations also come. A high profile national level public library as well as reading habits campaign should be launched. The Ministry of Culture should initiate the public library campaign. Media house along with media houses, non-for-profit foundations, citizens and other private sector to create awareness of public libraries or improving their functions and uh, improving the reading habits, I should say that. Creating and strengthening the habit of reading among the communities, especially among the children. Lessons from international libraries, because I have visited the libraries in US, in Australia, in Singapore, in Malaysia, just to learn how they are improving. And you know, in Australia, a child has to read 
100 story books before getting an admission in the class first who is enabling it the librarian the librarian the facilitator in the library because each county has a library and when the facilitator is helping him or her to read 100 stories so that his mind develops before he goes to the class one certificates are issued for admission in the schools web of libraries is needed in india public private partnership model needs to be appreciated and promoted drawing a line between the public private and community libraries is adding on to the spending of more resources with limited outcomes so we have uh, we have to remove the compartmentalization when we are talking about improving reading and uh, writing habits all the institutions the stakeholders the partnership should come forward to focus on this it has to be a mission people's initiative the initiative has to be taken by people for making our children uh, to read for their own future development information technology is a tool and not an end itself life has to be taken with multifold tools in hands and reading and basic and very important tool for knowledge if children have to take part in debates and clear examinations reading leading to good writing skills is also an essence some part of the income has to be spent on purchase of books followed by the it tools balance has to be maintained the control is in the hands of common citizens now let us join hands together to create community libraries and help children and every citizen of the country improve the habit of reading and writing thank you that's all i just wanted to share based on my experience i'm open for questions and i would like to answer based on my experience only because my 15 years of life has been dedicated setting up community libraries in rural areas in partnership with the communities directly with themselves thank you so much sangeeta ji for this time yeah thank you ma'am thank you so very much for sharing your words of wisdom you know with us and you have you know been immensely contributing uh, to the public libraries to the community libraries that's the strong message that we are able to get and i think uh, uh, you know as uh, the library and information science professional wherever they are in whichever institution they are being working in there has been now uh, a strong focus that how even the academic institutions uh, you know during the late evening hours or during the you know for example even the school libraries turning into the community you know community information centers or as a public library spaces you know to utilize them i think uh, there's a greater responsibility as being a very uh, you know uh, uh, you know, everyone has to bring in their, uh, you know, their efforts together, you know, to serve the community. Uh, and it's not just simply restricted to certain institutions, organizations. So as you have rightly, ma'am, also pointed it out about this uh, triple P model, you know, public-private partnerships, you know, to be in place. And I think each one of us has a greater responsibility to contribute. It's not that only we keep on just expecting, you know, that the system would, uh, you know, would further improve and for further develop. We have to be a more uh, you know uh, should uh, you know uh, you know should contribute in a more uh, constructive manner for this entire thing so wherever we are whatever kind of institutions we may be in as we all are here ma'am 1000 professionals you know library and information science professionals who are there so in whatever spaces and they are all from far flung places in the country you have shown us even have cited this example uh, this library in Pune, wherein you said that which remains open from six o'clock in the morning till 12 o'clock because students may not have any electricity, you know, in their homes and then they want to uh, study, they want to prepare for their exams. So it becomes like a third space for them. So it's important for us to think of and, uh, you know, uh, uh, making our libraries available to our community, uh, to our, uh, you know, to our citizens at large as a third space, because uh, wherever they are, they would be requiring a space where they can go and then they can further can get into, you know. So and also this uh, very, uh, when this example they have cited of Australia, wherein 100 story books means if we really uh, think about that, uh, how many of our children, you know, in uh, in our own, um, uh, you know, homes, you know, when they get into the first class, how many of us really have thought about that hundred story books? Uh, it which is, but yes, they have developed those systems, but there's uh, 
you know, good amount of uh, efforts needs to be made. And it's like sensitizing everyone. It's not only developing the systems. It's also like everyone has to play a more responsible role in that. This reminds us, ma'am, uh, way back in uh, NACLIN 2014 that we had at NACLIN, wherein we had our honorable, uh, you know, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalamji, who came. And even in his inaugural address, he had uh, mentioned it very clearly and had asked, you know, that, uh, that in every home you should have a library. You know, he was of the very strong view uh, that uh, that every home to have a library for your own children. And that's how then you can expect the children, you know, to uh, get into that reading habit. So thank you so very much, ma'am. And uh, we really salute your spirits and the work that you have been immensely, you know, contributing uh, on uh, developing, uh, especially inculcating these reading habits. Also, you have been conducting a number of workshops, programs and other things. And it's it's really a remarkable contribution of yours, ma'am, for which we ever remain grateful. And you're always so generous and uh, so very uh, supportive of us. We, we are much, ma'am, we are much grateful to you for that. So with your permission now, ma'am, we would like to make the floor open for questions requesting our attendees uh, please kindly come forward and let us know uh, you know any questions or anything that you may uh, like to ask i would just uh, okay ma'am this is a question from mr siba pande and uh, who is saying that uh, after covid uh, uh, i believe he's i think uh, on the after covid 19 maximum number of students are coming to the library but not reading the print or ebook but they are uh, reading the PPTs given by the concerned faculty. How we will change this reading habit of the students? I think, you know, it means more an abstract kind of a knowledge that they are into now, you know, so they don't want to read even the yeah. full text print titles. So what is ma'am, how uh, how would you like to ma'am react to this? And as a librarian, Mr. Siba Pardee is concerned and that's the entire uh, profession is yeah. concerned that the declining footfalls. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would like to say that if they are reading because they want to learn, because they wasted time, because without their any fault, the time has been wasted, the crucial two years have been wasted. So even we are asked for this kind of, uh, you know, already prepared lessons for them so that they can just learn and then match with the class. But we have to help them if they are reading particular PPTs for their knowledge, the librarian can give the relevant book from where the PPT has been made. Because the concepts have to be clear. It's not only, you know, um, just uh, remembering what is mentioned in the PPT, but the reading has to be done from where these uh, concise information in the PPT has come. So librarian can help them to get those books where they can read in addition to get the concepts clear, to get the ideas clear, so that the knowledge stays with them lifelong. It's not only for a particular short time. Thank you, ma'am. Um, another question, which is uh, from Mr. Rajesh Kumar Pandey, and he's want, he, he uh, has, again, ma'am, something to do with COVID, and everyone knows about it, uh, that how it has really impacted, and his concern always, and the question is about it, saying that during COVID, you know, uh, uh, we all have been aware about it that it has, uh, you know, the children has been impacted a lot, and especially about their reading habits and skill sets. How do you see uh, the role of technology is concerning its impact on education and reading habits? Uh, how really to, and this has been an issue, ma'am, being uh, faced by everyone, and especially with our young children, we have, you know, seen that now they are more, uh, you know, glued on their uh, devices or the digital devices. And uh, how really, uh, you know, what is a, I uh, you know, it's, it's a... hmm. Yeah, I, I just wanted to share our examples only because what we did during COVID, we have rural libraries also. And even in the districts or urban areas, whatever, we used to send one warrior because the frontline workers we have in the communities where they were providing medicines and, you know, knowledge on prevention of the COVID because the people were really frustrated and they don't know the way forward. So what we used to do in newspapers, we used to pack five five books. So that books were given at every doorstep and they used to keep for a day, 24 hours. And then we tell them, if we are giving you these books, your children have to read these books. 
and the volunteer will come forward again after a one week and collect these books. And we were taking all COVID precautions. We never stopped reading programs during COVID also because we have huge network of human interventions in our areas. So they used to take it as volunteering job because they knew the children are sitting at home and you know, the whole uh, attention is also created because the mother has to take care of them. And there are many social, um, uh, you know, negativities also come in the family. To keep the momentum high, we used to pack the books in the newspaper and deliver it at every doorstep so that their children can read and the youth can read and then continue the reading habits. That's commendable, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. A question, ma'am, which is coming from uh, Dr. Felsi D'Souza, and she's a librarian at St. Joseph's Engineering College in Mangalore, and she's wanting to know, ma'am, can you please recommend some best practices for higher education institutions for enhancing reading habits in the libraries? The simple thing is that when the students are coming in the library, somewhere you have to tell them, you pick up a book and read and don't give access to the internet. Because internet is available 24 into seven at their homes. But when they are coming to the library, if the librarian has to play a very important role, what kind of information they are seeking for? It's not only they come to the library, sit in front of the computer, have access to the content which are available. It has to be multi, you know, dimensional. They have to read the book first because every entry in the library is supposed to be guaranteed that they are picking up the book and reading. And later they can have access to the internet. Because Thank I you, see beautiful libraries are there, but the children are sitting on laptops and the computers and the Kindles when they are reading. Retention will not come. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. We have Dr. Gidhar Kunkurji who is wanting to ask a question over the voice uh, call, and we are requesting uh, the chief librarian at LNIT in Jaipur and formerly with the uh, Bits Pilani. Uh, Gidharji, uh, you are connected right now. You may like to ask a question. We welcome you to Naklin and requesting you to ask a question uh, to our distinguished speaker. Gizrishi, I have unmuted you. Could you please kindly ask your question? Requesting you yet again, Gizrishi, uh, you're connected right now. I've sent you a request uh, once again. Yes. Hello. I'm sorry, we are not able to hear you and uh, requesting you. Uh, we can see that also at the same time, we have a couple of our other colleagues who are wanting to ask a question on the voice we have mr pramod singh uh, okay once again just trying to reach you uh Girdushi, i've unmuted you yet again could you please speak no i believe there are there's some issue you know we have dr s suresh who is wanting to ask a question now uh, over the voice dr suresh i have unmuted you please unmute uh we are connected right now you can ask your question yeah good, yeah, good morning madam uh yes can you hear my voice yeah, very much, Dr. Suresh. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Uh, because we are started for reading for a hostel students mm, after class work, the students are not interested to read the books. They are not interested to come down to the library. How to motivate the students for the graduate students? Because we are given to the very nominal services and the enormous providing enormous services for the students. But the students they are not interested to read physical books. How to motivate the books? Uh, reading habits and how to inculcate the reading habits please give me the brief explanation madam thank you very uh, much you know, uh, yeah very 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 good question because if we leave uh just children to read on their own they will not do we have to have a person a professional or a facilitator who help them uh, to interact with them on the topics they would like to know they are searching through internet the topics they would like to learn but if human intervention is there some facilitator is there who can help them in groups to read what they want to do 
once we start reading with them, they'll develop the habit of reading. This is the practical intervention we need. We, we, uh, even in our libraries, when the children come, we tell them to read the books. The librarian tells them what kind of book you want to read. And she sits with them and then help him to understand and discuss later on what you have read. Are you able to absorb? You need any help? So we have a list of facilitators and the teachers in the library and we connect with them. So Thank that's why right. my first presentation was on human interventions. And definitely, ma'am, in the libraries, uh, Dr. Suresh, uh, you can also you can think about having some uh, competitions you can do. Let's say, uh, yeah. you know, on some of the best biographies, you say, OK, you go to 923 section, you know, and read some of the biography of your some of the eminent personality. And then you can have a competition, you know, wherein they would talk about, you know, what have been they have been able to most inspiring part, you know, that they have find, uh, you know, of a particular personality means we have to really do it in such a way because our the young uh, generation that we are talking about the new gen, uh, you know, next gen library users. So we have to really bring it, you know, in such a way or you can conduct online discussion uh, programs that you can do it online. You can invite the authors, you can invite some discussants and involve the students, make it mandatory that they have to attend, like Madam has highlighted about this Australian case of 100 story books, you know, for a first standard student. So I think definitely in higher education institution, you make it as a kind of your policy that yes, indeed, in uh, uh, at least if not monthly, uh, bi-monthly or so, they, they should have read at least one book title or in two months, you know, one book uh, title and you can, uh, you know, organize some competitions and you can give them a certificate in that. I think what uh, can be the most uh, inspiring part and motivating part in, in order to make them, you know, a little more uh, to come forward, you can say that all of you, you know, who have read the books and who will participate in that competition, you are going to get and give a chance to everyone to speak, whatsoever, you know, they have read about, you know, and then they will just share and you can broadcast it online. You can have it in a physical space also. You can have a quiz, for example, in that. You can always can ask them, you know, certain questions. So that is too because, uh, you know, we have to uh, bring, you know, all this now as we are dealing with, our, you know, the, the young generation. Uh, we have to bring it in, in a way which is more appealing to them and they feel more exciting to be a part of that. So, and then, you know, it's like bringing them once, showing them a path, and then they, they're going to really come back and then they will uh, do that. So I believe we have to proactively think about some new fresh thinking has to also get in at the same time. We can see that now we have Mr. Pramod Singh who is wanting to get connected. Mr. Pramod Singh, uh, we have unmuted you. Please kindly, uh, please kindly unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Mr. Pramod Singh. Not able to do. I'm extremely sorry. I have to move on to the next. We have uh, Mr. Mas Mastaneya Vemula. Mr. Mastaneya Vemula, could you please unmute yourself? Mr. Mastaneya uh, Vemula, could you please unmute yourself to ask a question? I think uh, some of you are not able to. Let me just then go back and see because in the chat box I can see some of the questions. Uh, this is ma'am a question coming from Dr. Janardhan Reji Keller and who is wanting to know from how can we contribute proceed our services by opening uh, resource centers at villages 40 kilometers away from Hyderabad. Uh, Dr. Janadhar Reddy is from CSI Institute of Technology, man from Hyderabad. He's our chief librarian there, and he's wanting to know. He's it seems that he's wanting to open up uh, a village uh, library, which is 40 kilometers away from Hyderabad. Uh, any ma'am advice? What kind of advice would you like to give it to him? Uh, I would also like to share that we opened the small libraries along. We are having libraries in Hyderabad, and then we opened small units of libraries in the in. Sangaredi and Rangaredi villages where we introduce the technology learning also for the youth. The, uh, the local panchayats give the space to set up the library. And when you form the community together as a group of stakeholders, they also get donations to buy the books also. 
Otherwise, Read India can also help and share the model we are working with. And then we can help for setting up the libraries like this because our libraries are in interior parts of the um, India in rural areas where the children don't have access to books. So for, we provide access to books there and we can explore. We have five libraries in uh, Hyderabad, Telangana, and I can connect with the person who has been managing this. That would be man great because I we could see that uh, Dr. Reddy, you know, uh, he's uh, talking about in Shamshabad, you know, they have this library and I uh, must be wanting, you know, to do something. Yes, 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 exactly. Yes. So, Dr. Reddy, uh, we would make it sure uh, that we will, we are going to have the details of uh, Madam, you know, we will let you have the details and uh, uh, we request Madam, you know, to help you out under the Read India program, you know, if uh, they can really can help you and at least getting you connected with our concerned authorities and you would be able to. It's 40 kilometers away, a village, uh, uh, you know, which is there and wherein he is wanting to. We truly appreciate, you know, and this is what is a high point, you know, that you are getting inspired and that's uh, what has been the ultimate aim of, you know, having the session. So you're thinking, you know, beyond, uh, you know, and re reaching out to those which are unreachable. That's truly we appreciate. We appreciate the spirits. Uh, we could also can. Uh, okay, ma'am, this is a question. Uh, Okay, this is from Mrs. Jamala Patil, ma'am, from Symbiosis University in Dar, and she's wanting to know, Dr. Jamala Patil is wanting know, to know what is the best way to motivate college and university students to read journals and magazines uh, because <laughs> management asks us for optimum use. It's, it's a matter of concern, yes. Yeah, yeah. You encourage the students to write good articles and let, let them bring their own journal and magazine and then they will read because their article is published in the book, uh, in the journal. That's what we are doing. We are bringing out the newsletters and the publications by encouraging youth in the rural area. You write, that's how we are promoting their writing habits. And then bring a journal, at least one student, if you publish their article, which they wrote in while sitting in the library, that the whole, uh, you know, group will be changed. They will be motivated to come to the library and read Good. and then they will write and they will be after you when my turn will come to publish my article. <laughs> Great, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Wonderful suggestion for this. Yes. Uh, we could notice why we have Anegha Mani who uh, who is wanting to know whether in NEP, ma'am, is there any, uh, you know, mention of uh, reading habits, you know, means for inculcating or uh, enhancing the lead, uh, reading habits in the new education policy? Have we, uh, uh, is there any kind of a mention in that? That's her, you know, a question that she's just wanting to know about it. I think we may have to refer to the NEP in detail about it. Yes, we have Mr. Ra Ramavath uh, Naika Saidulu, who is wanting to know from you, ma'am, could you please guide about hill areas, remote areas, tribal areas, beyond rural areas, library promotion for inculcating the habit, uh, reading habits, which will ultimately, ma'am, lead towards a better literacy rate among the students, you yeah. know, and uh, uh, are there any kind of, any work which has been done by Read India in the tribal areas in the country? Yeah, we have libraries in Rajasthan. Baran is a tribal, Saharia tribes are there. We have libraries in Andhra, Kedathapalli and Baradapalli villages in um, Andhra Pradesh where the libraries are in rural, uh, rural areas and for the tribal population. And we have trained the tribal uh, women to manage these libraries and they are doing it. And now they are so expert in getting the training calls on Zoom. And we have trained almost 50 tribal girls on community health workers so that when the pandemic, if any chance by any chance hits again, there should be frontline health workers who can manage. And all this has been done through library. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, there's a good suggestion coming from Mr. Trinath M. And who says that it would be good to have know your book kind of programs every week or fortnightly in schools and colleges. And this reminds me also to mention that Delhi even has launched, you know, we have a book talk series that we have uh, launched, you know, for uh, that we conduct the programs under that. So book talk series. So it's a book, you know, which is talking and we become the listeners in that. So wherein you again have some invited discussions or the authors, you know, to involve the authors. 
And I think that would be really nice that uh, if the libraries comes forward in coordinating and seeing that you invite the technology now, you can invite the author online and you have, you know, in your big auditoriums, the students, everyone, you have your local discussants, you know, to whom already you have given a print copy of the book, you know, the hard copy and they will, uh, they will further discuss about it. And you have an author also, because that would be the most in inspiring part for the young youngsters. So the author can always can join online and then you have a few two or three discussants you know who are going to discuss about that particular book and that would really help in uh, bringing that kind of a habit you know so uh, and it's a habit forming thing once you know you are into it so reading habit is yeah. uh, in habit in itself is uh, it, it it it's something to do with your you know cognitiveness you know so once you are you know uh, the neurologically you know you become uh, you you would really desire to get into that so the power of habit uh, you know is very very strong so uh, if once we do it it will be much easier so i think our uh, responsibility is much higher in the libraries but this is a very good suggestion know your book or book talk series and you can have it in a hybrid kind of a mode definitely um, and we can see that this is a number of suggestions which are coming in and also uh, Okay, this is from Rafiq Rathir, who is wanting to know, should a librarian focus on e-reading or the book reading in a physical form? Uh, he's, he's interested to know whether we should try to promote the e-reading or we should promote, there should be a reading done. So uh, I, I would that you like to book say? reading because I have been promoting and advocating about that. And you know, in my presentation, I have written that 69% of the population lives in rural areas and still they don't have access to technology. But uh -huh. we have a we should promote hybrid model. But first, after reading a book and then technology, let the choice be theirs. We are no one to impose anything on them. The purpose is they should read. How they read, it's their choice. Uh, and we have this about uh, Mr. Batapa MP, and he's just wanting to uh, say, ask uh, for mobile libraries are useful, and what would be the what are the timings of these libraries? Uh, the timings, you know, it's it doesn't seem like you know means mobile libraries, and you may have you know it's like a twenty four by seven a timeless uh, connection, you know that you can. We have and once again we are trying to establish a connection with uh, Dr. Girdhar Pumpurji. Girdharji, uh, you are connected right now. Could you please try to say something right now? Girdharji, you are connected right now. I think uh, you may if you are onto the laptop and you have some issue in that, you can try to connect using uh, your mobile phone. Uh, I think uh, we are extremely sorry. We are not able to establish a link. Uh, Shirley David has said, know your book, know your author. Yes, uh, meet the author program. All of us know Sahitya Academy is very famous program, meet the author. So we can do it now since we have a technology in place now. So we can even can have it in the hybrid mode. So involve the students and one can do. So good suggestions coming in. Uh, we have... Uh, Okay, Dr. Prasad M, you know, from uh, uh, Kumaraguru and uh, College of Technology. And it's really wonderful to see that he said that we have organized Readathon contest for our students seeking your advice on assessment methods. A Readathon, you know. So, uh, and he's just uh, wanting to know that the assessment methods, I think one needs to, Madam, would you like to say something? So uh, see, assessment method, uh, I can only do that you share your email ID with me. I can share the tools which we have developed because Great. explaining now the assessment method will be really tough. But yes, we design, we have a very robust uh, monitoring and evaluation mechanism. And for reading especially, we tell the child to read and librarian records the voice on the mobile and how good he's reading and then he assesses it. That is the basic, basic thing. But we have devised a particular monitoring mechanism, which we can share with you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Ma this is a question from Jutika Nanda Das, who says that, ma'am, we have opened a library in our area, but number of students are too less. How really to inspire these students, you know, to become a part of that library and to read books? Mobilization. You have to get the community meetings done. You have to call their parents. You have to call their elder brothers and sisters and motivate them for reading. So we, we do that. 
because our uh, staff in the rural areas visit the houses conduct the meetings with them and also organize community meetings on any topic you want any debate you want to and you know three generations come to the libraries the grandmother also comes the mother comes and the daughter also comes to the library because they they find resources for reading you know uh, <clears throat> one of the women said i want to read quran and i don't know how to read and she used to come to the library to learn how to read and once she started learning this she started uh, you know reading quran so that is the excitement which comes okay. when we talk with them we intervene with them and then we motivate them for reading great ma'am thank you so very much this is uh, from mr rajendran s and he uh, you know we all uh, <laughs> join in congratulating him who says that he has we have established a public library at vinayakapuram nss adopted village to promote the reading habits among children so we really appreciate your efforts and uh, madam may also like to appreciate uh, gita ji yeah, uh, uh, vinayakapuram <laughs> you know it's a mission for me now because working for 15 years and visiting all the rural areas day after tomorrow i'm going to kutch and meeting the women there the tribal women who are very good in they are the artisans but we want to inculcate the reading habits for the children you know they don't have access they, their children don't go to the schools there is a need to have interventions with these kind of people because uh, reading is the future for them and you know the anecdotes i have because we do adult literacy also the woman says i was not able to read anything and i used to give wrong medicines to my children after the interventions from it india now i can read at least i can give correct medicines to my children so this is the beauty of reading you know yeah much mamma there is another uh, question from dr chalana Sa uh, sani viranjalu who is wanting to know madam what are the best practices you are practicing to motivate school students school students ma'am so we request to the principal to give us the time for uh, during the uh, the time of the school and my volunteers my staff go to the school take five or 10 books and read in front of the children and then encourage the children to read in front of the volunteer that's how we are promoting and they are not academic books they are general moral books and the children develop interest in that uh thank you ma'am this is from mr chatanya das gangula gangula chatanya das who says that madam how can we as a library professional motivate the teaching faculty to tell students about the importance of libraries and to read you know uh, that's this is what i have <laughs> that's what i have been telling that the librarians are the torch bearers for the communities and they you conduct a workshop with the school children talk to the uh, school teachers you talk to the principal one day is you know workshop for them and then uh, motivate them and tell them the ways how they can promote reading habits that's what we have been doing this is uh uh this is a question this is from dr ashok d dr ashok your question we are not able to figure out correctly uh it's really good work for the society how librarians who help the read india will be rewarded uh i think uh, dr uh, geeta malhotra ji's uh, intervention required in this ma'am we just want to know perhaps you know if you can just can throw some light at how read india uh, do you connect with the librarians as such as the library professionals or in these community centers that you are running you are having it with the local authorities so do we have you know the librarians there and what is the role that you have been able to you know uh, currently you know what is the kind of a support that you are able to get it from the library professionals uh, besides so, from the library so, setups yes ma'am yeah yeah we call library professionals when we organize small workshops seminars and debates 
and we invite them to to you know to be the leaders and the spokespersons and they explain to them how the libraries are to be managed how the libraries are to be you know maintained because library science we don't get library science students in the rural areas to manage the libraries how these librarians help us to organize these workshops and all uh, it's a great support to read it Great, ma'am. Uh, and also, I can see that there are one or two questions, and one is from uh, uh, Anju Gupta, who is wanting to know uh, how they can contribute towards Read India. You know, saying that how can we join this group and uh, the Read India to contribute in reading habits? Can we, ma'am, just throw some light on that? Yeah. And, you know, how they you, can become a part. You, you can very well write to us how you would like to contribute because. We respect and you know recognize the volunteers who are coming with us and working with us because we, a small team, cannot do everything in the rural areas. I, I would like to say that we have only 16 people working with us in the head office, but we have a network of more than 300 uh, people who are working in rural areas and we train them how to work because they have to understand the model and the ethos of the organization and we engage them on a regular basis. And also we have huge volunteers working with us on this mission. So you are most welcome to join us on our mission and you can get my, I will share my number. I have not written on my PPT, but uh, Sangeeta ji can give my number. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. So okay, you're most welcome to get connected with us. And ma'am, yes, we can see that, you know, it's coming from Dr. Ashokji and many others who say that they may like to support Read India in the, as a library professional and whatsoever, you know, they are all from different nooks and parts of the country. So, uh, and we really, really are with you in this very I'm, missionary I'm work so that you're pleased, doing. I'm so pleased to listen to this because this is, uh, this I myself is though uh, qualified, but I am not a library professional. But because this mission was given to me and I have, had, uh, you know, taken this with very positive spirits and commitment, I would like to have uh, the professional knowledge and expertise and guidance from all the professional librarians to promote these libraries at a bit, very better, higher scale. We can, ma'am, definitely, I think one of the, we, we would be happy, we have such a wonderful association with you for years all together, uh, decades all together now, and we will be happy to see, ma'am, if, uh, you know, Delnet can, really can join hands in doing something yes. and across, and we can have uh, at least a state-wise uh, pick, picking up, you know, certain um, uh, areas wherein uh, already you have got, you know, your inroads and uh, and in the closer by areas, we can think about, uh, you know, uh, trying to see the libraries, the institutions which are there and who may be uh, under maybe under a CSR, you know, or under anything else. And if they are ready to do something in those particular areas. So Delnet would also be my very, very happy to, you know, have collaboration. So it will be like a, a tripartite, you know, we will have uh, the Read India, will have a Delnet and then we will have our respective institution and we can write to all the institutions asking them if they are interested enough you know in uh, 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 coming forward and being a part of this so as a as an initiative and it can be done at a state level it can be done in, uh, uh, perhaps at a state level that would be really good and in a state also we can try to see ma'am the uh, the most uh, you know uh, the vibrant uh, places uh, means wherein there is a need wherein we are also able to see you have a youngsters you have those kinds of you know who really needs a little more better hand holding and a library support is required for them. And then we can have this institution, you know, who will be taking care of at uh, their local level. But we can also always yes. can think about and hand holding uh, done, whether it's to do with the technology, it's to do with the, you know, uh, as such with the local authorities and other things. So I think, ma'am, yes. that's one of the things that we would definitely, and thank you so very much uh, to each one of our attendees, you know, for really wonderful, so wonderfully and giving us a lot many of ideas to further do, you know, uh, introspection and retrospection and coming out with something, you know, for the society at large. This is my uh, request to Dr. Ranjita Niladri Das. Dr. Ranjita Niladri Das, could you please post your question because you have sent me saying that I have, you have a question because neither I'm able to see you uh, among those who are, have raised the hands and uh, uh, this is a concern, ma'am. Everyone is saying how to overcome, you know, this when the students are glued, you know, onto their YouTubes and audio formats and other things as a reading habit. 
Dr. Anuradha said uh, uh, from Government College uh, of Education, ma'am, from Jammu has said that I'm a librarian in Government College of Education and as a practice of circular, pupil teachers go out for macro teaching. Uh, in this regard, if I suggest a principal to adopt ruler schools to inculcate reading uh, habits, can you support us? They are, ma'am, in Jammu, and they are saying that if the college uh, adopts, uh, you know, some of the ruler schools, uh, uh, you know, means, and that's a kind of, a, you know, uh, most, uh, the best workable model if uh, they have, you know, uh, it's, if it's feasible enough for them to adopt a particular schools, you know, or even these community centers and helping them out. Uh, so, and uh, so how Bem Read India can help, you know, that's what Dr. Nuradha said is wanting to know. No, Sangeeta, you are the intermediary. You can connect us with them and sure. then we can just exchange oh, the mail. Fine. Fine. We will have a brainstorming yeah. just only on this. Yeah. Let's have a brainstorming, yeah. an exclusive yeah. brainstorming we are going to do. So that's for everyone to note. We are certainly going to do a brainstorming you know, session on this. And this is an issue which is there all across being encountered by everyone, you know, across the country and uh, you know and we have to really collectively and collaboratively have to handle and to do our you know we, we cannot just simply be a mere spectator saying that no they are not coming they are glued to this they have the technology and you know technology to be blamed but we have to really see that how we can re-strategize you know our own cells and we have to you know uh, you know do the things in a very different way. It's, we know that where are the issues, so we need not to look at the issues. We need to look out at the solutions, you know, which are there. So I think when we brainstorm together, we would not be just having one or two options. We are able to see you will have infinite possibilities, you know, with us, and then we will constructively work together, you know, to see to it that we are, uh, you know, able to do. And it can be even a kind of a, uh, it, as a best practice, you know, it will come out that how really to help the institutions, how whether you are an academic or a public library or you know an R and D organization, how really to have because this is a an issue which is happening at a society level. We are seeing it yeah, all yeah. across. Uh, uh, you know, we, uh, we we find that you know all across, uh, and this has to uh, start right from a school level. This has to start even at a home level. You know, so we all have to deliberate it. You know, together uh, to see to it. Uh, this is from Abida. Abida's, uh, uh, you know, Dr. Geeta Malhotra's number, Madam's number, and the contact details and everything. You know, we are certainly going to send across to uh, all our participants here, and you can definitely can approach Madam, and it would be. And she is always so gracious in uh, with the support. And, uh, and so I, would, many, um, I would request mention Delnet name so that I can correlate from where the request is coming. Exactly. Exactly, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Thank you yeah. so very much. Thank you you know. always think about us, and uh, that's really so very kind of you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. I will come to you very soon to discuss so no, many no, things. No, 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 no. Nein, nein. Surely, ma'am. Surely, surely, it would be a great honor and pleasure. And this is uh, just to request. I'm just uh, lowering the hands once again because number of questions have been uh, already being uh, responded. So we have. I've just lowered the digital hands of our colleagues and requesting you if you still have a question. Uh, please kindly uh, raise the digital hand again. Just give me a minute because we don't want that any of the questions remains un, uh, uh, un, uh, attended, and we really want to make the best use of uh, the availability of our distinguished speaker. Uh, okay, Miss, uh, this is now. You please kindly raise if you have any still any question. Please kindly now raise your hand. And this is okay. This is from Mr. Trinath M. Ma'am. Um, he's wanting to ask, uh, Madam, small clarification for youngsters to making reading habits other than cracking puzzles. Is there any alternate solution for them in the schools aged below 10 years, below fifth grade, uh, uh, you know, fifth uh, standard? So, uh, wanting to know how really to do something for these young children, ma'am, below the age group of 10. You know, when you are designing your curriculum and the timetable for the students, keep one session for reading only. One for half an hour or 45 minutes just for reading. And then you tell them and you tell them to repeat what they read from the book. You know, that is very, very important. 
with this you are uh, inculcating the habit of reading speaking pronunciation also will be checked by you this has to be done science maths whatever you do one session on reading happens every day half an hour thank you so much ma'am lot many takeaways uh, for everyone and uh, we are you know we are we are writing writing and writing so uh, it's so wonderful to see ma'am not many of the things to do to do lot many things and uh, thank you so very much ma'am for this uh, two or three of our colleagues ma'am they are just wanting to know the official website address for read india could you please ma'am it's readindia.org or dot uh, so uh, they are just writing it here and this is going as a chat uh, message to everyone read india.org perfect man read india.org yeah. so we are sending it across to everyone in the chat box uh, this has been sent uh, so you can always can go to the site and can come to know more about it uh, just map because i can still can see uh, uh, Uh -huh. Dr. Rakhi Sharma, libraries are not given importance in government schools and colleges. And uh, Ra Dr. Rakhi Sharma is from the state of Uttarakhand, and then she is just wanting uh, to know uh, how really to improve the situation, ma'am. Uh, that in the government schools, especially the library setups, and also in the government colleges, yeah. she's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, in my presentation also I have written that uh, one librarian, there are no librarians, of course, in the government schools also. We have to take higher secondary students as volunteers, teach them on the library skills, and then let them work with the junior students on, you know, promoting reading habits. That has to be done within the school and they should be awarded with certificates or something else so that they are encouraged to do this. Thank you so much, ma'am. And there's another is very heartening to see, uh, you know, these initiatives being taken. I think we can, ma'am, uh, can create a kind of, uh, you know, some collection of these, you know, the efforts being made uh, because this is like a best practices as being uh, said in our uh, Dr. Janathan Ji, the, you know, in the uh, previous presentation was mentioning about, you know, sharing those best practices. Let someone else also get inspired and uh, do the same in their respective regions or areas. And this is from Shirley David, who said that a college librarian has posted book talk in Malayalam on Malayalam fiction on YouTube, which was passed on to my college students during the COVID time and made a quiz on reading on Google form during lockdown. So this is from Shirley David at St. Mary's College. Yes, uh, Man Manar Kauda and uh, uh, has, uh, you know, uh, shared. So, so wonderful to hear about this. Uh, we have three of our professional colleagues who are wanting to ask a question requesting Mr. Manoj Kumar Sahu. Mr. Manoj Kumar Swahu, you have raised your digital hand requesting you please unmute yourself and quickly ask your question. Mr. Manoj Kumar Sahu. Yes, Hello. we are connected, Mr. Sahu. Yes, we are connected. Yes, uh, please go ahead, Mr. Manoj. Good afternoon, ma'am. Actually, this is thank you for uh, this opportunity. Actually, uh, I am from Odisha. Hmm. Uh, everything actually I listen, okay, from uh, ma'am and you, and very nice session. My question is, ma'am, actually in Odisha, recently uh, Odisha government has uh, advertised a post, okay, uh, they are uh, taking uh, some uh, post as a clock and librarian, but there is no qualification of librarian. And uh, you, ma'am, also uh, describe uh, everything, read India, about uh, read India. But uh, how actually is it possible? Uh, Mr. S uh, Manoj, you have unmuted, uh, you have muted yourself. Please unmute yourself. Mr. Manoj, you have muted yourself. See the qualifications which are being coming in, you know, and other things that definitely, you know, uh, it is something uh, the purview of the uh, the respective departments, you know, who have who are doing it in the particular states. And uh, I, you know, it's very difficult for Read India even, ma'am, uh, you know, to comment on that. You know, this will not be really feasible enough because you have your own policies uh, in place and. Uh, and as being said, yes, there's a lot much ground to cover. There's a lot much to do. And collectively, one can really can think about uh, bringing in, you know, some kind of a change that we really want to do it. 
Mr. Manoj, you can well can understand that, you know, that, uh, but you can definitely can, you know, there can be a kind of a, you can. I will call you, ma'am. Actually, uh, what actually my actually our the problems. Okay, we will discuss. Okay, this is the not platform. Actually, that is actually that kind sure, of uh, sure. support. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Much appreciated. This. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manoji. Uh, we have Mr. Raj Kumar who has. Uh, we have two of our colleagues who are have raised their hand and they are wanting to. Uh, this is Mr. Raj Kumar. Uh, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Mr. Raj Kumar, could you please unmute yourself and ask your question? I have unmuted you. If you don't respond, I have to mute you. No, no response. So please requesting you uh, to bear with us because uh, we have Mr. Butterpuff MP. You have already asked, yeah, but you still, I think, you know, you're wanting to again say something. Mr. Butterpuff MP, yes, we are connected. You're connected, Mr. Batappa MP. Please kindly speak. We are we have unmuted you. You are connected. Extremely sorry, we are not able to hear you. Uh, if there are any further questions, uh, I'm just quickly having a look at. Uh, there's no live in post. This is by Mr. Murugan Krishnan, who is, ma'am, wanting to bring to your attention that there is no librarian uh, in the government schools. Uh, his question is, there's no library in post for government schools. How to improve the reading habits? And also, so I, have overall explained, uh, I have explained that we have to inculcate uh, selecting, uh, you know, reading habits by selecting senior students from the school or, or the volunteers, if the teachers can volunteer or outside volunteers who can just, you know, take this responsibility and uh, promote reading habits among the children. Now Thank it's you, ma'am. Uh, sorry, ma'am. Uh, I would would like to now, uh, you know, mention about Miss uh, Ye uh, Yesha Dema, uh, who has said that it has been a very enriching presentation and lots of takeaways, you know, information, and will implement whatever ma'am have shared. But then, very difficult to instill the reading habits, especially among the uh, young students, because they are always much glued on their mobile devices. So <laughs> the the issue remains, the issue remains. And but yes, I think we need to have an out of box thinking, uh, uh, you know, to uh, uh, see to it. And it's more uh, all of us have to really brainstorm and to see what are the things. It's not like uh, a one size fits all. No, you have to really have for a varied kind of a thing. If they are an academic committee, they are the ones who are, you know, th those who are already in the in the, you know, kind of uh, established phase in their life, how really to bring them, whether they're the faculty members, they are their researchers. We talk about the young students, you have other issues, you know, which are there, you have a very young children, you have illiterate population, you know, how really also to make them uh, read and write, you know, that has been the mission of Read India. So I think all of us needs to do, and this really uh, prompts us to, uh, uh, you know, definitely ma'am, we would be uh, uh, wanting and keen on, uh, enough to join hands with Read India because we have the institutions spread across the country and uh, and everyone's concern remains and there would be many of the institutions who may also like to contribute in uh, uh, you know as a kind of their contribution towards the society so we can really can reach out you know to the grassroots level and can bring in some change uh, that we really always deliberate and you know wish for and uh, and so we would be ma'am needing your uh, you know collaboration in that yeah thank you Thank yeah, you yeah. so much. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. So, ma'am, it is towards. Uh, uh, I it's towards. We are getting ma'am feedback. You know, from Kavita Anand, Reed is well co uh, coordinated with FLN of NDP 2020. We all may join in promoting it. Yes. Uh, so it has been. A, this is from Harinder Singh Sarkaria, who is. Uh, uh, Okay, that's very wonderful to hear from Mr. Harinder Sarkaria, who said that it's really wonderful to know about uh, reader champions mentioned in your presentation. I'm already having this practice to declare reader of the month, one uh, from students and one from the faculty. Undoubtedly, is helping us a lot in increasing the reading habits among the students. And this is uh, from Dr. H.S. Sarkaria, Deputy Registrar and Librarian, Amritsar Group of Colleges, Amritsar. We really, you deserve, you know, our special uh, appreciation for this, Mrs. Sarkaria, that uh, yeah. the reader of the month. 
and also from the students as well as from the faculty. So this is yet again a best practice, uh, which yes. uh, I think everyone can think about, you know, doing it. Yes, yes. So yes. there are so many, but if I can send it across to you, this chat box, they have been such a very meaningful, uh, you know, engaging uh, interactions, which has happened and it has all been, we have been able to witness, ma'am, all this, only because of your very gracious uh, intellectual presence with us uh, this uh, morning. It has truly been a great, uh, you know, a feeling of being there, ma'am, and uh, you are always so supportive of us. And the great work that you are engaged with, it's, uh, you know, dedicated uh, for this cause of uh, reaching out to the people and reaching the unreachable. Uh, that's, that's indeed, it's a very, very noble cause. And uh, we assure you, ma'am, from Delnet, using this platform on the occasion of the 25th NACLIN, that we would really be wanting, because this is something uh, wherein everyone wants to you know, contribute and everyone wants to bring in a change, wherever, wherever they are. Everyone really wants to improvise the situation which is there currently. We have great responsibility and, uh, you know, uh, and opportunities are there and, uh, you know, and infinite possibilities for us to explore. So we would ma'am, see, be seeking the, your support and helping you in this mission further, you know, to reach out uh, to you, the institutions Lord. across and to the country, ma'am, at large. We can still can see we have Dr. Sure S. Suresh, you have raised, and uh, this is, uh, I just request because now we are sharp at, uh, uh, one o'clock and it's a time for us now. We have taken enough of the time of our distinguished speaker with us. We are going to share Madam's email ID with each one of you uh, as a protocol. We are going to share, you know, the uh, email IDs, uh, contact details of all our invited speakers with all our attendees. So you are soon going to be. And also uh, to tell that we would be, we would very much like to have a brainstorming session only exclusively on uh, you know uh, on the reading habits you know and how we can partner you know everyone can partner together and we would like to have a brainstorming done firstly on the best practices that needs to be done uh, you know what kind of uh, best practices we can adopt in you know, in order to you know and we can we can have a kind of a competition even running into that uh, uh, collaboratively uh, read in day and tell it may like to do and then we would also like to engage in uh, having uh, uh, further down that's a practically doing the things at the ground level you know how we can and we can have some test beds we can have some uh, you know a pilot project uh, wherein we will choose across the country few of the you know few of the locations wherein already read india has got something and then we also have the institution so delnet will do that work of uh, uh, you know making a, a call to the institutions that who are interested to do something in that particular respective areas we will do that coordination work and then everyone coming together and seeing that you know the change uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. so that would be the the most satisfying and that would be the most empowering thing you know if we can uh, if we can collectively and collaboratively can do that so ma'am it no. has been a great honor thank you so very much you thank know it's you. a it's it has been such a great honor and always always you are so very gracious and very kind you know to us and uh, remain thank much grateful you. and i really look thank forward ma'am to seeing you sometime uh, yeah, you know, yeah, definitely you. definitely yeah. i'm going to come very soon thank you yeah. thank yeah. you so much so ma'am this and is a you. A moment of coming for you and i would really like to present it to you in person you know we are not going to send it across we are going to meet in person and i would be more than delighted ma'am to present it to you with great uh, you. you know sense of gratitude and uh sense of thanks to you ma'am thank you so much for it's such an enlightened talk yeah and you are always always the one who spread so much of positivity around and uh you're very very ma'am gracious and kind and we remain grateful. So this is for everyone, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, from on behalf of everyone, ma'am, each one of us here on this platform today, on behalf of Delnet, uh, we have greatly valued your presence, you know, with us uh, this morning and sharing, you know, your very noble uh, work that you are doing, something for the society and uh, and which has got, it's a far reaching effect. We are sometimes when we do, we are not knowing, you know, what would be. But yes, we should keep on doing and, you know, that zeal and desire to keep on contributing, that sense of that, yes, even if it's not even a drop, even if we are able to create a ripple in this vast ocean, 
one should feel blessed enough, you know, in doing that. So uh, we would be very much, ma'am, uh, be happy. Dilmit would be very much happy. And this is one of the recommendations, strong recommendation of NACLIN 2022, that Dilmit, you know, in collaboration uh, with, um, uh, uh, you know, your organization, Read India, may like to uh, take uh, this mission of uh, Read India and to make the society well read and also especially this inculcating the reading habits uh, we may like to ma'am uh, you know really initiate that and making a, a kind of a, you know a movement in the country a read india a movement uh, that uh, read you know means and to have these institutions because they are already in place and then we have you can see that ma'am the kind of an interest which has been generated and also it is you know a contribution everyone's contribution uh, which will really make uh, India proud of that, yes, there are the library professionals also working very constructively, you know, towards a society, not just simply in their own respective institution for academicians or educationists, but for the society at large, you know, we are contributing in that. So thank you so very much, ma'am. Once again, it has been a great honor and pleasure. Thank you it's very great. much. Thank you. Thank we you. Look so forward. Much. And yes. well, definitely, ma'am, we are Certainly going to you know work together in a more meaningful manner. Yes. yes. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Thank you very much indeed. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. So with this, we are towards the closure of the second technical session, uh, which we have just witnessed in such an engrossing manner. And uh, we would just now like to uh, remind you and request you to please kindly join back. It's uh, one of five right now. We would like to request you to please kindly join back by 1.55, because we would like to start off the technical session three, which is on emerging technologies for libraries, and we are going to have a keynote presentation, which is on data analytics and AI for libraries by Dr. Surbhi Parde, our associate professor from Indian Institute of Public Administration, requesting each one of you to be back here by 1.55 so that we can commence the session sharp at two o'clock. We have greatly valued, you know, and greatly appreciated the kind of and very engaging discussions uh, which we have been able to conduct only because your very active participation of each one of you. And this is what uh, you are our strength. You are the one who always keeps on inspiring us, keeps on motivating us. Keep on doing that because we always, always, you know, remain grateful to you for that. You are the ones, you know, who remains uh, uh, the strong pillars, you know, who and we all collectively together, you know, uh, we have to uh, keep on doing our best, you know, for the society, for the institutions, for humanity. And it has been a profound privilege and honor for Janet to have each one of you with us at the NACLIN 2022 platform. We look forward to welcoming you back again at 1.55 p.m. in yet another 50 minutes time. And uh, we look forward to having the further deliberations of the second day of the 25th National Convention on Knowledge, Library and Information Networking, NACLIN 2022. Thank you so very much, each one of you, and we look forward to having you back again. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless. Thank you.
A very good afternoon to all of you and welcome back to this post lunch session, uh, which is uh, the technical session three on emerging technologies for libraries. I would just like to uh, make you all apprised that our uh, invited speaker, Dr. Surbhi Pandeji, would is expected to uh, lock in any moment. And uh, so we just request you to kindly bear with us. And very shortly, we are going to commence our session. Uh, the session is going to be on data analytics and AI for libraries. And Dr. Surbhi Pandey is at IPA, the Institute of Public Administration. Many of us, you know, who are being connected on the natural platforms have been knowing about our wonderful presentations on communication skills that uh, she had delivered the talk last year. And but her specialization definitely is on data analytics, cybersecurity and cloud computing. So uh, we are expecting uh, uh, Dr. Pandey to uh, log in into the system. She has uh, assured us that she would be just doing it in a, a little while. In order to make the best use of the time that we have, I just wanted to also apprise you that post this particular session, uh, we are also going to have a session on Delnet, where we intend to just deliberate a bit about our resources and services, and especially for those of our uh, attendees who are from our non-members. We really want to make it sure that you should uh, get a chance to know uh, about the organizer that is Delnet. So we would like to give you uh, some brief presentation on Delnet and also more specifically about our resources and services. As uh, we had conveyed uh, earlier also, we have launched a couple of uh, new portals in the current past and then we we are working also currently on a few of the new portals, uh, which we intend to launch uh, soon. Uh, also to apprise you and again to remind you that on 21st of December, we are having uh, you know, a day-long program uh, that is uh, on the 81st uh, birth anniversary of our founder, Dr. Call. We are going to have uh, the program on the Library Networking Day that we observe the day, his birthday as a Library Networking Day. So it would be a day-long program from morning 11 o'clock till uh, uh, 4, 4 30 in the evening and we are going to have our speakers dr dilara begum from uh, from dhaka uh, from east west university who is going to speak on um, uh, the libraries and the sdg the sustainable development goals and the growing roles of alliance professionals and then in the post lunch session on that day we are going to have a session on creating institutional repositories and uh, wherein we are going to have the issues and challenges with some of the uh, successful case studies uh, from Indian libraries. And two of our speakers, uh, Dr. B.B. Chand from uh, Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad, would be speaking and uh, he will be demonstrating and showing uh, the work being done for creating institutional repository at IMM Ahmedabad. And also we have Dr. K.P.S. Sengar, uh, the librarian at Imtech uh, Chandigarh. Uh, they have been the ones who have very early in day back in 2008, they created their IER. So he's also going to speak on that occasion. And on that day, we are going to also show you a little glimpse of our uh, uh, this uh, the new portal of Delnet, uh, uh, which is called as a desire portal, uh, Delnet exclusive and selective institutional repositories, entirely meant for our member institutions, wherein you would be able to uh, create your IR. So uh, we are, we have, <clears throat> uh, uh, we are just have to now focus on creating a front end for it, but the back end is uh, almost ready. And now we are looking for uh, our member institutions who may like to some 10 institutions that we are looking for right now we are going to announce it on that day who may like to uh, upload your uh, uh, the full text resources onto that portal so we have created the entire uh, uh, you know the, that portal is getting ready and we do hope another two to three months time we'll be able to launch that portal so on that day we are also going to uh, show you online a little glimpse of that and we really want to also have a little brainstorming uh, uh, on that day to little get more of uh, your input so this is to remind you and request you please do kindly uh, keep uh, December 21st uh, that's uh, falling on next Wednesday uh, please do kindly keep it blocked you know uh, for this online program so uh, we will be much uh, again look forward and even tomorrow in the evening once uh, this uh, you are going to get the certificate uh, of your wonderful participation in Aplin 2022 uh, that also will contain a link you know that message we have embedded it in that particular um, email so you would be notified with the URL and we look forward also would like to uh, uh, request each one of you that whenever you receive any intimation for any 
online programs, webinars from Deloitte, please feel free enough, please feel comfortable in uh, helping us also at the same time, helping Deloitte in reaching out to many more other professional colleagues, many other you know colleagues who may be interested in attending those sessions. So always, uh, uh, you know, you are most welcome, forward those mails through any of the uh, medium and help us in reaching out to many more. So uh, you are in such a wonderful manner. You are always extending your support uh, to Delnet, and uh, this really helps us, you know, in uh, furthering our cause of uh, uh, networking the libraries, networking, you know, uh, our own professional colleagues, and uh, and to create that entire ecosystem wherein everyone is being connected, everyone is collaboratively uh, coming together. And our purpose remains the same, and the purpose is to serve our users, uh, to you know, uh, make our libraries to reach to New Zealand in, uh, by introducing new services, resources, and everything, and to stay networked, you know, all the time. So that we would appreciate. Uh, we are anxiously waiting for our speaker, Dr. Sudhi Pandey, to uh, log in into the system. So we are, uh, while speaking to you, we are also keeping our eyes glued on our. Uh, screens to see that when she is going to log in. So let me just take this opportunity in the meantime, uh, uh, just to ask, because since the topic is on data analytics and AI for libraries, just wants to ask, um, you know, uh, if you remember in Natlin 2020, we had a very wonderful session uh, by um, uh, Professor Kim Boyan from Rhode Island Libraries. I think some of you would be able to remember that. And she spoke, that was our annual lecture, which was delivered at Natlin 2022 from Rhode Island libraries uh, that lecture has we have uploaded it on our youtube channel um which is which was on ai for libraries you know and uh where they she spoke at length about uh, how they have done uh this also reminds me to remind you that delnet has got a youtube channel with the name of webview so we request you please subscribe to that channel you know so when we say subscribe it's entirely you need not pay anything it's all entirely free of charge all of us are aware that youtube channels are like that unless and until it's there are some paid channels too but it's entirely free so you can just can uh, subscribe so that whenever we are uploading any new video to it you will be notified about it so because we keep on uploading whenever we do any webinar or anything, you know, and then we, we tend to upload that so that it becomes available. Those of you who are our member institutions, you will always be able to find that link of Delnet YouTube channel on our main lending page. So once you log in into the system, even it's an IP based authentication, once you land on our discovery portal, on the top side, you know, <clears throat> top pay, uh, side of the page, uh, be well before this user statistics. So we have incorporated that link for a YouTube uh, channel, and you, within you will be able to see a lot many of our, you know, entire presentations and everything that we are adding it over there. So this is uh, uh, to request to kindly uh, help us, you know, in doing that. So uh, means you can always can view because even the entire deliberations of Natlin, because you can well uh, appreciate. These are very quite uh, heavy uh, video files. So, uh, and every day we are able to get that. But yes, we are going to upload. Uh, uh, I have a wonderful colleague of mine, Mr. Kushal Goswami, who takes care of this entire thing. So he is going to upload this content. And I, we, we are hopeful that we should be able to uh, do it by another uh, early next week. We will be able to upload these onto also onto our YouTube channel. So, and we are going to do it a day wise. So it will be an act 2022 day one. And then we are going to put the day December 14th so that you are able to know, you would be knowing that on which day that session was. And if you just want to, <clears throat> you know, have a look uh, at the deliberations again, uh, you're most welcome to do that. So, this is uh, to request you. I'm uh, right now requesting my colleague uh, Kushal to call up yet again, uh, Dr. Surbhi Pandeji to just uh, hand it up because uh, uh, it was informed like, you know, that she would be shortly be, okay, fine. So uh, we are uh, uh, we are waiting and, but in the meantime, let's make the best use of the time that we have with us. We should never waste our time and it should always be uh, used. Uh, you know, this is the biggest asset that we have with us. So we should always be uh, uh, very concentrated about 
how we are utilizing. So let's engage in a discussion. Uh, uh, we have such a distinguished uh, official colleagues, you know, our uh, professional colleagues who are there with us. So if any one of you means we are having a chat box with us, if you may just like to mention about any of these AI robotics technologies that you're using in your libraries, uh, have you, um, or what is your perception about it? Do you think it is something, uh, you know, which is much achievable that you can very well can do it in the libraries? Or do you think that you no, know, the V library and information science professionals uh, still have to, you know, uh, cover a lot much of ground before we think about implementing these AI and uh, robotics? So just, uh, 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 yes, Dr. Suresh, you are saying still we are waiting for the session. Uh, uh, we are also waiting uh, to start up. We are waiting for our speaker, uh, Dr. Surbhi Pandey, to join us. Uh, and uh, the same is with me also. We are anxiously waiting you know, for her to log in. And uh, we do, uh, uh, we are expecting her uh, to log in because she remains occupied with the, you know, she takes sessions at IAP and uh, chiefly with our, their training uh, uh, division. They keep on doing a lot many programs and uh, we had uh, called her up at 10 minutes to two and uh, and she had uh, mentioned that she would just log in but i think you know, it's typically some 10 15 minutes we would appreciate your patience and uh, uh, you know would definitely uh, uh, really are keen enough you know that we should initiate you know this discussion uh, this uh, technical session three at the very early so uh, we are just waiting you know for her to log in into the system. But in the meantime, uh, if you, if anyone amongst you may like to say something about the data analytics and AI, especially when we talk about uh, has anyone has uh, done something uh, as of now, or do you have any plans for doing that? Uh, so uh, we would request uh, if any one of you may like to come forward in doing, and we are just, uh, uh, trying to see how sooner can we start off because we have a session of Delnet, uh, we can definitely can start off that, but uh, we really uh, uh, you know don't want to uh, get into the time slot uh, given to doc, uh, you know to Dr. Surbhi Pandey because uh, I believe uh, she has her own engagement you know post 3:30, so uh, it would uh, that's the reason we had to you know uh, request and wait for her to uh, uh, do that you know so. Yeah, just uh, uh, we request you to kindly bear with us, and uh, uh, we are hopeful that she would get connected with us shortly. So please stay tuned in, and uh, it would be a pleasure. This is also to uh, inform you that tomorrow morning, uh, so post the session, we are going to have a session on Delnet, and after that, we are going to have a session. Tomorrow, uh, we are starting off our sessions uh, wherein we have a session on cybersecurity, and just to apprise you that we have a talk on emerging cybersecurity trends, issues, and challenges uh, by Major Vinay Kumar and uh, founder and president of Cyber Peace Foundation. Many of you would have uh, listened to him earlier also on the Dakin platforms, and he's one of the, the, the best, uh, you know, uh, expert, you know, available in the country and the best speaker for uh, on the uh, emerging cybersecurity uh, trends. And he's going to speak more uh, in relation to what is the current kind of uh, cybersecurity threats which are happening. And uh, uh, this would be, uh, uh, I do hope I'm just requesting uh, my colleague because I can see that two of our uh, uh, professionals have written to me that, Madam, you are not audible. Just requesting, am I audible or I'm not? Because we have two of our professional colleagues who have uh, said that, uh, that, Madam, you are not audible. So just requesting uh, to please confirm it's fine yeah thank you so much thank you thank you very much reason is uh, because uh, uh, kushal was out of this place and uh, yeah yes uh, we just request you i believe uh, uh, dr surbhi pandey is uh, taking a little time in getting connected. We sincerely uh, regret for the delay in initiating the session because uh, I believe uh, uh, our, my colleague Kushal is 
uh, still speaking to her and uh, uh, so we would appreciate your patience you know on this matter uh, also uh, would uh, like to inform that okay we were talking about tomorrow's thing uh, we are having a session so first is a cyber security session that we are going to have tomorrow morning then we are going to have a session an important session on um, upskilling and reskilling of professionals and uh, this uh, would be uh, we have a uh, invited speakers dr pr goswami who is going to speak on skill development for new millenniums allies professionals followed by uh, an invited talk by Dr. Jaktar Singh, who will be speaking on upskilling and reskilling the allies professionals for engaging and empowering the information seekers for sustainable development. So, and this will be followed by a panel discussion um, tomorrow afternoon, uh, which is on redefining and repositioning libraries, exploring, engaging, and expanding for next-gen library users as a central theme of the 25th NATLIN. And our panelists are Dr. Shantanu Gangli, Dr. Nabi Hassan, Dr. Vian Patkar, and Dr. Sheetal Tang. And then we are going to have a validity function, and we are in. Uh, we are going to have the very wonderful reminiscences of NACLINS, the past NACLINS, and we have tried our best to bring in some of our former organizing secretaries in that session. So we will be joined by uh, Dr. M D Baby, who was the organizing secretary of NACLIN way back uh, for the fifth NACLIN. We are into the twenty fifth, so we are going to have organizing secretary of the uh, fifth NACLIN, which was held uh, in uh, collaboration with the uh, Cochin University of Science and Technology way back in the year uh, 2002. She's going to be there with us. We are going to have Dr. Bibi Das, organizing secretary of the sixth NACLIN, which was held at Jadavpur University. That was NACLIN 2003. Uh, Dr. Mayank Trivedi, you know, he has sent us in a video recording because he is, uh, in, will be in some of the meeting. So, uh, but he has sent us a video recording that we would really like to show it to you. And he has been the organizing secretary for the 15th NACLIN, which we had it at Maharaja Sayaji Rao University in Baroda in 2012. We're also going to have Mrs. Anurupa Nayak, uh, and she was the, uh, the sec organizing secretary for NACLIN 2014, the conference which was inaugurated by our Honorable uh, President and Great Visionary Dr. APJ Abdul Kalamji. So uh, she's going to be there with us tomorrow. And also then the NACLIN 2019, and that was the last NACLIN that we had it in person. And that was um, uh, in uh, 2019, and Mr. Biura is going to be there. So let me ask my colleague what we have the, uh, yes, uh, we are expecting the, all of you just kindly stay tuned in just allow me two three minutes time because i need to sort this out you know uh, with the invited speaker and just allow me and stay tuned in i would switch off my webcam and also i'll keep myself in the muted so please bear with me
Yes, uh, we are back again. And uh, yes, uh, our speaker has just logged in, uh, Dr. Surbhi Bande and uh, Surbhi Ji, uh, yes, uh, requesting you to unmute yourself and also requesting you to switch on your webcam. And then we would like to give you uh, control uh, for the presentation. Uh, this is Surbhiji requesting you, if you may just kindly switch on the webcam and uh, if you can also can unmute yourself. We have unmuted you, but requesting you, yes. Please unmute yourself. May we request you, please unmute yourself. I'm sending it, to, yes. Audible? Can you see me? Yes, yeah, very, very much. much. What a comfort, a great comfort, you know, seeing you and a pleasure to see you. Same, uh, I'm saying. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. We had 857 participants who have anxiously been waiting, you know, to greet you and to welcome you to the 25th yeah. National Convention on Knowledge Library and Information Networking, NACLA 2022. It's a profound privilege to uh, welcome you, and I have immense pleasure in welcoming Dr. Subhi Pandeji, who is an assistant professor at the Institute of Public Administration. All of us now in the field of uh, libraries, you know, are fully being aware because she has been one of our most prolific uh, uh, speaker and has always been very gracious, uh, you know, in uh, being there with us on the platforms of NACLIN and many other, you know, uh, delegate programs. It must pleasure in informing you all that uh, Dr. Surbhi Pandeji, her research area, she is at Indian Institute of Public Administration and has uh, 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 her main areas of specialization includes on the data analytics, which is a central uh, theme of the, the specific uh, session that we have also on the cloud computing security and cybersecurity. For past nearly more than uh, two decades of experience, nearly two decades of professional and academic experience, uh, Dr. Subhi Pandeji has, and uh, she is working on cloud computing, cybersecurity, SaaS, ERP, e-governance, digital marketing, knowledge management, leadership, communication, and change management. And all of us still very vividly remember the wonderful presentations that she had, you know, at Neckley Most mesmerizing presentations on communication skills uh, which everyone you know we can never can forget and it's a pleasure you know that we have uh, uh, her with us today you know on this platform yet again she has also been a principal member of educational and skill development services section committee ssd04 of the bureau of indian standards and has been decorated with the prestigious indian army goc nc western command commendation card way back in 2015 for her distinguished service and commitment for our Institute. She has been accorded with a number of awards and recognitions, including Best Research Paper Award, received 3E Fellow Award from 3E Innovation Foundation. Trainer, she's a prolific trainer and in uh, you know numerous now large number of uh, you know professionals that she has trained across various domains and she is a trainer of data analytics bi tool called taplayer and digital marketing she is also a trainer of cyber awareness programs in data security and definitely also on soft skills and change management it's a profound privilege for us to have uh, dr subhi parliji with us once again and on behalf of delnet on behalf of Natalie 2022 and on behalf of each one of us here on this platform we extend a very hearty welcome to you uh Surbhiji, and thank you so very much once again uh for thank you so, much, uh, thank you so much I, I am not that great i mean you know really thankful to you uh, so oh, it is, it is. So much for me, ma you but i'll try my bit today i'll try my bit today to share my knowledge on this okay. emerging technologies Thank you, uh, so thank, much. You so much, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me and having me on this panel today. Thank you. Thank you so much. I sent right. you the link, you know, for and I just request you if you would just kindly accept that and so that we can have, you know, uh, the screen sharing from your side. Right, right. Just give me a moment. Yeah, sure. Please kindly. It seems that the, the webcam, uh, yes, we can just can have it in the slide mode. Uh, so I have to switch my slides in between. Uh, there are multiple topics. I think when we're talking about emerging technologies, there are a lot to discuss. 
It's not just sure. one. So, can we can, can we request you yeah, for the slide mode so that we can have yeah. a better yeah. legibility of this? Yeah. Yes. Uh, can you see my yes. screen, everyone? Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, perfectly. All perfect. All perfect. Great, Great. honor, pleasure. Great. Thank Indeed, you. my pleasure. Thank Thanks. you so much, ma'am, for having again this afternoon talking about emerging technologies. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I once again welcome you. Uh, I'll try my bit to talk about different technologies and how this technology you may harness in your library work. It's truly up to you because you are the leaders in your players. Uh, plays, I always believe. And techno leaders and technology which is emerging every now and then we can see a lot of technologies coming into the picture. Not just data analytics, not just artificial intelligence, not just blockchain technology, IoT, or many things which are prevailing every now and then. How we are going to harness, that's very important. Uh, the first question which I would like to, you know, I start with this, that what platform are we using? Are we using any kind of a data analytics? Are we using any kind of a AI inbuilt library features? Can anybody of you can answer or uh, uh, I request madam if she can collect an answer and can speak on behalf of the participants. Yes, they can, uh, Suji, they can always can use the chat box uh, and then I will be more than happy to uh, make you aware about the responses. Yeah, so my question is whatever platform, whatever platform we are using for the library functioning, right? for all the records which we are maintaining, the issue of the BICS from digital library, connecting with the whole world with the digital library, with the research and journals. Are we using any kind of a data analytics based application? Are we use any kind of a AI based application? If not application, are we harnessing data analytics in our library functioning? Uh, give an example, metadata concept, anything. Any response from the audience? Yes, no. Anything. Yeah. So, Pichu, they have said, but you know, it's uh, like Kohan RFID that they have spoken about, but it is uh, something to do more of the applications that they have, which doesn't have any AI or data analytics inbuilt. Uh, remote access, library softwares, they, they, they are not the ones, you know, with the AI uh, in that. They are just typically a very conventional kind of systems. Great. Now, nevertheless, not an issue. Uh, we also started this journey. I'm sure India has started something called AI for India, you know, AI India. And this current government is giving a lot of emphasis on artificial intelligence. Ladies and gentlemen, I would also like to mention here, we all are using Gmail, right? Or any kind of an email services. Are we using? The answer is yes. We using a lot of email, Gmail accounts, you know, to reaching out with each other. And that email, Gmail, whatever we are using, it is inbuilt with artificial intelligence and ML programming. Why so? Because when we write an email, you may find that there's an autocorrect. There is an autocorrect. And uh, say I'm in the session. There is an autocorrect, right? When there is a spam filter, you know, when I was about to join, it was taking a lot of time to joining this conference. So somebody is assisting me and he said, Madam, you can check the spam filter. So we have a spam also where if the system can see that something is fraudulent, it is going into the spam part. You know, automatic inbuilt feature is there in our Gmail account. It is a communication through which we communicate. We see Google Map, right? Google Map is again your AI based. We use Google Drive, again, it is an AI based. We use Google Assistance, it is all again AI based. What if, if I'm talking to machine, you know, I want this book with the accession number this, and the answer is there, the rack is there, it is located is there, everything is you know so fast and that is what technology is playing a role in our life. It is just one example from your Gmail to your Google location, to your Google Assistant, to your any product which a Google is using is AI based. It is not that just the Alexa, you know, it is an Alexa whom I'm talking, hey Alexa, can I get this? Hey Alexa, can I place this song? So it is what I'm talking to machine, I'm getting this answer. And this is what is the current generation is looking for. I can speak to the machine, I can get the answer. And that is what is the click service. So we have to provide that click service, the ease in our functionality also. Nevertheless, whatever application we are using in our library in a respective place, but always there is a scope. 
we can go ahead and have similar kind of a service. You may think about anything where we can use AI. I'm sure you must have heard about text to speech. Have you heard this text to speech? That you just select any text and AI application is their text to speech and that converted into speech, any voice, an Indian voice, an English voice, or any, any voice you can pick and it is get converted. So we have a lot of facilities, we have services. Uh, why I am you know, giving you this thought, it is a thought which I'm putting in your mind. Think about where and what I can use artificial intelligence. If my Gmail is AI based, if my Google search is AI based, if it is my Alexa is AI based, if my everything is AI based, why can't my own office, my own library system is an AI based? That is the thought process I'm giving you here. Before we discuss certain things of AI, let me also take you slightly little, you know, uh, previous part that you must have heard about a concept called data science these days, you know, data science, data analytics, metadata concept that you get an accession, this clicking, giving you, you know, connecting with so many things. So what is this data science? What is this data analytics? We need to understand and probably from here we can take up the journey ahead. So data science is something a bigger concept, right? Uh, uh, Sangeeta ji, I need your help. I wanted to take out this slide and wanted to show them something related to data analytics and then wanted to show them a video on AI base that what is expected from us. So if you can help me out. Yeah, see the video usually are we have to upload them well uh, in advance on the portal of the go to webinar this platform. So uh, uh, you can uh, always can, uh, you know, means any other slide that you want to show that you can very well can do it. But if you play the video, it may not be that very, you know, impactful because uh, there would be an audio issue. Uh, because the device would not be able to take it. But we can definitely can try because we can't upload now in the middle of a session that video on the uh, the okay. platform, on the webinar platform. It has to be done well before we start off uh, the, okay. you know, like in the morning when we launch it, it has to be done well before that. Now the issue I'll play, right? With the play only you will get where or we can, you know, harnessing AI. Right? So uh, since I'm talking about data analytics, I'm talking about artificial intelligence. I'm going to talk about blockchain. I'm going to talk about IoT things. That with my mobile application, if I click anything in your library, right? I can get and I get access of anything. This is what you can see. You know, these days, uh, all the magazines are available on the app, Kindle, right? That ease is coming. The newspaper is on my fingertip. That is what is user experience. Already users are testing this. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Uh, any any issue? Uh, no, we are able to hear you. It's perfectly fine. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say here is we we have a Maxters as a magazine. We have a Kindle, right? So users are already on this platform and app based where they are just flipping and reading the comfort we have already given. The user have this experience. A similar kind of experience they wanted to have from the library also of our national level institute. And to do so, I think here this platform is going to help you come up with an application. You come up with any application where all your books, ebooks, digitalization of library, right? The digital library, the digital electronic records, all the books, magazines are now available in the digital form. And then it is available as per the accession number on the app. You click here, you click topic, you search is. It's working like a Google search. You search anything, right? that I wanted to read a book, anything on emotional intelligence, right? And I write Daniel Goldman. So I have written in a Google search and the PDF is available and a similar kind of a search if I do it, the same whole book is available, right? And the book is available and then I can sanction, take that book, all those, whatever we do it manually in the library, the provision is there and we get it the book. The time limited is also mentioned that 15 days you are getting a time, you return it or, you know, because uh, in digital platform, if in hard platform, you know, if I access any book, that book is only with me for 15 days or a one month. And then I have to return that book. And that book is again, maybe accessed by someone else. So that is a constraint in our physical library or in a physical mode. As a researcher, if you ask me, if I wanted any book related to 
artificial intelligence or a cloud computing right the book is accessible by me also and if somebody is looking for the same book is accessible to other also at the same time so the resource is shared by everyone the same resource if it is digitized anybody can access thousand lakhs of people can access that resource if it is available in the digital form that is the first benefit ease is there multiple people are accessing unless in the library at times you know we we wanted to search a book the constitution of india book right and it is only one copy is available in iapl library or anywhere library if one copy is available and i have taken and if somebody else wanted to read it then the someone else has to wait for some time till the time i return it so that was the constraint but there is a charm attached with the book there is a smell of a book the papers and everything when we flipping around but when we digitize these books and if it is available that same book is available to multiple people at the same time so the knowledge we are sharing the knowledge is expanding the resource is expanding and that is what is the benefit of today's technology now i'm taking you back that people are talking about ai we see a lot of movies right we see a lot of movies of robots and this and that but india is also heading in this path if we talk about all over the world india is also where the adoption of ai is 84% and we come in the third in this rank also when we talk about adoption of ai lot of projects are coming up right and this is the benefit of ai that uh you know we we started using chat boards i really don't know how many of you using chat boards for your library that any student any people can talk to you with the chat boards like we have in our uh you know website like we have in our amazon like we have in our mintra where we can chat you we can talk to the machine we getting certain answer that is what is again an ai if we inbuilt those chat boards in our library system in in our website or in our digital resources that the student can talk and put the query and and the machine is answering with the standard answer so we become very responsive in our approach if we adopt that ai based a simple application that is chatbots towards the end i'll show you one qr code also through which you can design your chatbot in a minute of time let me also tell you ladies and gentlemen my own facebook account is chatbot driven so i am not available on the facebook but my chatbot enable facebook always answer you whenever you write hello dr pandey so you will get an answer from my facebook account hi how are you so i have actually feeded certain standard you know question q and a there in my chatbot if you interact you will always get a response what does it mean if you interact with my profile of facebook it means i am responsive uh, you are acknowledge immediately you are acknowledge and that is what you are looking from me also so my point of mentioning chatbot here as one of the technology in your library management system or in your website where you have this digital repository is anybody who is interacting with your digital content anybody who is trying to reach out to you at least if you are not there machine can answer on your behalf and that is what again chatbot is ai based i'm sure i'm making a sense to you maybe of some use uh, i'll pick up only selective things so might be useful if you just immediately go ahead and that is what government of india has come up with india ai you can always you know google search it uh, if the session is on you just go on google you write india ai and you may find the companies uh, you this website is available and in this website you can see all the resources the projects the companies uh, who are providing ai application uh, even the educational institutions who are using ai based things all those things are available and we can also become a part of it now let us understand what is this artificial intelligence is all about if machine started doing my work right i'm giving my intelligence to the machine and if machine started doing all those work it becomes artificial intelligence right so if i have ai based application ai based solution for my library also for my anything like your gmail from your alexa to google assistant or anything you may find we can resolve a complex problem or we become very efficient our result become very accurate and probably it help us in taking a good decision also so that is what uh, there is a small story then john mccarthy you know he was an academician he coined this term 
uh, in a conference where he was presenting this paper, he, he actually coined this term called as artificial intelligence. And this is what is the journey of artificial intelligence. This concept introduced way back long in 1950. And then he started using this AI for the brainstorming. And suddenly we come up with a lot of algorithm which are helping with us. And with that algorithm, actually, we come up with a lot of application which we are using as of now. If you talk about AR, VR, you know, augmented reality, virtual reality, big data analysis, Internet of Things, where we started using this AI based application. I really don't know how many of you are using, but we, if you're using any, you know, application, let's say Amazon, Amazon owns this, um, your Alexa, right? And uh, with that Amazon application, actually, you are using a lot of uh, electronic device of your home, like you can switch on the AC, you can switch on the light, you can switch off the light, right? You can play Alexa, you can do the shopping on Amazon, you know, and you can use Amazon server. So with that one application, you can use multiple facilities together. That's what is AI, IoT, Internet of Things that so many things are connected, applications are connected and accessible to the customer and giving an ease. So what if, you know, if I wanted to connect so many things together in the library also, the possibility is there that audio is there, video part is there of any text. If I wanted to, you know, we have this podcast thing has come. Every written material converted into the podcast. So let's say if I am just walking around in the morning and I wanted to read any book, so that same book is available in the form of podcast. I just plug in and I started, you know, going through that book with the help of this podcast mechanism. So uh, likewise, the where we are heading from the physical book to the digital library, you know, recording every book is now coming in the form of digital one from ebook concept, e-article, research books, everything is available. And the next level, that same can be converted into the audio form, the video form with the help of AI based application, the text to the speech, you just select text to speech that every text is converted into the audio form and you just plug in and go ahead. So that is an ease which we are providing with the help of emerging technologies these days in the library also. And that is what is the expectation. So when I talk about artificial intelligence, I'm sure many of you have heard about machine learning, deep learning, and AI. So now what is this AI? AI is a bigger concept, right? Where we giving an empowering machine to do my job. I decide how much of task and that is what AI. Under that AI, we have machine learning. We also call as deep learning. So machine learning is a subset of your AI where I am actually enabling machine to do certain tasks, right? And again, inside this, I am using a deep learning, which is again a subset of machine learning, when I'm using NLP to understand any text, to convert anything, to apply any mathematical formula, right, to do any kind of a modeling. So that is what, again, uh, you know, providing you a services with the help of algorithm. So artificial intelligence, a bigger picture, machine learning and deep learning. Ladies and gentlemen, I would also like to mention here that Again, depends, you know, uh, you might must be thinking that mom is talking about AI. We have robots. We have seen a movie also where robot is damaging certain things. So we should not empower machines so much that they become a supercomputer. So it is truly up to you. You wanted to make anything as a supercomputer or up to a limited like way, the way we are using Alexa. It is for some specific purpose we are using it, like the way we are using Gmail, well, like the way we are using Google to search anything. It's truly up to you that how much you wanted to empower any machine to do that job and to give you a quick response. Likewise, the AI is actually divided into different category. Right in front of you, there's a screen you can see of machine learning. I have given one sample as input as a car, right? So I, as a programmer, extracted all the feature of your car, right, and programmed that if there is a structure like this, if there is a gear like this, if there is a mirror, there is a rear mirror, mirror front rear, and this is the wheel, and, and every structure is specified, classified, 
and if anything comes like that the machine can understand it is a car so i have trained a machine that car is a car with the help of the classification of the features right the second is something called as deep learning right in deep learning the features we extract right like the way earlier we have extracted all the features we have done the classification and then we are getting a car is a car as an output if the feature is not matching it is not a car if the feature is matching matching it is an car so here in deep learning the feature we extract right the feature we extract and then we classify and then we get an output in deep learning we remove the function of extraction of the data right because now we getting into the deep already we have the classic feature extraction so we take that extraction from the machine we classify it with the help of the algorithm and we get the output so there is a one step which is there in your machine learning which is already being used we use a mathematical formula to identify getting into the with the formula and that's how extraction and classification merge together coming back uh, again so artificial intelligence is available in different form one is called narrow intelligence general intelligence and super intelligence right so it is available in different form when i say narrow intelligence so like the way we are using alexa siri cortana we talking to the machine in fact uh, whatever we playing ludo you know so many online users are playing ludo together so many online users are connecting with their id and playing lot of games together so many online users are coming together and sharing their knowledge together so many users are coming online together sharing their content together is something called as narrow intelligence right so whatever as of now we are using in the field of artificial intelligence is a narrow intelligence there is another category which we called as artificial intelligence as a general category so in general category when we started you know making any machine specific to certain purpose right a machine designed to work any task certain specific task right then it is a general intelligence machine and then comes the super computer where we talk about all your robots and all so this is how we divided you can see these are the narrow intelligence example we use smartphone apps we you we know very well the chess you know the chess alpha go the tesla you know driverless car the image identification if you come in front of the screen the computer can identify that computer vision is there identify speech recognition tools self driving car google translate spam filter these are the narrow intelligence which we use every now and then these are the different example earlier about the narrow intelligence now when we talk about general intelligence where we started making or taking a decision when the reasoning thinking and decision making also automated it becomes a human intelligence or a general intelligence artificial intelligence and this is what is the super computer when we talk about any robot uh, any idea uh, who is uh, the first uh, robo who got this uh, nationality any idea have you heard about sofia have you heard about sofia i'm sure many of you must have heard about sofia also so now 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 we are talking about where we have robo judges also we have our first rj robot right we have our first rj rj you understand radio jockey rashmi is the first ai based radio jockey and uh, we have sofia as again uh, a robot based you know and uh, soon we'll be you know we we have been listening that that uh, we are having this ai based where it is going to help the judges and judiciary also and the country come up with the concept this concept like estonia china they started using uh, artificial intelligence in the judgment part also now you can see they also use this case reference case record so many thing if they started using why can't we in the library can think of similar way of coming up we also have a reference book we also have so many records uh where you know we can implement this ai based of managing this and applications are available in the market so again uh, if you just see google all the product is ai based google use artificial intelligence and machine learning in almost all of its application to display photo 
right so you you just search anything your photographs get uh, you know categorized classified based on the location also based on the date also sometimes you get the video some that in particular event so many photographs were clicked and you may find the video is also prepared this is what all is ai based uh, this is sophia humanoid robot right google map to all twitter handle account to your face recognition in your uh, facebook also it is ai uh, why i'm telling you because we also have book covers we also have a lot of content analysis we also have text search we have a search analytics available in library we can use this text analytics face recognition in facebook is available a similar kind of a recognition can be recognition of that logo of the book the face the image of the front page of the image of the book can be an ai based tag if let's say you know the front page of uh, 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 emotional intelligence book comes there daniel goldman right and uh, with that book is coming the book is tagged and then it is recorded right and whosoever wanted it get accessible and given access to those people so those functionality very much possible if we think of having similar feature in our own library system so in every area from knowledge creation to human resource to supply chain to education industry we started using ai based application uh, nlp for natural language pro programming for any personal assistant talking with the machine audio analytics graph analytics image analytics we started using ai it has an immense potential india is using ai in education aviation you know providing goods and services in healthcare we started using in heavy industry we started using for finance fraud detection and all uh, you know financial management part we started using this ai based why can't in library also so here we are it is in india we started using this and center for artificial intelligence and robotic uh, there's a laboratory set up in drd also so uh, there is a laboratory set up there and lot of such uh, ai based use cases is available from facial recognition to biometric identification to traffic to women safety to student progress monitoring any kind of a now now it is available on your ai based application also so these are just a few example but uh, example may enhance you know as and when we started using in different fields tamil nadu they started using e governance for uh, you know cataract related things and they also started using in their healthcare industry and uh, likewise uh, there are various examples that are available this is a small video uh, it might happen that you may not able to get the audio of this but when i play it probably you will get the essence that where and what we are using uh, ai so madam uh, may i play it or should i leave it uh, you can just uh, can try to play it of my no issues <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I really don't know uh, whether you're able to see that or able to hear that video or not. Uh, I think, Dr. Pani, because of the bandwidth, you know, uh, issue, yeah, because it was not, uh, uh, not everything was audible. But uh, anyhow, we have been able to get, you know, uh, some idea about it, yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So purposes why I'm showing you probably you might have read certain things that government of India is using AI in sectors and that is what is the purpose of showing you that video. Anywhere we can use this AI based application and AI and artificial intelligence is available in different form, whether you wanted to go for a supervised learning, that a apple is an apple, a card is a car. I teach my I train my system and which we call as supervised learning. After learning, giving one time, you just, you know, giving that this is something, this is something you train the machine and next time, you know, machine may identify the pattern and becomes unsupervised learning. And slowly and gradually, you start learning. If, if the machine may able to do that, you know, in its own, then you reward and that becomes reinforcement learning and which we call as robots, you know. So this is how you, you train machine and there are a lot of applications that are available. Like you can see here, I can send any text data to the machine. Machine may learn this is book, this is book, this is book, or this is a car, or it is an apple, or it is a any book or any text. We just train first time and next time machine may understand, right? The algorithm they started understanding. So this is what is supervised, unsupervised learning and those things, and this is really learning if machine may understand and start doing that work and then i reward and then started doing let's say you know a robot is walking one step and then i give, get a reward a robot is again walking two more steps so this is what is called as the reinforcement learning and this is all possible with the help of algorithm which is available very soon we can see you know the security guard which we see in our buildings can be replaced with this machine which is also a security guard you know, in a malls, when we go back home at times, at times when we go back home and, uh, you know, we're so much tired and we think some machine can do my job on my behalf and yes, it is available. Mole is a robotics which can make two, 2,000 different, you know, food for you and these are the machine who are making a fruit juice. You have to just give that I want a healthy diet, this much of calorie, this much you just set in the machine and the machine is preparing everything for you and that's what is robot. The pizza delivery boy, you can see this is the first pizza drone, which is an AI based is delivering a pizza and this is what is, is expected in the future very soon. Uh, we see some construction is going on and that takes a lot of time, but now we have robot who are actually constructing the building also and this is a, this is how without any much, you know, uh, noise and uh, pollution, we started manufacturing the building also with the help of this AI. Fox, Foxon as a company who started using robot as the worker in the China also. If you just see this image, these are not immigrants. Yes, it is just a robots who are being used in the frogging and agriculture part. So just imagine everywhere we are harnessing this AI. Think about where all and which places we can harness AI in the library. Any quick responses? I've already given you so much of insight from the security guard to the pizza boy, to your Gmail account, to the face recognition, to the podcast, to your, you know, a made in the kitchen, to agriculture land or farming is all automated. Why can't we have the system in our library? Any answer? Any answer in the chat box? Any answer in the chat box? Yeah. Uh, no, nothing as of now. Nothing as of now. I am just giving you a thought. My job is to give you that thought process, you know. Start working on your brain that I am working in the library. Which work is repetitive in nature? Which can by a machine? And how we can serve by, you know, research company, the people, I can give that ease 
think of yeah, please can somebody can log on my library management system and I provide a chatbot, right? And I provide a chatbot so that people can talk to me immediately and give that experience. What if that book is the, the, the sample of the book is very limited? What if this is available on the store and can be accessed by multiple people from multiple locations? That is very much possible if we have that app and have this provision in place. Why can't we have this analytic sort of things where a dashboard is coming on your library management system that these many records, these many you know, researchers, these many people who access, these things are available coming on your dashboard and you can quickly take a decision of how much books I have to procure, how much things we should have in the inventory can be taken a quick decision on the basis of the dashboard also. Have you ever seen a dashboard? Yes, there are. Dr. Janet Lobo says yes. Mr. Shrinivas says yes. Great. So, if you have seen a dashboard, right, where all the statistics are coming, if you want to, you know, also tell you uh, 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 with one example that how you can, you know, actually have that dashboard, you know, uh, how many of you use the uh, uh you know uh, this uh, digital uh, magazines you have available how many of you have all the podcast of the lecture series or the books the libraries we have such provision podcast of available of the books any do we have this provision that the podcast of uh, the lectures are available the podcast of uh, uh, you know, uh, of the books available, which is converted or text is converted into the podcast. Do we have such provision in any of the library? I think, uh, uh, Dr. Pandey, because there may be some institutions because there are copyright concerns also at the same time in that, because we cannot convert that content directly into that unless and until the publisher is uh, providing you in that particular media. If the publishers are providing them also as a podcast, you know they may do it but then the librarians may not be able to because we have copyright issues then if they are converting that uh, format they cannot change unless and until they they it's available from the publishers okay so uh, i think yeah because of that they may be it's not there's not a wider adoption of it but definitely the institutions of uh, you know uh, excellence uh, some of them will definitely be subscribing to some certain such resources yeah so for all my point is these days whenever we as in you know author write a book so uh, author only it is being asked that you know you're writing a book the book may be available in the podcast on the stores in this form and that format so a mass reach to the people in different it is not just in the heart not in the shop but in different form. the same thing is available and that is what is reaching out to the mass on click that is the generation of on click ease and UXI is looking. And we also wanted that ease. Like you can see, a lot of movies are available, Netflix are coming into the picture. Everything is available in the form of video, podcast, and all those things. Newspaper on the flip. So many things are going on. So that is what is also required in the library, conventional, more of emerging things which is happening. That from my, you know, a watch show, I can, if I can read a message, I can attend a call. Why can't we have same provision to read any text or just plug in and I get access of any articles or the news. So in future course of time, if we develop those provision that whatever things we are taking is available with the copyright and all things, I think we, we are enabling our library with the future orientation. You know, that is what is required in the future. Now I wanted to take out this slide and I wanted to show you certain data analytic concept and also this is, a, this is a kind of a chatbot. How many of us are using a chatbot in our library? Any one of us are using a chatbot in our library? Anyone? Yeah, there are no replies. There are no replies as such. Okay. Yes, so Dr. Mahinder Kumar Singh has said yes, and uh, wonderful, uh, there are institutions. 
there are institutions uh, that we are able to see that they are using now. They have started using chat box, especially for their admissions and general inquiries. Uh, uh, they are integrating this on their websites. Very nice. My compliment to you all if you are using a chat box. That is what you providing an ease to the people. A lot of chat board, uh, you know, are available. Uh, Chatterboard is a software application available, right, to, to conduct, to make any kind of a chat conversation. And uh, you can convert text to speech. Simple question answers can be formulated, and that's provide an ease. So, uh, you know. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry for, uh, you know, uh, for the intrusion. Just wanted to, because there have been a couple of, you know, replies on, on our chat box here. And mm -hmm. Dr. Shishadri KN uh, from Presidency University has said that, yes, they are using a chatbot service on their uh, website. We also have Dr. Wow. Mahinder Kumar Singh, who said they have enabled uh, their opaque, you know, with the chat box. We, uh, they also Great. have Jyoti Kananda Das has said that they have done it in their school environment also. Uh, and Srinivas lecturer has said that they have integrated it also in their college website. Wonderful, wonderful. My compliments to each one of you. We are on this journey. Great. We are on this journey and this is what we have to learn from each other. This is the simplest AI application which we integrate and provide an ease to our, you know, students, to our customer base who are reaching out to us for reading material and uh, you know whenever you are not there but there is an answer for them so this is a very simple thing which you can do it likewise uh, these are amazon alexa siri and all this chatboard application in the real world uh, this is how you can design this different example and ai empowered chatboard has a lot of you know uh, you can say benefits that you are available around the clock faster reduction time cost saving you know, increase the conversation rate, giving a good experience to your customer base is what is we are looking. These are the different open source chatbots. You can go ahead and design your own chatbot with any of the conversation which is available. Take the screenshot, try it in your own. It's very simple. It's only you giving the question and giving the answers. So think from one side that somebody is talking to you, what question they can ask. Another side, how you wanted to respond so that you can design your chat board with the question answers mechanism and good to go. So these are the different applications for which you can design. And if you just, uh, this is the scan QR code. If you just scan it and try it in your, uh, you will get one application through which application you good to go and design your own chat board. So this is, I have uh, just, uh, you know, uh, put it here so that you can uh, scan it and design and enable the chat board with your website or with your application. So this is what is the chat board's application. And uh, that's all about and different application which is available. People are using it. Has come where we can also use AI based application. You can also take a screenshot of this. These are the different free available tools of AI to use it. Uh, you know, and it is very useful you as a librarian for your day to day tasks auto draw, sketch metadata, unscreen, copy AI, peak stream, chart board, beautiful AI. These are the free AI tools available free of cost, which you can use for your day to day task. Let's say if I wanted to, you know, uh, make a story or from something from one text. So the AI can help you in making those story. And probably if you wanted to, uh, you know, draw or design something out of that, and then other AI is using you. If you wanted to take out some text, some extract from one part to another part, you just use copy AI that help you in taking those parts from this side. Speak stream, anything get converted into the, you know, the live streaming part. Again, we have an AI based application chat board, which you can design it for your own website. So different, you know, applications use available. These are the free AI tools. Take a screenshot, try it in your own time any of this application so you may understand the usability and use it as per your pace and your own uh, requirement have you taken should i proceed Hello. anything uh, anything uh, anything so far here in ai any questions so far Sangeeta ji, do you are well, the again, Yeah, no, uh, Dr. Pani, what we'll do is we'll make the floor open for questions, you know, so that they can then can just can ask uh, 
you know, we'll we'll ask them, you know, for any questions. Yeah. Uh, the questions is more of the remarks that they are uh, wanting to convey that they are using, you know, uh, this chatbot, especially on the chatbot they have mentioned about Dr. Felsi D'Souza at SJC. They are using it. There have been a question how to make our opaque in SEO interface. Could you please help us? You wanted to make which interface? Search engine uh, optimized? SEO, like some, some Dr. Mahindra Kumar Sahu has said that how to make opaque in SEO interface. So you wanted to make that search engine optimization, Mahindaji, if I can understand. Search engine optimization, SEO. Yes, yes, he has said yes, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So something like, you know, in Google, you, you search anything. Now let me take out this part. Is my screen available? Uh, no, not really. Uh, right now it's not there. Okay. What has really, uh, I think it has come no, back. I wanted to show something to them and uh, just for a second, I think the, uh, what's happened, the screen sharing has been stopped uh, just for a second. I think I have, we're just sending you uh, just, just for a second. We are sending your control back. Uh, I, can you just yes. accept? I think you know you have a, some internet issue is coming up, you know, because of that automatically it's uh, trying to get disconnected. Can you just uh, accept that, uh, Dr. Pandey? Could you please accept our invite? We have sent it to you as a presenter again. Yes, yes, it's visible. It's visible. Yes, please. Yeah. So, Mahindaji, uh, uh, you know, uh, just visualize each one of you as Google, right? You write www.google.com, right? And what you write is whatever you write, you know, you write anything, it is an AI based, whatever you write automatically, uh, sentence get completed, right? And whatever you search, in your organic search, the things are coming on the top, right? Something is coming on the top, something is going at the bottom. So what is coming on the top again is, is optimizing you. Let's say each one of you, uh, we have, 1001 you know officers here attendees here 900 940 and plus so if you just say all 940 surbi 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 dr pandey dr pandey dr pandey my voice is going and you know dr pandey is optimized by how many people 900 people right so when you search 900 people are saying and surbi pandey is coming on the top so my name is optimized on the top so any search can be optimized on the top. It depends on how we are optimizing, how we are putting, how we are, the ranking is coming on the top. So we do a lot of things for optimizing any content, optimizing anything, and that feature is available. Uh, you can integrate with the products, right? If you're doing an SEO for your website, you can do organic, some text, something, you know, you tag multiple times, if people are searching, your name is coming on the top. Right. You, you are available on a digital platform in multiple tags in a multiple metadata format and somebody searching you coming on the top. In your website, if you searching something and that comes on the top again in your website also, you have to apply such kind of a mechanism of metadata and text part that something you have to write so many times. So if some search on your website, that is coming on the top, right? Like somebody has access uh, some research paper, you know, some research paper, if I have so many people have access, and let's say tomorrow is somebody searching a research paper on cloud computing, so that paper is coming on the top because indexing is so much, so many people have referred, and therefore because of the rating, something has come on the top. So that is what optimizing your search on the top depends on how many people, how many times something is accessing that. Right, the one way of doing is organic, another way is with the paid one, right? In organic, at times, to the Google, you may find in Google, you're writing some ads are coming on the top. So those are the paid ones, that pay that we should come on the top three categories. So you're paying it. So in a similar manner, if that optimization you wanted on your website or in your library mechanism, then you can always go to, good to go. In your application, whosoever is your developer, you just tell them, and I want an optimization of certain keywords and that can be done. If the de developer knows very well, 
that in the search, how they can optimize certain keywords. I hope I have answered your question. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pandey. I, uh, with your permission, we would just like to ask a couple of questions, which are being, uh, you know, again, uh, some of our uh, attendees are wanting to know. And the one is from uh, Ms. Mrs. Rita Sharma, who is wanting to, to know, in your opinion, which AI tool is suitable and best suited for scientific uh, libraries and even uh, for the scientific institutions? You know, any kind of a specific AI tools that you want uh, that they, they can think about implementing it. So I can always say, you know, there are various uh, providers of AI solutions which are available, right? What specific is for your, you know, uh, library application, I can't say here, but there are so many providers who are providing AI-based application and they can customize as per your needs also. Like, you know, when we do a research, so let's say, you know, some research has come to me that how, madam, I can use AI for the disaster management. So we develop our own application of coming up with a you know a lot system of handling the disaster so we develop that application likewise that madam how i can you know analyze the kra of any employee so we develop a mechanism of ai solution that how some keywords can be analyzed and the key performance area you know some based on that i can assign the role so again that application was again developed like in agriculture if somebody wanted to know, uh, you know, uh, that what is the humidity of the soil, uh, how can I get to know uh, the condition? So based on that, taking the geospatial and the geolocation things and the soil data, they have actually developed and come up with an algorithm and develop an application. So point here is that uh, there are standard companies who are providing a solution, AI-based solution, right? IBM to Google to all your local startups. We come up with so many startups in India who are providing an AI-based solution. Even the the website develop company com, the com, the companies who are developing a website these days, you know, they're providing small small short short AI-based application like chatbots, uh, SEO-based uh, website or uh, you know text to analytics features. So those small small features, even the website developer companies are also coming up with the AI-based features in your website or in your application. So you can always, you know, uh, talk to even your uh, the development team who have developed a website for you or the application which you're using for the library. You can always go back to them and ask the question that we want. These features should be an AI based enable an algorithm can be developed and probably become a solution for the rest of the world. So you can always go ahead with that. Uh, any any oh, other question? You. Yeah, so which one question coming from Dr. Anuradha Sage from Government College of Education and her question is, and that's very pertinent question, that in the times to come, do you feel that the AI will replace the humans and take away the jobs? This is uh, a wonderful question, madam. Yes, 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 yes. Compliment her, you know, for this and uh, this is question of uh, concern. Is what yes. You become a little visionary, you know, that uh, Shouldn't be a case that I replace by a machine. <laughs> that I should replace by a machine in the future. A lot of, uh, you know, uh, movies are also, and the movies also at times we get to know, oh, the robot is doing my job. That is a supercomputer. Again, I tell you the same thing, the story, for what purpose I'm developing any machine that actually depends on you, actually depends on you, that what machine you're developing and for what task. If you are developing any machine for that particular task, the machine will do that much of task. If you wanted to develop a machine to, you know, if you remember in COVID time, we have robo nurses. So the job of robo nurses is to serve the COVID patient, taking the medicine, medicines and all those things. So we have set the task that you have to do this task. That is the task defined the algorithm has written and the robot was doing all depends at how much task you want the machine can do and you actually give that much of algorithm the machine will be trained on that much of algorithm if you reward reward you know the reinforced learning that you don't empower too much that the machine may become supercomputer so that's truly up to up to the human uh, if you empower them with that much of intelligence then they become a supercomputer if you give only uh, 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 intelligence up to the task which you want, the machine can do that much of task. 
Great. Uh, one question, uh, uh, Dr. Surpiji, that we would like to know from Delnet, uh, whether you uh, conduct any programs, you know, for this chatbot, because what we can foresee from this discussions, you know, and um, even the feedback that we are receiving through these chat box messages, uh, that many of the attendees and many of the institutions may like to integrate to start off, you know, to say that, yes, they have, you know, incorporated, they have implemented some AI tool, they may like to do this chatbot um, in their respective websites, um, uh, in their institutional right. websites. So do you conduct, while being at IIPA, do you conduct any such programs, any such, yes, uh, we, we you know? Do conduct, we do conduct such exercises where we help you to build your own chatbots to enable with your website. We do conduct such. And if you, uh, you know, see our own AI, uh, our own IAPA Moodle system. I have recently implemented a chatbot in our learning management system also. So yes, just, uh, we provide that. Uh, and if you need any help, definitely uh, you can always reach out to our Sangeeta ji. And uh, because we would uh, be happy then, yeah. So uh, for these kind of programs, can we do it? Uh, you know, in a, in a kind of an um, online mode means. Uh, and what is the duration of such kind of programs? Yeah, so we need a workshop kind of a thing in a lecture workshop, mode. We can exactly. do it. So uh, we have to do a workshop and in a workshop then we will give you a tool, you open it, you design it together and then implement with your website in application uh, that we can together build that. That's great. So I think, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Pandey, Delight would be very happy to explore that possibility of uh, having uh, some kind of a collaborative workshop, you know, that will be in-person workshop. Uh, that we can announce it, you know, for uh, the institutions across the country and those who are wanting to get benefited. So if we can uh, do that, you know, I think, you know, to start off the things, you know, to somehow, somewhere to start off to make them aware that how they can do it and their IT teams, you know, their IT officials, you know, can come over, you know, those who are taking care uh, in their respective institutions and let our library colleagues, you know, uh, become our uh, uh, connecting cards, you know, for bringing in this uh, AI to start off from somewhere. So uh, we will be glad to uh, have some kind of interactions in the days to come on this and to see that can we, uh, you know, think about uh, designing some specific workshop uh, for our institutions so that they can get benefited out of it. Yeah, that's great. Really yes. Uh, any questions further? Uh, we would like to request our attendees. You know, we still have 10 minutes with us, and uh, we would just like to request uh, our attendees if you have any further question, uh, we would request you to kindly post the message in the chat box so that we are able to uh, take uh, more uh, of your more questions we are able to do uh, rather than uh, on the audio. So we request you kindly post your message in the chat box so that we are able to. Uh, pick up the question and then we are certainly going to, you know, approach our distinguished speaker to give her expert advice on that. Uh, requesting each one of you, you can just can mention your, uh, you can write it in the chat box and we will be happy to uh, take the question from there. So I uh, would like to request, uh, I believe uh, we are not able to see because they have all, yeah, already been doing that. If you have any question to let us, let us know. Otherwise, I'll also share one screen where, uh, uh, you know, one thing is that we making our own library, digital library, you know, and enhancing our e-content part. And uh, the cross study, these days are very going on, you know, the cross study, we need a lot of data. We need a lot of data set also, not just limited to the researcher community, but also of uh, our own country of, related to different fields and departments. Those things are also available. We always encourage researcher to be part of that community that uh, you must access those data also, which is available in the public domain and try and harness those in your research work in your learning pattern, which is available and our government is providing that. So I'll quickly, quickly demonstrate you those open data source which are available and uh, if required, you can harness those also and have those link uh, with your, you know, with your website so that people can reach it directly and you will always in integrate those things with the help of API. I'm sure you know about API. 
Rajpani, could you please accept this uh, so that we can have a screen sharing? Is my yes. screen visible, everyone? Yeah, visible, visible, yes, very much. All right. So this is the last part of our discussion. Uh, one, we talk about that, how our life is changing and we are using AI in our day-to-day -day life. And we have a different experience and we are expecting a similar experience from whichever application, whatever system we are using. And therefore in the library, we have to think of innovative such ideas of innovating our own library management system, our own website through which we are reaching out to the base. That's the one thing that with the help of data management, with the help of AI based application from podcast to audio to video, to chatbots, to any mechanism of you know resource pulling that people can access the data and be available on ease, that is the purpose. My availability access is important in the library when we talk about knowledge sharing. In other things related to the I always see library is a knowledge sharing platform, and whenever we see a sharing platform. One is the academic knowledge, another is the world knowledge, another the third is our common knowledge or our national knowledge. So uh, whatever knowledge is sharing, I think uh, a lot of in current government, we come up with something called as, you know, a data driven policy making. In every, every website and a lot of website where a lot of ministry data is available and that can be honest and our knowledge base to enrich our own resources. resources. One such initiative is data.gov. And this is the website. You can always, you know, uh, if you're using a mobile phone or a laptop, you just search it, this uh, data.gov.in, where we have a lot of ministries and data sets that are related to the urban housing, education data is available, indexing of certain things available, even mobile app is available of this, the data sets are available. And you can use those data to enrich your own your knowledge base, your own research. Next is the community of this data gov. In you can always join this community to get to know about the events which is happening. There's an event which is happening, and you also be part of this event if you just connected with such platform. And what are the features of this platform? Is uh, the, the the website very responsive? Very the web layout is very responsive. They have Open data set so anybody can share the data set with the help of APIs. All the states are sharing their own state data with the help of APIs. That is an application, uh, you know, interface API scheme. We are uh, integrating our data set and we have a catalogs like the way in our library we have a catalogs. You just go through the way they are, uh, you know, making their website in a similar way. We can go ahead and have our own library website also. They have a catalogs of similar resources, they have embedded catalogs. Right, and they also have a catalogs on the subscription. They have forums, they have blogs, they have community participation. So the features we can also develop in our library platform also there. They have a visualizing certain data set. They have converted certain data on, you know, even the application data infographics. Likewise, we also have a lot of data set. We also have so much of things in our library. It in infographic forms that can be available in the form of forums. People may enrich us, make them participate, and make them participate if you make it right. People want that participatory approach, and that is only possible if our design of our platform is such a way that people will join us this community. So I think this open data gov, you must see this website, how the set is available, how different states are actually integrating with the APIs. And, and likewise, all the different state universities or the institute can also integrate with each other with the help of API and enriching the library resources and the knowledge. And a similar kind of a catalogs, API resources can also be designed. This is another. There's another India data portal.com, one stop destination for open access data on agriculture, rural development, financial inclusion. If I wanted to do any study in this sector, definitely I'll go for this portal. Right, and I can search a lot of data. I can get a lot of figures. Even I did get a, the chart and visualization also from such website. So why can't we think if our government is thinking? Why can't we think as an institute on a similar line 
of integrating the things with the help of API, one nation, one library platform. And all available, all the universities, everyone is available, all the scholars are available, become a part of community, become a part of the forums and the blog, and enrich the knowledge base of our nation together. Uh, similar to this, Niti IO has also come up with a national analytic data, data platform, has also come up. And uh, likewise, a lot of websites are available on a similar line, like India Stats, India Gov. Uh, right, a lot of websites are available. If you just go through those websites, why I'm showing you this website towards the end that whatever the application we are using or the system or a website, uh, just have a look how they have designed different data sets. So many things are available. Everyone is integrating and inviting community on the forum, participative approach. Let the readers may also be a part of it to enrich our knowledge base. Library is all about knowledge base and how we are going to enrich, how we reach out to the mass, how people can exit it, access it, is you have to have this participatory approach of the citizen, student, community, admission to be a part of it. It's only possible if you have those features on your application, those features on your website. So I think uh, if you just flip around those things, uh, uh, you know, we use it such data and why can't we have such provision in our application or website and this this simple. I mean, you know, it is just a website, data is available, data is available, information is available in different formats and we inviting people are integrating with the help of API. So why can't we have this uh, one nation, one library platform concept where everyone is joining hand together, integrating together with the help of APIs and reaching the knowledge base sharing the data in different form, all like admission, researchers, student, community coming together, and we have this participative approach. So that's my suggestion. Uh, and, the, and any question on this on data set, data platform, and participatory approach, one library platform, any, any questions? Or I have shared the link also. You can also have a look. Uh, you can also have a look on this uh, because you can work in silos together integrated approach is very much required any questions so far because already 3 30 so just yes yes just allow me a time to just go through it once yeah and uh No, it seems that uh, one question, uh, one is uh, some of them, they're, they're wanting to know about the workshops being conducted by IAPA on the AI, as we discussed earlier. Some of our participants, they're just wanting to know and also wanting to know whether it's a chargeable and uh, what are the kind of participation uh, fee for, especially for the chatbot, you know. So, uh, so IAPA provides Watching technology workshop. Uh, we're doing it for all the guys uh, along with CBC uh, and uh, specifically chatbot. But we provide a lot of things in uh, AI things, you know, especially related to the application available for your database designing to your uh, dashboard designing to enabling certain application with your website. Uh, ML and AI based application or algorithm and other is just a chat is a one day workshop where you can understand and integrate. So AI provide uh, IAPA is training and workshop to many such CTIs, central training institutes, where uh, we know the facilitator may come and take their, uh, uh, you know, and take the uh, sessions and it is more like a TOT that we train the trainer and then they go, they go back and then they implement. So I am the coordinator who conducted a lot of training on behalf of uh, IIP on emerging technologies for say artificial intelligence. So you can always reach out to us for any such kind of a workshop in the future as the need based that your need is this chatbot or your need is uh, you know uh, coming up with a dashboard or your need is coming in a learning platform or your need is something we want to build a catalog or something you know where you want this participative approach with the help of AI, API based things. So you're most welcome. Please reach out to us. Yes. 
thank you so much, uh, Dr. Pandey, for conducting you know this wonderful session, sensitizing everyone, each one of us, about the AI. And definitely, libraries remains the epicenter. You know, we the library professionals handles you know such a large amount of data, and always I think you know uh, the libraries uh, can be the best users of AI. Uh, a technology because you always are in uh, you know um, search of uh, filtering out you know the more information you have the data analytics tools which are there we handle a lot much of you know data all the time and i think the ai has a greater role to play in the libraries you know it's the a greater responsibility of the professionals who are there and also there has to be because professionals they really would depend on uh, more uh, technological uh, you know uh, kind of uh, intervention in their places and they really need you know some kind of a good uh, advice uh, by others because it's the technology experts who has to help them out in getting them implemented i think there's a need for a strong collaboration happening and more association happening between these libraries and also the centers of these innovations and uh, new emerging technologies so that they are in a position to implement uh, this but definitely libraries uh, has to do a lot in this and also there is a responsibility for those who are into the uh, ai technologies to think about libraries as a centers wherein this technology can have a uh, very far reaching effects on the users on the uh, because we we deal with the uh, you know great I would like to mention one of my experience I'll tell you I was doing along with my team doing one project as a researcher for uh, government I, and then you know I was going from one library to another library to get the data of, of uh, you know in this Azad uh, Mahasav and we studying it's a scientific data when I was curating of different type of data. So we going from one library to another and all the national library here in Delhi, finding so difficult, you know, different format. And uh, one thing is available, one thing is not available. Something, you know, a duplicate is available. So at that time, I also realized I, as a researcher, I'm actually struggling. It's been two months. And why can't we have this integrated approach where all the resources are available under one umbrella? The stakeholders are different, but if I click this stakeholder, you know, any X, Y, Z library, I can get the details on the portal. If I select this library, I can get a data set related to this. And if both the things are common, only one search is coming. So such integration is also required because as a researcher at times, we find it very difficult to search a data, to search those book. But it is only possible if we have one nation, one platform for this also that all the resources, all the documents with different stakeholders' names are available and I just click it and I'm getting that. Clicking it, getting that. That is what is also required. With the smart search, I think I must compliment Mahendraji once again, asking that two important questions related to the search engine optimization, which is very important, what I search comes on the top. And second is related to the chatbots that I can ask the machine where I can get this data and the machine can answer me. This is what is required. So uh, that's my submission to all the librarian, to all my knowledgeable, you know, attendees today. Go ahead with this. This is the real demand of India. This is the real demand of the world now, the knowledge. Thank you all. I really enjoyed my interaction with you. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Pade. And also, I would like to mention because since Delnet is into the networking of libraries, we are the ones, you know, who also provides, as you were have been desiring, that you know, under with a one click, you should be able to get. So we do offer a you know huge, a large resource base, all a network resource base, and we would be very happy to think about you know implementing these AI tools into our online systems. I think you know from this uh, particular uh, session that. Uh, would be the recommendation uh, that's for the libraries also at least to start off with a chatbot you know that they can think about and we should try to see if we can have some collaborative workshops you know in this particular area and for Delnet also since we already offer you know this around for 7800 institutions a single window searching so we can think about implementing and using some of these AI tools uh, and this is just to help out the users and uh, uh, and trying to utilize you know the best of the technologies which are there Thank you so much for your very enlightened talk. As ever, you know, you are the one who always brings in, you know, so much of uh, brightness around with your gracious presence, intellectual, and, uh, you know, the hold that you have on uh, subjects. And today we have been able to speak on something in which you have a direct specialization and we are able to see 
you have got you know it means in everything you know means right from communication skills you know change management to coming down today you know on data analytics and ai you have been really really so kind and gracious you know in making us all aware about this about the emerging trends which are happening also the government initiatives which are happening and uh, we could see that even from the response that there are many you know to whom you have inspired today and they're really wanting and keen that they should be able to make a beginning somewhere you know of using an ai in their respective uh, library spaces. So thank you so very much, Dr. Pandey. We remain grateful to you and for your immense support always to us. Uh, so in spite much. of the thank you for the opportunity also. And uh, lovely questions, I must say. And uh, if you contributed, just, you know, in the one, please go ahead and implement that chatbot with your LMS, uh, your learning management system or your knowledge management system. That's a need of that. Thank you so much for having this afternoon. Thank you all. And this is for you, uh, Dr. Surapriji. This is from Delmet, and this is from each one of us. Right now, we have got 906 attendees who have been there in the session from each one of us with a great sense of uh, you know, admiration for you and gratitude to you all for your time and efforts and sharing your vast expertise with us. Thank you so Thank very you so much, much indeed. Thank I'm you. looking forward to meeting you sometime and looking forward to working together, you know, in the uh, uh, same Definitely. way that you have to make it. And I love IAP can contribute in this area also of helping you developing your own AI based application. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Indy. Thank you. Much grateful. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. It has been a great honor and pleasure to have Dr. Suri Pandeji with us and uh, who has. Uh, you know, enlightened us on this AI, AI technologies, how we as a library and information science professionals can do something. And there are many takeaways, you know, that we have been able to notice uh, from this session. I would just like to tell you, we were just going to give you a five minutes break, and then we are going to start off the last session of the second day of the 25th National Convention on Knowledge, Library and Information Networking, the session on Dell Night. We are just going to commence. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned in, and we'll be just right back. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.
Very good evening and welcome back uh, to the session, the last session of the second day of the 25th National Convention on Knowledge Library and Information Networking. As we can notice that the session is all on Delnet because we're really keen enough uh, to let you each know about uh, uh, majority of you definitely are well aware about Delnet, but we are really have been keen enough also to make you aware about some of our new services which are being implemented and that's the reason so firstly uh, i take immense pleasure in uh, giving you a little orientation about this we will just try to make the session as brief as we can uh, do so and because we are keen to show you also online about our uh, services and resources which are being offered by delnet so i would just like to uh, firstly ask you uh, you know a question and uh, and this is getting now onto your screens. Just allow us a minute and we will be, uh, we would like to post a poll, you know, and the poll question is, the poll question is, uh, are you from Delnet member institution? Uh, we would like to know from you, please kindly let us know because we have right now, as we can notice, 847 attendees are there right now with us uh, at this moment. And we just want to know that how many of you are from the Delnet member institutions. So please kindly, 12% uh, of you have voted. So either you may have to say yes or no, because this would help us uh, also in um, uh, carrying out this entire session. Uh, we could notice 18% of you have voted, uh, would be requesting each one of you, please do come forward and uh, tell us about it, uh, whether you belong to the Delnet member institution or not, you know, because, uh, uh, we would just like to know about it, uh, though we have asked you this question in the registration form, but right now we would like to know about it when we are conducting this session, because those of you who are already with about um, are the members of Genet, you are really knowing about our services and resources, uh, but those of you who are not, you know, we would really like to take this opportunity to, to make you more aware about it. So 24% of you have voted, and let me just uh, uh, disclose the findings, 73%. 4% of you are from our member institutions. We greatly appreciate and value your presence in being there with us in Nacklands. And 26% of you, which has now become a 27%, 73 to 27%, we could notice that you are from the non-members. So uh, we would be more than happy to let you uh, know about our resources and services. As also being, I was able to uh, see it from Dr. Surbhi Pandey's, you know, uh, intervention that she had, you know, about uh, IIP is one of our very old member and then linking up of the libraries that remains our major work. But yes, you know, that sometimes it happens that you're not being, not everyone is fully being knowing that what are the kind of benefits that one can uh, get out of uh, their membership and what are the kind of resources, you know, that are being offered. So what we intend to do is in this, uh, uh, fairly we'll just try to make it, you know, for 35, 40 minutes interactions today, you know. So please uh, kindly and uh, be assured that we would uh, complete the proceedings of the second day by 4.30, you know, today. So I would just like to uh, make you all aware, you are certainly knowing about, you know, about this entire library networking that Delnet has been engaged. Uh, it's We have completed our 30 years of our operations. Started off, you know, way back in the year 1992 as a Delhi library network, which has now uh, got, uh, uh, into as one of the uh, the single largest library network in entire South Asia, covering fairly, you know, across the country, the nooks and parts of the country with our uh, head office here in Delhi, in New Delhi, in JNU campus, having our, you know, coordination unit in Bangalore, Delhi has got its own office space now. Uh, we have our unit, Ms. Rohan Safapuri, uh, you know, our colleague, you know, who is taking care of our Bangalore unit with our colleagues there. And that has been one of our oldest unit, you know, which is functional from the southern part. Uh, and now we uh, we are pleased to inform you that in yet another few months' time, we will be uh, start operating from our own office space in Bangalore. Currently, our work is going on for the interiors, and this is for member institutions, especially in the state of Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. Uh, we are also glad to mention that we have our unit in Hyderabad, uh, you know, which is again catering to our institutions in uh, in APN Telangana. Dr. S. S. Murthy, you know, he's uh, heading our unit and uh, our uh, coordination unit in Hyderabad. We have our unit also in uh, Pune, which is uh, uh, taking care by Dr. Neela J. Deshpande, and uh, as we have a large number of institutions 
institutions in the state of Maharashtra. And very shortly, we are also starting off our unit in Lucknow, and that is for the state of Uttar Pradesh, as UP remains the state, the third largest leading state, which is giving us the maximum number of uh, users. So this entire phenomenon of library networking uh, all being en uh, you know, uh, envisioned uh, by our founder, uh, Dr. Call, you know, he was able to see in those times when we are talking about the technologies, it always brings back you know, uh, the great visionary you know, who was able to conceptualize, uh, who was able to envision that how the libraries would move, how this entire library networking phenomena would really become functional and would become the need of the hour. He was able to envision that in the very late 1980s, as he got a chance to you know see some of the best library networks in those times you know in the countries including in USA France he went he went to UK and after coming back he got truly inspired and motivated you know to think about undertaking that library networking work in the city of Delhi and on 7th of January 1988 to be very precise as a chief librarian at Indian International Center from where even the Delnet got started as it was his dream project, you know, and he got a small little cubicle for Delnet from uh, the ISC administration. He conducted a brainstorming session. This is just to apprise why I'm mentioning it to you all this. What we see that this is how it has been uh, started off, you know, and uh, so we uh, he conducted a brainstorming session on and the topic was the library networking uh, in the city of Delhi. And that was attended by the librarians from the city of Delhi. And after that, you know, they, there was no time for him to look back. He started working on that, and uh, and we could notice that, you know, his uh, you know consistent efforts, you know, with a great sense of perseverance and desire to, you know, uh, do this library networking work in order to help out the users, in order to promote that resource sharing, and uh, that has led to the development of Delnet as an organization, as a registered society on 30th June 1992. We are very proud and happy to share. We have completed 30 years of our operations on 30th of June. You know, all our member institutions are fully aware about this particular fact. So in the very early stages, you know, uh, we have been offering right from the email services to helping out the libraries for CDSISs and CDSISs software, which was given free of charge in those times by UNESCO. We have been conducting the training programs and all. You know, it's so relatable because when we think about the emerging things which are happening now, and so these things, what we are right now deliberating on, you know, we have to really embrace, you know, this we have to, you know, make ourselves, you know, into, we have to come out of our, you know, comfort zones and, you know, take a plunge, you know, into those areas. And as we have just in the, you know, earlier session had seen these AI technologies, we have to, you know, push ourselves hard. We have to, you know, we cannot afford to just remain in the places where we are. No, we have to really have that vision. At the same time, we also have to practice. We have to also, you know, practically you know try to implement those things and uh, as you could notice an organization like delnet which has which has grown over the years because we we kept on moving with the time we kept on moving uh, ahead with the needs and requirements uh, of the time of the libraries of the users keeping a very close tab that uh, what are, what is the requirement and this is to ensure that you are always on the same page what is the need of the hour what is the need of the time you are able to upgrade your own cells. You are able to listen to, you know, and you are sensitive, uh, you know, on that aspect that what is being uh, required. Uh, if in order to stay relevant, I think it's very, very important for B library and information science professionals and uh, as an institutions also the institution libraries when we are you know developing and we are you know uh, we are uh, working for them we have to ensure that we are able to you know meet the growing needs and requirements you know of our user community and also at large you know uh, as a as a uh, uh, as a uh, you know uh, to make others believe in that yes the libraries remains as an epicenter of whether we call the you know uh, innovative space or we call about you know having the state of the art technologies or you talk about the resources uh, everything has to be we have to keep ourselves you know and um, uh, open enough you know for embracing that change so because you could notice that those uh, you know consistent efforts you know of delnet has resulted into moving out from that daily library network into um, uh, you know something 
that the name got changed in 2000 as we started having the libraries out of Delhi, uh, outside Delhi, and the name got changed to Delhi Library Network. And today, uh, in today's day and time, more than nearly, you know, we are inching towards uh, more than 7,800 institutions that we have across the length and the breadth of the country and also including the many members from outside India. So what got started as a Delhi library network wherein we just simply had the libraries in Delhi. There were the times when even in our brochure of Delnet, we used to mention the name of our libraries because they were just handful of libraries. We have come into the times now wherein we have the institutions, we have the states, more than 1000 members in one state, state like Maharashtra, state like Tamil Nadu, uh, we have Uttar Pradesh, you know, and we have across in every state you talk about, Dillet fairly has got a huge, large number of members. And when we say these members, uh, these are the connecting cords. These are the, you know, the connections. These are the very strong connections, you know, which really helps us to reach out. We have been, you know, having enough discussions, you know, during the last two days. And we all are fully aware. We, I think as a profession, when we, we uh, uh, those we, we, we are in the library and information science profession. We are the ones you know, who always, always keeps on serving the humanity. And we know the importance. What, the, what is the importance of building up a connection and building up a, you know, a, a kind of a collaboration? You know? So it's very important you know, for us to be connected you know, with the network as also being, uh, you know, uh, has also been commented upon by some of our, you know, earlier speakers about it, that there's a need of the R, you know, that we build up those networks. And these networks, you know, are the ones, you know, which are definitely going to help you. And because the needs of our users are diverse, we cannot think about, you know, meeting those requirements, you know, through our own limited resources. And we have to really get ourselves connected. So it's like you connect with one and in turn you get connected connected you know with infinite we don't know with whom all we are being connected with and it's a very important thing that we as a as a, uh, you know the uh, uh, professionals should always keep ourselves you know open enough for seeing to it that we are able to build up you know uh, those kind of uh, connections in our libraries so our purpose remains you know for resource sharing that remains you know the prime area for which you know we have been uh, working on i just don't want to say much but our focus areas remains entirely on content as uh, we had discussed even in our earlier presentations you know that we had uh, from this these de deliberations at NACLIN, number of takeaways for Delnet also besides for each one of us who are being there on this platform that yes we have to integrate more uh, advanced technologies you know what is being required by our, by our next gen library users and we are always always you know would like to be the ones you know uh, to implement them and helping out also at the same time the other institutions in that. I would like to more focused on our services and uh, because we would like to show you online our online services and to focus on some of our new portals. But just to uh, remind that uh, some of you who are our members and would be knowing about it, one of our most popular service when we talk about is our interlibrary loan services. You being sitting in any nook and part of the country, even any part of anywhere outside India when we have members and we are providing the service and this is a, you know a, a service uh, you know which is a one of the very popular service of ours used by the leading institutions of the country and uh, you talk about any of the leading names you know in the country they are they extensively you know depend on Delnet for these services so whether we talk about the interlibrary loan they, they are still you know as also being deliberated in the sessions uh, there are you know you you need to still have you know uh, rely on the books you know which are in print and because not everything which is being required by your users by your scholar community by your researchers are even available in a digital form you have the copyright concerns you cannot just simply digitize something and uh, make it in the digital no you cannot do that so you have to rely you need to search out even we talk about the journal articles, you may have a subscription, but it does happen at times that you don't have a coverage. You have to look around. Our, Delnet is an organization who believes in the borderless society. We go beyond the libraries, we go beyond you know, uh, the particular you know, uh, regions, and we, because our entire purpose remains to fulfill your needs and requirements. So we have a 
huge, large amount of collaborations happening across the globe. You talk about from any nook and part of the world, we are able to manage and get you the resources. And uh, because the entire mission remains to help out the user uh, who is there. So it's very, very important that it's, it's, you know, to bring everything together in order to see to it that the user has got a global reach, it has got a global access to the resources. Just to cite you an example here, you know, we have just picked up, you know, some title showing it to you how this interlibrary loan works. You can see here a book, Harnessing Green IT Principles and Practices. And this belongs to uh, you know, IIT Delhi, and we are sending across this particular book. It is going to our institution in Maharashtra, SST College of Arts and Commerce. It may happen that our librarian is over here, you know, to whom we are sending this book on loan. So this book borrowed on from IIT Delhi, we are sending this book across on interlibrary loan. The book will be used, returned back to Delnet, in one month period, and then it is going to charge you just simply only the nominal postal charges, nominal courier charges. It's a very popular service. See another title, Business Communication. We are sending this book to Gujarat, to Dr. Subhash Technical Campus. The book has been borrowed on interlibrary loan for one of our libraries, South Campus Library, Delhi University. The book will be sent and then it will come back. And you can see here, you know, this kind of an activity happening, you know, from different nooks and parts of the country. Nedaji Subhash Open University from Kolkata, uh, 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 Dr. Madhushri Ghosh, I think, you know, she is there online too. So this parcel has come back from there containing a book and we are going to return back to the library. This has been one of our very popular service and especially even for our journal articles, you can just can ask being a member, you can just can ask there's any number of titles you know that you are wanting to get through delete no restrictions delete remains as an organization which is committed to remo remove the obstacles you know uh, for resource sharing for information sharing i would just like to show you quickly one slide and that is to show how we are scattered we also give a support to our libraries we give library automation software free of charge we are also the ones who provide some consistency for implementation of digital library software like dspace um, also, we have a new project, new portal, which is coming up and that we would like to apprise you about it. Uh, this is our, uh, uh, we also have a consortia for e-journals uh, and then it has been an organization which is being associated with a number of accreditation bodies uh, since 2000, you know, we have done a special MOU with the ASCT for networking of ASCT approved institutions, technical institutions. And uh, this is how we are scattered. We're just wanting to show you this slide. This is how we are scattered across the country. So as you can see, you know, across the country, we have members right from JNK, you know, whether we talk about the Kashmir University, Central University, you go to the northern tip of the country. In Tamil Nadu, we can notice it here. 1,021 institutions that we have in the state of Tamil Nadu. So the leading state remains as Maharashtra 1043, followed by Tamil Nadu, followed by Uttar Pradesh. But again, across the country, you are able to see the institution, Madhya Pradesh 515, 307 in Kerala, 384 Haryana, Gujarat, entire country you are able to see. And the city of Delhi from where we started off as a Delhi Library Network way back in 1992, 314 institutions. So, and we can see here, right from the Northeast, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland, we have Assam. So, uh, and uh, they are, you know, they, they are the ones, you know, means across the country, uh, there is an, uh, you know, reaching out to any resource, whatever is being available. And uh, our purpose, our mission always remains that bring together those resources and let the user, wherever they are, let them make the best use of it. We have our institutions outside India who are the members of Delmen, greatly utilizing, you know, to our resources and services. And uh, definitely more focus remains on science and technology, but at the same time, you know, when we think about the areas, so academic libraries, they are typically the academic institutions, which are the members of Delnet, and they are getting benefit. We do have DRDO labs, CSIR labs onto our network or public libraries. I would like to quickly now take you to our portal because we would like to show you online uh, uh, these resources. So once an institution joins as a member, we provide you uh, uh, with the excess details, our membership fee, something that for past 21 years, Delnet has not changed that membership fee. Uh, since the year uh, uh, 2001, 2000, uh, typically 2000, our membership fee remains the same. So at the time of joining, you pay us 16,500 plus 18% GST. 
renews goes for 11,500 plus 18% GST. And our take remains the same for the last 21 years because uh, Delnet remains committed, you know, to provide more equitable and affordable access to information. And uh, and that's the reason, you know, why we are really wanting that more and more institutions to come forward and making the best use of these resources. So this is our website, Delnet.in, and I would just like to quickly now show it to you. New Discovery Portal is a portal. Uh, uh, I would also like to please to inform you that IAPA, uh, Delnet has received this IAPA Award for Excellence in Public Services way back in the year 2020. And this all be dedicated for, to our member institutions. Uh, and this is the portal. Also, let me just share with you because we could notice that a num good number of our school librarians are also here in the NACLIN platform as an uh, attendee you are joining in. We have got a very special platform Form that we have developed for schools. It's a very exclusive portal that we have developed for schools. And we fairly have now got a good number of schools which are the members of Dell Network. It's all together a separate portal, you know, which is being developed for schools. So if you belong to the schools, even you are most welcome to join and get, you know, benefited with a very specialized portal which has been made. So a new discovery portal is a portal which at large, you know, has to be um, used and they, they are, it's getting used you know by our member institutions and once you uh, you know uh, utilize this resource uh, as i said you know these our when you join as a member we provide you with a login and password you also have a provision for ip based access so you can access the delnet services on the either through the ip or you can also can access it you know through login and password Four most important thing, and that's in request and appeal to all member institutions who are here. Very shortly, we are uh, sending across one uh, communication to all our members, requesting you firstly, please do create, you know, the Delnet link on your library page. Uh, even if you don't have a library page, an exclusive library page on your institutional website, wherever you are putting in your library resources, uh, in whatsoever, you know, uh, particular place, please do kindly under the resources do kindly put you know the Dell Nets digital resources also this would really help in a very uh, you know greater uh, visibility of resources and would eventually help in a better utilization of our resources and services so just to firstly tell you those who are the members you know at times you know you keep uh, you ask us this is a Dell Net youtube channel so one of the things that uh, we have been telling it to you that the entire deliberations of NACLIN, we are going to also put it on YouTube. This is our Delnet web view. This is our uh, channel name, web view. Please do subscribe to this channel. You know, you need not pay anything, you know, it's just simply subscribe it. And as and when, for, so you can see here, Delnet annual lecture that we had by Mr. Peter Bay, you know, uh, from Princeton University, the entire video recording is available of the lecture, webinar on research and publication ethics, you know, that we had it the other day. So they are being there, you know, 13 days ago that we have done. Similarly, we are also going to now upload the NACLIN entire deliberations. Day-wise, the three deliberations will be there and you're most welcome at any point of time to view them. Uh, we, Firstly, I would just like to know you also have a provision you can generate your user statistics. You can know your ILL book status. You have asked a book, you know, to tell that you can just can see what is the status of that. This is our single window searching. Firstly, would like to just show it to you a single window searching informing you what is available and where it is available <clears throat> requesting you at the same time again please do kindly contribute your library records because it's not only for others to see what you have also your own users will be able to access your own resources 24 by 7 through Delnet. And we have a very special initiative of best practices for enhancing you know, data accessibility and data sharing. And that really is helping a lot to the institutions, to their own researchers and scholars, and making also your own library you know, more visible to others. 7,800 institutions are get to know what is uh, available and yes they will come to know about your own library i would just like to cite an example let's say on artificial intelligence since we have been talking about in the previous session so we can just scan for example you're looking for books on artificial intelligence and once you write you will just say okay the title you are looking for books on loan you're you are trying to get the titles, the books which are on artificial intelligence, and you can see here 55,452 such books which are available in our system. On the right hand side, if you look at 
it tells you the state codes. As we told it to you, we have more than 1,000 members each in Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu, UP, and across the country you have members. You will be able to see the state code. So you can see here from KN, Karnataka, this institution is in Karnataka. When we started off as a Delhi Library Network, by default, there was no state code because by default it was that this is a Delhi libraries, only Delhi libraries are there. But when in the year 2000, the name got changed from Delhi Library Network to Developing Library Network, we had started providing a two small case letter code. This is to inform the user that where this particular resource is available. So you can see here, K for Karnataka, HR, uh, just kindly, excuse me for a minute, please. Yeah, we could, uh, so we, uh, just kind of excuse me for a minute. It seems that uh, some of our attendees mic is on. Uh, it doesn't because there is a cross talk which is happening and uh, perhaps in our audio session we have given them a control and uh, the speaker is still on. We're just trying to figure out. Uh, we're just trying to figure out uh, that from where it's coming in. Yes, yes, this was Mr. Masthanaya Vemula, you know, uh, that's, thank you very much, you know, that we have been able to resolve, there was a cross talk which was happening. So, uh, from this, you will be able to see, you know, the state course, TG for Telangana, HR Haryana, PB for Punjab, UP, uh, Karnataka, you know, different states wherein that particular resource is available. Now, let's say, for example, this particular resource, you say date descending. So latest books, you know, you are going to see first. So you can see here a title published this year on artificial intelligence by Sturt Russell. The book is in Maharashtra. By seeing this, you are sure about it. This book is in Maharashtra because this has got a code of MH. Anantra Pawar College of Engineering Research in Pune has got this book. You can keep on moving down and you will be able to see the other libraries, MP. Uh, Madhya Pradesh, IPS Academy Institute of Engineering and Science has got a book. You can see here, Introduction to Artificial Intelligence and Expert Systems. Likewise, you can keep on moving down and we also have got a feature of Google Books. If a book is available on Google, the system is going to show you an icon of that. You know, it will, and you can straight away even can go and can have a look at it. So you can see here, these are very latest titles in various states, you know, it's going to show it to you. And our facility here, for example, let me show you an example. Xavier Institute of Management and Entrepreneurship in Bangalore, Bangalore, Karnataka KN. You are looking for this book, Artificial Intelligence Structures and Strategies for Complex Problem Solving. You see the, see uh, how it works, get more details. And once you do this, system is now, you are able to get all the details and you can go for requesting this book on interlibrary loan. So once you say request this book on interlibrary loan, system will prompt you for a password. We offer this password to each and every uh, uh, library, which is a member institution. You put in that password, system will automatically will be able to register this request. We will be able to get this book arranged and then we are going to send it to you the way I have just shown it to you that how you are going to, you know, get this book on uh, through courier, through post. We have, for example, in our own coordination units who also does this, and then we also coordinate this work, you know, from Delhi. Uh, also, at the same time, uh, you also have a provision. I'd just like to, you know, show you this how even these Google books, because some of the, the latest titles, they are still not being there with them. But you can see here. Now, you can see a library without two small case letter code. What does it denote? It denotes that this library is in Delhi, because for Delhi, as I said, Till the time we were Delhi Library Network, by default, it was at the libraries in Delhi. So you can see here, Shahid Subdev College of Business Studies has got this, and there's no two small case letter code that shows this library is in Delhi itself. So see here now, here it comes. Artificial intelligence meets augmented reality. We have been talking about AR, you know, in the previous session, and we are in the AR, and you can see here, you have a, got a book by Chitra Lele. The book is in Gokte Institute of Technology in Belgaum. KN is the, you know, Karnataka we can make out. This book is also on Google Preview. The book is in physically at uh, Gokte Institute, but it is also on Google. So if you click on to this Google, you will be able to get, so you can see here, 
the whatsoever is being available content pages are also being available let's say you are writing a paper and you just customer experience management cv as a library and information science professional would be if you know interested in seeing how can i use my ai to have a better customer value so how to enhance this you know the customer the users experience you know with the libraries in a better way so we can if you are, for example, you are just wanting to have this particular, you know, a chapter from the book, you can always can ask Delnet. Or by seeing the content, you feel, no, I want to refer this book. So you want to refer this book, you can just can straight away then can go and can place this request on interlibrary loan. As we have just shown you an example earlier, you can just, and you are also able to see here now, it's wonderfully, you know, an abstract of the book also has been incorporated here in the record itself. And you are going to request this book on loan. Delight is going to arrange that book and will be happy to do and using this know your ILL book status so you want to see uh, the what is the status of your book you will be able to get the links like this you will be able to see what is the you know the status of your book who has requested this book all the details you know will be available through uh, this portal itself so this is just to show you firstly an example and let me just also show you an example for example uh, let's say we say uh, uh, we just want to get the books where the title management is there and the book to be available only at GGIIM. GGIIM is only in Gujarat, in Institute of Management, we are wanting, you know, the books which are available. This is to show you that how you can use Delnet also as a web opaque for finding it out the books which are available only in your own library. Now, if you see here now, only the titles which are where in the word uh, uh, management is appearing, but the books only belonging to an institute of management, Ahmedabad would come. There is no other, you know, uh, uh, no other libraries records will be visible. So this is how you can really can use, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, this discovery portal also as a portal for your web or pay. So even if you don't have it, this remains operational 24 by 7, your users can very well can even can access this and will be able to see. And they're able to then see it, yes, that uh, you have got uh, this particular resource and you will be able to get help. Let me just, I think, mistakenly I have logged out of the system. Let me just log in once again. So this is, uh, you know, to firstly to show you that how this entire resource sharing thing that we talk about, how you will be able to, uh, you know, do that. And uh, also at the same time requesting to all our member institutions, firstly to create, a, you know, a link. Also to make sure if you have got your static IPs, do ensure that you have informed to Delnet those IP addresses so that if any user directly from your site wants to come, they need not to give any login password that they should directly be able to access the resource. I would firstly like to show you our newly launched portal called as a vision portal. I think, you know, majority of you would be fully aware about it because this has been a portal on which Delnet was working. And on 15th of September, you know, we have made this portal live. So this, this is a portal which contains in today's day and time more than 22,000 plus video recordings, uh, you know, the lectures, video recordings, and we are making a very special request and appeal to all our member institutions to come forward, forward us, you know, uh, you can upload, you know, those video lectures on the YouTube channels. And we have a special, you know, a specific uh, Excel files in which we request you to give us those records. Give us, you know, uh, the records of your video lectures of your faculty members. And we'll just like to show you an example, you know. You can see over here by the institution name, for example, if you have contributed, and this is in line with the requirement of an EP, you know, that is, you know, to enhance, you know, a better kind of a uh, knowledge sharing, and also at the same time that ensuring that your own knowledge base is fully being tapped, you know, by your students, by your researchers, and others also should get benefited out of it, you know, creating that an entire environment. So once you contribute us your video recordings, you know, we are uh, much happy and pleased to inform, you know, some of our member institutions have come forward where they made a very special effort in getting the lectures recorded you know, of their own uh, faculty members and our request was just uploaded on the YouTube and then give us you know, the metadata of it. So we have a very specific, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the Excel file is there. You can just can give us that and then we will import the same. 
And you can see over here, I'll just show an example. So if you are contributing these video lectures, you can even get to know what is being available, the video lectures of your own faculty members. So let's say, for example, AISS MS College of Engineering, and you just want to know what are the video recordings. So you can see here 518 video recordings being contributed by the college, which are being available. And you can see here, you know, that they are being there and you are able to also get, let's say, for example, you say view, you are able to see, you know, the entire uh, uh, video hosted through who has given the name of the speaker, their department, their college name, and also in which language. And once you say watch this video, and you will be able to watch this entire video recording of the lecture. And this is how, you know, uh, this is being uh, done. And I think, you know, right now this, uh, this video, it's not getting, uh, the audio is not getting transmitted through this, our platform, we are able to hear, but it's not getting uh, uh, out from this. Okay, just allow me a minute. I think, you know, it's, uh, it's creating in the, uh, yes, through this platform right now, I believe we are not able to do it. Uh, but yes, definitely once you do, you would be able to, uh, we are just trying to see that uh, where exactly is the issue arriving. Uh, yes, through the platform only, we are not able to do it. This go to webinar platform, but this is an entire video lectures which are being there. And then you can just can go and uh, pick up. Even you can search it over here by a speaker's name. You can go, you can search it. You can go by any of the subject areas that you want. You can go and even there is a browse category also at the same time. So right from agriculture science to architecture, Ayurveda, education, engineering and technology on varied subjects. Also, if you want, you can just can go to the specific field and you will be able to get it. So on agriculture science, you are wanting. So 838 video lectures on agriculture by the various institutions, you will be able to see them. And then yes, you are able to also watch this because of I think we have this audio issue happening. No, this is being there. We have been able to get that. So you are able to see that how this gets through this and uh, and your own institutional video recordings of your own faculty members uh, can very well can be made available. We also have that you can recommend a video link to Delnet. Uh, and uh, so once you click on uh, over here, it just asks you for all the details. And then it says, I have it recommend the video link you know for including in the widget portal and then if you want you know you say that i authorize delnet to use my name in the recommended by column you can do so title of the lecture speaker's name designation and everything you know it comes and even otherwise also we we have approached to all our institutions you know and send them that video uh, the excel uh, uh, file requesting them to come forward and doing and even otherwise also you just want to search it for anything let's say on nanotechnology you are wanting what is available on nanotechnology so you can see here the videos you know which are being there and again you can go applications of nanotechnology you can go to a particular i think kd polytechnic you know who has done and then you can watch this video so so this is how you know this entire recordings are being there and uh, and you can see here so so this is uh, about our vision portal. So requesting many of our professional colleagues here who belongs to our member institutions, please do come forward and make the best use of you know, this resource. Now we would just like to make you aware about yet another portal of ours called as a knowledge gainer portal. And this is a portal which gives you access to around 1.6 crore full text, eBooks, e-journals and e-articles. And uh, so 1.58 crore, the full text materials, you know, which are being available in any discipline that you are wanting, you would be able to get the results set. So let's say, for example, uh, we just uh, let's let's make a just a random search like this on pharmacy you are looking for. So you can see here 53,337 such titles are being there. And even it tells you articles 52,646, there are 445 ebooks, there are 210 institutional repositories, and then there are 76 journals also. If you want to go for an article, 
articles, you straight away go to the articles and you would be able to see these articles being available. So uh, it is pharmacological. You can go to the respective and see the, you know, the full text and you will be able to get the entire full text of these articles and then you can download it, you know, as an, and there are no restrictions. You can just can download as many number of articles that you are wanting, you can do. Also for the ebooks, similarly, it happens for the ebooks also. You can just can pick up the ebook titles, and these are the ebooks. These are the book chapters, you know, which are being there, and even the book chapters uh, from the various titles. You can very well can just can download these, you know, from. Even you can see here, it also shows that this is also on Google Preview, which it, uh, the particular title, which is also on Google Preview. You can just can go to the uh, full text, and you will be able to. Uh, get the entire you know the title so you would be able to download and as i said earlier there are no restrictions you can just can uh, download as many number of books or titles that you are wanting you can fairly can do so you can see here 47 mb file is getting downloaded right now and you can just can make the best use and this is in all various disciplines uh, it's available you can utilize it um, you know uh, to your discretion you know whatever you want and uh, way you, you are wanting it, you can do it. So this is that knowledge gainer portal. Uh, apart from this, let me just also share with you, we have this e-journals full text. These are the varied wide disciplines in which you will be able to get, right from aerospace, agriculture, architecture, Ayurveda, dental, education, engineering, technology, fashion. So whatsoever discipline that you are specializing in, you can just can go, let's say engineering and technology, 860 e-journals that you have, in varied disciplines, it tells you also within bracket what are those particular you know journals. So let's say computer science, 160 e journals, and you will be able to see these 160 e journals, and they are all on the varied you know. Uh, let's say on data privacy, you know we are going to have tomorrow when we are talking about cybersecurity. Also, the uh, you know uh, Major Vinit is also going to talk about you know some of the emerging uh, data privacy rules which are there and how this entire cybersecurity, you know, and other concerns are being there. So you can see here now, so how data brokers endanger privacy. And you can see here the entire article, a 45 page long article, uh, you know, which is being available and you can just can download. It's already there in front of you. You can just can use this down arrow key and you can very well can uh, use it. So in very disciplines, you know, you can do that. You have got a bifurcations. Also, let's say, for example, we talk about the medical e-journals. We have 2,200 plus medical e-journals that we are offering. We have a, more than 1,000 medical hospitals onto our network. Engineering technology, nearly 3,500 plus. Management equally, a fairly a very big number of institutions that we have. Let's say even if we show it to you, management e-journals, so you are able to see even those which are the Scopus listed journals, you are able to get that. You are able to see, you know, this is a Scopus listed journal and you can just can go to the respective uh, journals and you can be able to download, you know, the specific uh, articles and they are all from the Scopus listed. So you would be able to get, you know, these uh, articles. You can see here the entire article is in front of you, which is from a Scopus listed journal. So it's also good, you know, that you want to, you know, write a, uh, an article even for this. You can just can go and see, you know, what kind of articles are getting published and you are able to get over here the entire article. This is just quickly to give you a glimpse that how it happens. So in the various uh, disciplines you're talking about, let's say you're from pharmacy institution. So we fairly have around 308 plus pharmacy e-journals, 388 pharmacy e-journals, which are there. And they are again, the full text in nature. You can just can go to any one of them and can be able to you know, um, get that. Uh, also, besides this, so you have got in various disciplines, you know, whichever discipline you belong to, arts, commerce, and science, for example, you can see here even mathematics, physics, botany, you know, you can just can go in chemistry 154. So you are able to see all these journals and you can just can utilize it. Also, I uh, would like to mention you do have some thesis and dissertations, also some of the databases which are there, you can access them. We also have got the e-newspapers, which are available in some of the languages that we have included. You can just can go and can be able to see these uh, newspapers which are being available. Also, we have got this uh, language learning portal and other things that you can always can um, see it, you know, you, you always can. 
I would just like to uh, make a request over here uh, because we could notice it's 4.30 right now. So we have to quickly wind up uh, the day's um, you know, session now. We would just like to uh, request you that uh, uh, those of you who are not from our member institutions of Delnet, uh, at any point of time, if you are wanting us, even you can just can even in this right now in the chat box, you can send across to us a message if you want us uh, to get uh, send you a trial access. So immediately once the NACLING gets over tomorrow, uh, in another one or two days time, we'll be happy to give you a trial access for a two weeks period. Those of you who are not the members of Delnet who are attending this session and you really want to explore it further and also to show it to your own uh, faculty members and uh, you know researcher scholars or to your uh, institutional administrators, just send a chat message with the name. Uh, you just write trial and just uh, uh, just write it that please send trial uh, uh, trial uh, details. And we will be, you need not to mention your name or anything because we would be getting all your details. So if you are interested to get a trial access, please just send a text message, a chat uh, message uh, with the, with just simply write trial, T-R-I-A-L, and we would uh, be able to respond back to you and send you a trial access details. This is uh, for our institutions who are not the members of Delnet, and if you want us to send you a trial uh, details for this. So we would be happy to, uh, you know, send it to you the details and then, uh, uh, you know, you can uh, very well can utilize it. So just simply a message, a trial, T-R-I-A-L, just sent nothing more than that uh and uh so we'll be very happy we will be very very happy and you need not to write because the other details automatically will come uh, we have this is a very state of the art portal which is used uh, by delnet go to webinar uh, portal it's an american platform which gives you a lot much of analytical reports you know it's a very wonderful analytical reports uh, which gets generated and then we are able to uh, you know uh, find everything you know for each individual uh, of our uh, uh, participant attendee you know and uh, and even session wise we are able to see the interest that the session has generated even that it tells you in a very uh, analytical way and i think they, they do have an ai tool also embedded in it because that's a kind of a very uh, you know in-depth kind of an analysis it's able to do of this so please uh, uh, do kindly help us in knowing if you are interested and we would be very happy to give you a trial access to this and uh, if you have any queries of any kind or even if you want you're looking for something you have not been able to lay hands on just being a, a, a distinguished participant of NACLIN 2022 uh, we would be most happy to help you out because seeing is believing what we have been telling it to you a wonderful journey of 30 years of delnet and a 25 years of NACLIN. uh you know once you start using it once your user starts you know making uh, the use of it so you would be able to see and witness you know this wonderful phenomena beautiful phenomena of uh, networking the libraries serving humanity helping out those who are in need you know and that would be the the, you know, uh, we would feel uh, more happier, you know, if we are able to achieve that, you know, through this platform of NACLIN 2022. So you're most welcome. You're also going to have our, you know, contact details, any point of time that you need any assistance. And because it is our very continuous endeavor, it's a very, uh, you know, it's a persistent efforts of ours to see to it that we are able to, you know, have more and more coverage of the institutions, more and more coverage of the users. And the simple reason is to help out someone who is in need of information. You get at times, you know, quite, uh, you know, it happens that a user may approach you, an institution may approach you, and a user writing from an institution saying, man, we have been searching for this particular reference for past one year, for past two years, for last three months, which we can just can arrange in a matter of half an hour time, someone searching for that for six months, someone searching for that for two years, or a year time saying that, that you know, I have been searching ever since I started my research and I'm still not able to locate. 
and which we could just can do because of the strong network of libraries we know who has and it is such a strong support coming in from each one of you you know from our member institutions and you really feel pain enough that you know why we have not been able to sensitize to that level you know uh, and reach out you know to the users that uh, there is an organization and there are their own libraries which are committed you know to help out the users so the more uh, you know uh, hands comes together so it's not my user your user it's our users you know to whom we have to uh, help out and as i told you earlier that we do have uh, you know we have every moment you know we are the ones who not only concentrate on what we are able to fulfill we also concentrate on what remains even if you ask for 10 articles nine we are able to get one remains we will make a global search for that one not just simply limited we are the ones who have lost all sense of any distance we have no sense for you know having any kind of a boundaries because it's our global users to whom we are catering to we are searching out for some something you know which is required by a user who is in need of you know search for uh, information so we are have a very wonderful collaborations with institutions across the globe and um, and it's so wonderful to see that uh, you know the institutions everyone feels like helping but we have to really convey to someone that we want to get help so that's the reason it's a very humble request to each one of you uh, to please kindly try to popularize Delta, those of our esteemed uh, colleagues over here who are there today in this platform please try to at least create a link on the site you know make a link you know tell them means it is it should always be our um, great desire to ensure that no one remains without information we should always look forward to the day that whatever users has been wanting uh, to get be the library and information science professional should have that magical band in our hand that we are able to just give them that here it is uh, you know what you have in here it is ma'am here goes uh, and we look forward again to serve you again so that is very much visible that's very much possible you know and we have we are already demonstrating it but yes there is a you know also a great demand that we have to really make our users more aware we have to let our users aware that yes uh, we can collectively can serve you and and uh, uh, we would be very much uh, happy and delighted uh, that you know you give us a you know keep on giving us a chance to keep on serving you know your information requirements and that would be the you know we would feel truly blessed enough. So uh, uh, and for our non-member institutions, as I said earlier, you're most welcome. You know you can just can have a trial access and you see it you know yourself and give us a you know a chance to uh, further serve you know your users. Quickly, would like to now, we, we know that it's 40 and we have to close it in another five minutes. A very quick kind of uh, uh, the polls, uh, which we are launching it, and the poll here and goes, uh, do you think that Delnet has contributed significantly, you know, towards uh, uh, requesting you? Please kindly come forward and giving it to us, uh, you know, your reply. Delnet has contributed significantly in sharing and spreading knowledge through its resource sharing activities. We fairly have right now also 702, uh, you know, our uh, attendees who are there in the session. Please come forward. Uh, thank you so very much indeed. We are able to see that 20% 20, 20 of you have voted. Thank you very much. Uh, and we are going to certainly have a look at this. Uh, and here it comes. If yes, in your view, what has been the impact of Delnet on librarians, acad academic and research community. And this is, I know that this uh, can be replied only by those who are the members over here. And uh, we request you, please do kindly uh, come, uh, you know, give us your very candid feedback, uh, genuine feedback. Don't think that Natlin is being organized by Delnet, so you have to, whatever way you have felt all these years, uh, whether it has been the long associations or has been just an association started, whatever way you have felt, you know, all these, because we greatly value your association collaboration and connection with Delnet. Please do give us a very candid, you know, feedback about it. Thank you so very much. Quickly going, because I know that we are hard pressed for time right now. Do you feel that Delnet is providing an affordable access to information uh, 
affordable access diligence providing affordable and equitable access to life information resources fulfilling un sdg goals we just typically wants to ask this we have uh, you know uh, the uh, one of our session also coming up on this and we just really want to know that what is the kind of a role that you foresee that delnet has been able to offer keeping in view you know uh, the very uh, subsidized membership fee more than two decades you know the same fee that we are able to sustain ourselves so we just want to get a feeler you know from you thank you very much for this quickly may like to ask you uh, and this is a question which is definitely we may like to uh, you know uh, get it from you how would you like to rate uh, Delnet webinars online programs for upskilling, reskilling, and preparing LIS professionals for the future? And uh, though definitely we are tomorrow going to have you know, a feedback for NACLIN 2022, but this also is comprising of as we are continuously dedicated towards organizing this in order to you know uh, reach out to our own professional colleagues in order to you know have the better knowledge sharing activities done so we just want to you know really hear from you that how would you like to you know rate us so please whatever way you feel do kindly give us your very genuine feedback on this do you think that delnet has been able to transform uh, and empower the libraries you know do you feel that you uh yes it's taking a little time in getting broadcasted uh do you think the delnet has been transforming empowering and inspiring libraries and lis professionals each one of you do you feel that we have been able to inspire you enough do you feel the delnet has been able to play a role in transforming the libraries uh whether we talk about providing uh, information resources services, helping out your users. Do you feel that we have been able to do? Delnet would definitely be wanting, you know, to hear about this because we remain highly committed, you know, we remain highly committed. You, uh, you know, say, and we do, you know, this is what, you know, we are the strong believers in the fact that you are going to drive, you know, uh, uh, Delnet the way that you want it. Yeah, you are, going to be and you have always been our inspiration and will always uh, we are going to follow you know what is being required by you so thank you so very much for this i won't be taking much time we have uh, this is uh, one of the question about our video uh, uh, lectures uh, vision portal about your first impression about delnet's vision portal of video lectures we have just shown it to you a little glimpse of that we have told it to you that how you can come forward contribute your video lectures it will become a platform wherein you can just can your own uh, faculty members you know work uh, and their uh, uh, their subject expertise will get further highlighted and promoted if you are contributing because it's not only your users are going to view that it's also the users of 7800 institutions who are going to to view those video lectures and uh, it is also like uh, making available their knowledge their expertise you know available for everyone so we would just like to get thank you so very much for this again and uh, here in comes this is a question more for the member institutions would you like to get the video lectures of your faculty uploaded on delnet's vision portal for enhancing knowledge sharing uh, we really would genuinely be wanting you know to ask you we know that we have been doing the surveys among our libraries and we know that largely still in the libraries in the institutions the video lectures of the faculties are not being recorded you know they still remain uh, they are not being uh, uh, recorded they are not being available uh, you know uh, uh, as a as a digital asset and yes but we are also happy to note at the same time that the institutional administrators our own library colleagues have taken a special initiatives in seeing to it that the video lectures of their own faculty are getting recorded and that they are they have instances we're in 500 600 video lectures coming in you know from our institutions and fully being we have been informed that they have taken an under taken a very special initiative for doing this and then they are under this um, sophisticated portal they are able to do and here it comes the very last question of this we won't like to take any further uh, and this is i think but this question i will reserve it for late because uh, this is to tell you that we have got uh, the uh, Delnet's desire portal on 21st of December. We are going to show you a glimpse of that portal. But as I said, uh, uh, you know, we have the, the user interface. Uh, we, we have made it, but it has to get fully designed. And that is 
creating an institutional repository, creating a huge, big, you know, uh, kind of a, a platform for our member institutions, wherein you can upload your institutional repositories, having two interfaces, one as an interface for your own institution, other interface is for a global repository of all the member institutions. You will get two login passwords. One is for your users to see an IP-based access. Other one will be for your own uh, institutional administrator, the one who would be uploading your full text content onto that digital repository. Creating a full text digital repository, it will be hosted at Delnet, you know, the way we have, you know, we have made your catalogs available through Delnet. Similarly, the entire digital repositories. Uh, so you need not to really struggle hard in seeing that you, uh, whether you're using DSpace, you use ePrint, you have a manpower, you have an adequate uh, hardware, you have a sustainability feasibility, you know, uh, sustainability possible in your environment. So you need not to worry because we are creating and we are very happy that we have fairly done, uh, you know, um, achieve, uh, you know, a fairly a good uh, progress has been made and uh, we are very much much inclined to get it launched now in um, by uh, maximum by March and we are starting off so on 21st we are going to ask those of you who are from the members be ready enough because we are wanting to know uh, from our member institutions because we are picking up for our test uh, beta version we are just wanting to pick up some 10 15 of our member institutions who are ready to you know uh, take part in that beta version testing upload their collections of various categories you know it will be uh, and you and then you will be also able to see the interface you'll be able to see your own institutional repository your users will be able to see that because and then we will be deploying it you know uh, for all the institutions so we'll be very happy you know to uh, have for the discussion so do join us back on 21st of december uh, as we are having the you know on that day uh, the library networking day to commemorate you know the 81st birth anniversary of uh, our founder dr paul so we'll be very happy to have interactions with you in detail on that day and then as i said earlier we are going Going to have the two invited uh, speakers on IERS, uh, Dr. Chan from IMM Ahmedabad and also uh, Dr. K.P. Singer from Imtech Chandigarh who will be talking about their IELTS that they have made and then we are going to show you this desired portal of Delnet and we'll be inviting you know your uh, feedback on that. Also to remind on that day on 21st at 11.30, we are going to have an invited talk. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Dilara Begum who will be joining us from East West University, Dhaka, and who will be speaking uh, on uh, SDG, the libraries and the sustainable development goals and how libraries can play and very, uh, you know, uh, the role as enhancers, you know, for uh, ensuring that they are able to, you know, uh, uh, implement, you know, those SDG goals and can contribute basically, you know, towards their fulfillment. So it has been a pleasure and honor. Thank you so very much. It's five, 10 minutes to five a time for you. I know that you uh, have to, you know, now it's maybe the, uh, no, the for today, you know, and up since morning, you have been very, very kind in being there with us. Uh, and we always have been appreciating, you know, your presence. And uh, undoubtedly at the 25th NACLIN, we have been able to see a fairly large number of our registrations and equally at the same time, a large number of our simultaneous uh, users who have been there. And most importantly, and the, the, the main highlights remain that each one of you remained, you know, so interactive, highly engaging, you know, with our uh, invited speakers. And there has been an enormous deliberations which has happened and giving us you know, to each one of us, lot many takeaways, uh, and that was all made possible because of your, you know, very, very active uh, participation in this. So it seems that we are towards the closure of uh, the second day of the 25th National Convention on Knowledge Library and Information Networking. Thank you so very much for giving us a chance and having you with us. We remain truly indebted. We remain truly appreciative of all your time and efforts in being there. And uh, as I said earlier, and I would you know, like to keep on repeating it, that you remain our inspiration, you remain our strength, you know, and that's what Delnet would always, always, we count on your support, we count on your cooperation, and all of us, let's, you know, always ensure that we are able to, you know, work together collaboratively in a network fashion, you know, to ensure that we are able to contribute in a very significant and in, in a meaningful manner, you know, uh, to our library users community, to the users, you know, to whom we are committed to provide our, you know, information to help them out 
and we would really truly feel you know happy you know that let these you know our uh, associations to grow by leaps and bounds in the days to come and to keep on having the strong connections you know with Delnet, which we always greatly value and greatly cherish you know thank you so very much for being a wonderful part of the second day of the 25th national convention on knowledge library and information networking NACLIN 2022 we look forward to having you back here again on the third and the concluding day of the 25th NACLIN tomorrow at 10 o'clock. We would truly appreciate if you can be here with us by 9.50. You have, we always, it's so wonderful to see that the moment we would launch it and then you find it sudden, like, you know, you will have 160 uh, professional colleagues being there. And that's what, you know, remains as the great motivating, you know, factors, you know, for us. So it's, really indeed we look forward uh, to having you back again tomorrow morning by 9 50 so that we can commence our session you know by 10 o'clock sharp so uh, once again on behalf of delnet uh, you know we express a very warm sense of gratitude and thanks and great appreciation and admiration uh, uh, to you and uh, very special thanks to our distinguished speakers of the day who have been very gracious in being there with us and sharing a vast uh, knowledge base with each one of us so it has been a day a very fulfilling day a day you know wherein we have felt truly enlightened illuminated and if someone asks us tell us you know 10 things what you have learned i think we, we are going to you know uh overscore that because we have not much you know that we have been able to gather today you know and that was all been because of the wonderful deliberations so thank you so very much once again each one of you and it has been a great honor in having you uh, we are much grateful to each one of you and we look forward to having you back again tomorrow morning. Stay happy, stay blessed, do stay connected, stay informed, and always, always remain connected with Delnet. It is what it is uh, always, uh, we wish you the very best and we look forward to having you back again. A very good evening to all of you and thank you so very much for being there with us on the second day of NACLIN 2022. We look forward to seeing you back here again tomorrow morning. Thank you. God bless you all and stay connected always. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>